Uh oh, what have I ever done? What have I done? <laughs> there we go. All good. Yeah, video is all good and everything. All good, all good. Hello, guys. Welcome. Hello, hello, hello. How is everybody doing today? Hope you're all being. Hello, Cad. Hello, hello, Adam. Divine, Frank. Oh, God, there's so many people here. Um, <laughs> Fast Eddie. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, Nemo. How you doing? How you doing? And Wilma, right at the top of the the, the chat. Hello, hello. Gold. Uh, why won't? Sorry if I butchered your name. Paulo, Melonfire. How's it going, everybody? Uh, what would we say? Caesus. Some person. <laughs> Bluffy King. Oh, my God. It, the names are coming through now, aren't they? Uh, welcome, guys. Welcome. So, we are being joined today by the main man himself, Martin. Say hello. Hello, everyone. Nice to see you guys again. And how has, your, how has been your day, Martin? How has been your day? It's not been bad, actually. It's not been bad. I didn't do all that much fixing today, unfortunately. It was more like, um, you know, some other stuff I had to do, like, around the game itself. But... Yeah, definitely by the end of the week, there should be another update. So that one will introduce a lot of things. We'll be, in oh. fact, of course, like playing with some of the changes here. So Yeah, yeah. So we've got oh, the, audio, the beta loud branch. Audio, apparently. Apparently, I'm quiet. I'm going to move my microphone so it kind of helps. Yeah, yeah, guys. Let, let us know if the audio is looking a bit down. I can actually turn up. Hold on. If I turn up this audio as well. <laughs> apparently, I look like I'm from Harry Potter. Or is it because, <laughs> of, the, because of the scar over here? Or... <laughs> Oh, is that better? Are we, are we good now? Let's 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 try the audio, yeah, guys. Just, just let me know if it's if it's better. Yeah, cool, cool, fantastic. I do. I've, I've also turned you up in in stream as well, so yeah. Sweet, hopefully, sweet. hopefully it's, it's pulled that straight through. Um, but yeah, um, to you, you've had a a different day today than um, fixes and all sorts. But you you've got one coming at the end of the week, hopefully. Which yes, definitely. Like by the end of the week, I want to I want to push it tomorrow. Um. Still, still working on like improving the harvesters. Like, of course, you know this update that we've just we've, you know, I mean, you already showed some of the some of the beta before, um, which of course improves the harvester somewhat. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to have some AI fixes tomorrow. That's what I'm going to be focusing on. AI so fixes. It doesn't, so it doesn't AI fixes. So it doesn't do like all right. I need to turn around. So you know, a billion point turn. So instead, it'll of course, you know, like actually like reverse as much as possible, and then I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. So instead of like. I think it's mostly prominent when they're in a Boltarium field and they're just tapping a crystal and thinking, oh no, reverse, tap a crystal, oh no, yeah, go yeah, forward, yeah. hit the it's, crystal. It's very sensitive, shall we say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, actually guys, in just under an hour, I've got another challenge video coming out. Um, it was a bit later today than I wanted it to be, but um, it is uh, infantry versus humans and aliens. So I'm doing a three-way as just infantry. And then I, I know everyone was asking for crabs versus humans, and that is coming. And I am going to be subjected to so much pain, but okay, <laughs> it is coming. It is coming. <laughs> and thanks, thanks for the nice comments, guys. Thanks a lot. Glad you guys like it, man. Yeah. So I mean, when I first fired up the game, uh, when I when I looked at it, um, I actually looked at it quite early on in April because I was I was br I'm always browsing through Steam for RTS games, so that's mm -hmm. just me. And then I, I come across Silica like early early April, and um, when it was announced, and I just seen it RTS with FPS elements, and I was just like, "Oh my god, Renegade plus Command and Conquer," <laughs> you know, just oh my god. So I, I've I've kept an eye on it, and then when I was yeah, I was so excited when when it I was actually sat here for like two hours waiting for it to drop, thinking what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do first? Am I gonna play aliens? Am I gonna play humans? What am I doing? And then I literally just went for it as soon as it came out. And uh, yeah, every, I've just been playing it pretty much. Not every day. I, I try to make sure I don't play it every day, but I, I play it a, a lot. Yeah, like I, I really enjoy like jumping into some some of the servers and, uh, you know, playing playing with everyone as well. Mm. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Dr. Spot, thank you for the follow, by the way. Welcome, sir. Hope you're doing well today. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're going to be jumping into games. Uh, you guys are more than welcome to join. Uh, me and uh, Martin are going to be doing like some some cheeky one v ones and stuff. I think we're gonna we're gonna go into arena. We're gonna go into uh, uh, we're gonna have a big thirty two player server open as well. I think um, we'll we'll jump in together and and have some fun with you guys as well. Uh, any questions you've got, uh, throw it all at Martin. Um, I will try and read them out as well. If there's something that's going to be missed, I think there's one right there uh, from Lewis. How how about a retreat command so tanks or whatever can go in reverse while shooting? 
Ah, uh, so they actually can do that already, but uh, you have to give the command not too far away from them, and then they will reverse. It has to be in, like behind them. But uh, but otherwise, uh, I think it should be more about the unit tactics. So if they're under attack from you know ahead of them, then they should logically kind of like angle towards it and you know go that way. So I, I want to like uh, improve the AI, like into the future, of course, um, to be able to kind of like handle these situations better. You know, especially because tanks should have like weak points uh, behind the turret and all this kind of stuff, and of mm -hmm. course under the turret. So, yeah, ever, ever thought about adding? You know, a, I think you said you you love Company of Heroes as well. Yes, in the UI, I, mean, there's I, I, a... haven't, I haven't I haven't played two. I've played one. Played I need to play yeah. two. So in the UI, there's a a specific command to tell the vehicle to just reverse or reverse quick. And mm -hmm. if you click that and then click, if, even if they're not in combat, if you wanted to like get a tank in a in a certain point, but he's facing out or something, so he's got like cover from his right and left, maybe, and he's like in this like little rocky area, so he can shoot out in front. Maybe like having that, so you can you can reverse it anywhere, even if it is in combat or not. That's actually a good point. I mean, I do recall in Company of Heroes, you could of course set um, like where they move to, and which direction they're actually the, facing. Yeah, yeah, that that would actually be very useful. That's true, and it never occurred to me. I'll actually do that, because that is not difficult to do at all, because I just remember the facing that they want to be in. And, uh, yeah, I'll do that, actually. That's a good idea. Yeah, because in a lot of strategy I'm games... I'm your idea. It's the idea. idea. In a lot of strategy <laughs> games, you normally hold... I think some of them, especially like... Uh, oh, well, I think Command & Conquer 3, I think, had it. You'd hold click mm -hmm. when you've moved, and it would like, have a silhouette of the unit... And you could rotate your mouse, and it would rotate yeah, the unit yeah, yeah. Exactly. on the spot. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like in this, I guess it, it doesn't have to like necessarily show the unit, but it should be like a two D projection of either either the outline of the unit or the icon of the unit mm -hmm. um, with like the direction it's going to be facing. I think that would be very, very, very useful. Okay. You know, especially if you have like twenty units, you want to like uh, set their formation in a specific way. You know. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely, that's a good idea. Thank you for that, and I will abuse that. <laughs> there you go. Right, any other questions we got here? I think I'll go back up the chat quickly. Uh, yeah, so... there's, there's a ton of questions. Let's have a look. There's the reverse one. Uh, what's the and goal for max players in the future? So, max players in the future. All right, so first what I want to do, I want to want to imp like, like uh, optimize performance uh, uh, for the existing game currently in the state uh, uh, to make sure I can support you know, 500, 600 units. Um, do a default unit cap that can be switched off, of course, but that unit cap is what I'm going to be aiming for for like standard performance. Okay. Right. So if someone puts like a thousand units, well, I mean, you know, let's be honest. I mean, that that is something that is not realistic to kind of completely support, right? Yeah. But um, uh, but basically, that's what I'm going to aim for. Then I'm also going to aim for uh, optimizing network traffic so that it can support you know a, a ton of units synchronized like this and so it's future proof as well so it'll basically like as soon as it sees that the network is being flooded it'll start cutting down on what it sends so this is it's a bit of a complex thing to do of course um but uh but this is the way i intend to kind of like uh, tackle this and there's a lot of things you can do to kind of like reduce what you need to send you know i really do want to support like the massive swarms of aliens you know so so uh, not only aliens of course so infantry and all this kind of stuff as well so i do want to support um a ton of units you know it okay. is I think it's very clear the selling point of the game. Yeah. Um, and that leads in to, I need to get this to work for 36 players yeah. uh, for a standard connection. Because of course, the biggest issue is one is performance and the second one is of course the network traffic. And uh, so I do need to get it so that it supports, you know, 36 players reasonably. Um, and what I, what I intend to do in the future is of course, if, it's, if, if I can get it to handle that well, then I'll of course up the um, the maximum and uh, keep increasing it until it reaches some some point where it's it's reasonable, you know. But I think there is a limit to what makes sense in the game itself, like irrespective of performance and uh, uh, you know, like if you have let's say three hundred players, then it would, this is ridiculous, right? So yeah. I think like the long term target would be about sixty four. Yeah, that, that's ideally. that's about normal. Like that's your yeah. standard. You. you like if you've taken battlefield into account and not the most current yeah. ones has 128 but um 64 was like the the generic standard for that type of battlefield um yeah exactly exactly and i i assume also this this includes dedicated servers that that would be the same thing you could change the settings and well no dedicated will be hosted already i gather you wouldn't have to 
host it yourself, or can you host no, it? No, no, no. Like, 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 okay, okay. So, so, so the idea of, of course, the only difference between a listen server and a dedicated one is a dedicated one runs without actually rendering the game and all this kind of stuff. Okay. So theoretically, anyone would be able to like there will be a dedicated server application you could say on the Steam. Um, so anyone could host that. Anyone could host their own dedicated server. But of course, the uh, it's reasonable to host a dedicated server with a with a good connection. You know, that's the most important thing. Because yeah. you see a lot of people like right now they put 36 plays irrespective of the the the, uh, the little note I put like be careful make sure your connection can handle it no one really worries about it so I see a ton of 36 player servers and the problem with that is of course you know most of the times their connection can't handle it so I need I do need to kind of uh, handle this automatically okay. you know where yeah. it uh, uh, where it calculates you know and just cuts down what what it sends over the net okay cool cool ideal right. Uh, next question. Uh, will we be playing on the beta branch day? Yes, we will be. So, guys, if you're looking to join the games that we're going to be hosting, then uh, make sure you've got the beta branch active in Steam. Yeah, it's 0 0.77. Uh, 0 0.7.7, more specifically. The build. So, if you don't have 0 0.7.7, it's the wrong build. Is there any ETA for low FPS fixes uh, when many units are on the map? So I think that was kind of covered with yeah, optimization. Yeah, covered with yeah, exactly. That was covered with with the optimization I was mentioning. I mean, I know immediately one way I can really almost well, not not double. I mean, that, that's pushing it, but definitely improve at least by about thirty or forty percent the FPS on clients. Because right now, the way when I when I synchronize it onto the other end, uh, I push the unit to the correct position with physics but at the same time also set the posi position partially and what that does it updates the scene if there's like a lot of either, like uh, objects physics objects such as the crabs around each other then it updates the scene with each movement of them so that means it, it really does slow down the fps right okay so that's like one thing which will be improved as well okay okay that's good that's good so i'm just gonna say night to my door quick yeah no worries man So, chat, you know what? Right. I'm going to look through the questions here. Oh, thanks, guys. Hello, uh, hello, Josef from Hungary. So we've got one about Red Alert 2. Holding Z would mark the route of which units would take. Uh, we already get that, really, with the... Um, when you when you move a unit, it has a line, the path it's following. Actually, incidentally, that's one of the things which... Um, because I have to synchronize that over the net, that actually takes quite a lot of um, uh, network resources as well. To like synchronize those lines, so <laughs> I was thinking about dumping them, but I mean, the the it's really nice to see where they're going. However, and I will, this will actually uh, make it much like this. This is one thing which I can really like save on network resources. When you send a group of units together, then logically, I mean, there shouldn't be you know a thousand lines. It's it's pointless. There should be one line indicating where the whole formation is going to move, and that like where that group is going to move, you know. Um, it's nice to see like the individual lines, but it's a bit excessive, you know, um, because especially because of the, the amount of resources it, it eats, it does eat a lot of resources. If you send 500 units at once, uh, let's say halfway across the map, then that means, let's say about what, 20, 30 points. That's about, that, so that means about 20, 30 vectors per unit. That's about, oh, don't quote me on this, but it's about 10 bytes, roughly speaking, per unit, per, per, per point. Anyway, long story short, it's a lot of data to synchronize just with one single um, uh, command. So yeah. this is something that I vastly want to improve. You know, that's going to save a ton of network resources. Yeah, like I can imagine it. The, the, the server's trying to figure it out, and then uh, then it's got to happen in real time on the network as well. Mm. Um, Precisely. So, question, is the normal human AI uh, as commander is way slower than the alien one? And not event T1 uh, when the alien has a Goliath? Not event T one when the alien has it. A... Oh right, I get what you mean. Yeah, yeah. So they're, they're saying that the um the the alien commander is already pumping out higher tier units, and the human commander has not even reached tier one just yet. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Because right now the the human one kind of like tends to really push resources into into infantry and this kind of stuff. I mean, the the thing is the AI. Some things I literally is like it's it's about balancing and about that, right? And it heavily influences how the AI acts. So all, if I went and slightly reduce the priority of creating attack units then it'll have more of a priority to like construct so i mean literally this is just going to be a game of like finding the right values to get a uh, a good ai and these values should also change on the fly so if, if for example you're being extremely aggressive against the ai it should actually increase the priority of for example defense units 
mm-hmm. rather than just constructing new vehicles and stuff. Um, but if it's being left alone, then it should probably prioritize. Like, it, there it should depend. Is it, is it aggressive or this kind of stuff? This is stuff I want to put into into the AI into the future. You know that it's going to be more aggressive or more defensive, and you'll be able to set it set it up roughly speaking in the um uh, in the main menu, like oh in the the lobby. Ideal. Yeah. So um, that's kind of like old Age of Empire style, where you could pick the um the behavior of the AI. So it could either be a turtle or it could be a uh, uh, like a, a defensive or offensive and you can like change the behavior of the AI. So when you're going up against it, you can put say extreme offensive and then you literally just get wiped within two minutes or something. Yeah, precisely, okay. precisely. I mean, uh, it would be interesting to like in future put literally an option where you say, okay, this is a PVE one, um, a PVE game where the players can only join like one of the teams, for example. And uh, the AI then gets some like, let's say slight cheats. So you can really increase the challenge against the players by a little bit cheating letting the ai cheat a little bit you know yeah. that it gets more resources than the players do but i mean this is probably just going to be up to like the server setup and this kind of stuff you know yeah, starting yeah. resources i think it, that ideally that whole screen where you only select the three modes and then you can only select the team you join that should change where it's literally just going to be you can drag drop like icons of the of the team and then be able to set up the ai the, the ai commander how much aggressive how aggressive it's meant to be how the starting resources and all this kind of stuff so that way you can say, all right, you know, uh, I know I'm playing against someone who's really bad at you know, like playing with aliens, but so I'll give him massive bad. I'll double his resources, for example. You know, so this is like the the, the view for the future. Okay. Yeah. Um, wow, there's a ton of questions. Yeah, there's. Awesome. I'm still catching up on quite a lot of these. Uh, how do you deal with siege tanks as aliens? They just murder my roly poly and scorpions. <laughs> so with siege tanks, the easiest way to deal with them is uh, literally just with crabs. Get crabs on them. As soon as a crab gra- grabs onto it, the siege tank can do nothing. Um, uh, well, it can do something. I mean, the, the player, if there's a player inside, he can jump out and try and kill the crabs. But that's the whole point. If you put, put like three crabs onto a siege tank and it's not guarded, if the siege tank is not guarded, then it can do absolutely nothing. And then crabs are quite quick as well, so... Yeah, exactly. The exactly. siege tank's got a very slow turret traverse, so... Yeah, precisely, precisely. And plus, right now, the, 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 the alien AI is slower than it should be, you know. With like, when there's large unit counts, it kind of like tends to like move a little bit, slow down, slow down, and it really slows down the alien. So that I need to fix as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, okay, question. Now with harvesters kind of fixed, can you tell us if the game performance is the next big priority, perhaps for the next two, uh, sorry, one to two patches? Mm-hmm. Most definitely, performance is I think like the next target because I mean with uh, with one hundred or two hundred units, it's still like it, with like let's say one hundred units, it runs pretty good. Um, uh, of course, the buildings they take up much more resources than they should. Um, so, uh, long story short, yes, performance is the is like definitely the next target. And we've already had some performance uh, uh, patches anyway. The, the the noticeable one was I think it was subject to the units themselves. I think it was your last patch. The units were taking up a lot of resource. Yeah, yeah, it was specifically the infantry, and it was in in FPS when you were FPS infantry, it would um, literally like halve your FPS after after some time, and it would just keep getting worse and worse. It was a constant degradation. It was literally a three line fix, but you know, <laughs> it's always like that three line fix, but you're looking for it for like two hours. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I did see one about the Titan. Um, is that was it there? So um, yeah, you mentioned the Titan in uh, Mike's stream when you was on interview of him. I think it was last yeah. week. Um, just for anyone that didn't catch it, uh, was the idea for the design how big it is and how expensive and how soon? Okay, so I, I don't want to like give away the design all that much because it's, it's it's always nice to have a surprise, right? So you update and it's like, oh cool, let's have a look at the Titan. Um, I will say that it is going to be one of those like holy shit units. Like when you see it, you'll be like, oh my god. Uh, In terms of size, it should be basically as tall as the ultra heavy vehicle factory without the the smokestacks on on top. But like, uh, yeah, it should be very tall without the smokestacks. So it'd be quite big boy. Yes, most definitely. Um, Like it it should be able to like crap on a harvester quite easily. Just gonna get into a sandbox so I can just like spawn these units in. Yeah, no worries. If we can. uh... Just to show chat, like if they haven't seen the ultra heavy vehicle factory, I'm sure you all have, but we can just look at it for scale and like other yeah, units and stuff. If we, if we were to discuss them, then I can quickly um uh, just pop one down. Yeah, while it's loading, someone's asking like if there'll be defensive structures for humans. Yes, for both humans and aliens, there will be more defensive structures. Um, uh, turrets, 
walls i still want to look at i did promise that i will look at them um but those i think are less important than for example shield generators i definitely want to do shield generators as like a higher tier thing so i did notice um well when i was on stream the other day i did spawn in um a fortress turret um oh yeah that thing. <laughs> that's actually from the siege map it's like yeah uh, uh the siege map is meant to be like for a i might as well say it siege game mode so the siege game mode is meant to be sort of like a tower defense, um, uh, and that one's meant to be human. Like, sorry, the uh, a fight between the two factions, the human factions. That map in particular, but of course, it should be on other maps as well. Yeah, um, uh, if you guys haven't seen the siege map, I can actually show you it in a second. Um, I actually went in there. Uh, I think it was like day two of playing the game when I was exploring the command lines. Um, just harvester to ultra vehicle factory scale. Um, so what we're looking at two. Harvesters on top of each other. That's going to be the size of the Titan, kind of. Slightly more, yeah. Slightly, Slightly more. more. I mean, actually, looking at that, that's basically three. Three. The whole point is that, that the Titan should move quite slowly. Yeah. You know, it's it's meant to be really like when it when it spawns, you could say it should like come out of the ground. Of course, it should be come out of quite large alien building, um, building if you want to call it that. And it should like when it comes out, it's like you know, there's massive scream which you can hear across the entire map. So you will know very much that a Titan has just Titan's on the field. Oh, yeah. And is there going to be a cap to Titans, or can you just spam the Titans out? One, one, just just one. the one. I mean, okay. it's, it's meant to be it's meant to be a super weapon. Like okay. uh, I noticed, like watermelon slice. Hello, um, mentioned like are super super weapons designed as the primary means of engaging the enemy during the late stages of the game, or are they intended to be more of a secondary tactical option? They should be more of a secondary tactical option. Um, it should be like exactly with the Titan. Titan is meant to be the alien super weapon. Um, and of course, <clears throat> excuse me, the humans will have like this, oh, uh, the humans, more specifically, uh, still, still considering the super weapon for the other team, but one of, what, like, of the human team, but one of the human teams will have a, uh, I, 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 want, I want to say like a nuclear rocket, but not literally a nuclear rocket. It's meant to have a, like, a lot of, um, little warheads which cause big explosions. And so, like, it's meant to be their super weapon, which of course you could utilize against the alien super weapon. You know, um, which will do, of course, a ton of damage to it. But yeah, yeah. Human super weapon has to be nuclear weapons. Yeah, nuclear weapons. The problem with it is, is like if it's just a one, like a one kiloton device, that's still enough to like wipe the field. You know. Yeah, ICBM, pretty much. Yeah, I think I think something similar to it's in the asset testing map. This thing here, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's very ugly right now. I still have to like uh, uh, texture a little bit better and, and this kind of stuff. But yeah, this thing. And you can see it's got like four warheads or, or eight warheads or something like that in the in the thing. Yeah, I had a look inside kind of, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's got its war, it's got its payload. So it, uh, if I remember correctly, you said it's going to be like um, a classical Dune um, uh, payload. So it wouldn't be accurate. It would it would land within a certain radius yeah, precisely so you tell it where to where to go but the whole idea is the whole idea is that there's a lot of bolt like interference with um electronics thanks to the bolterium um so it messes with like with electronics slightly mainly guidance right so that's why the rocket launcher for example like uh, i'm going to rename that by the way to probably to rocket truck so it's more representative because everyone calls it rocket truck anyway i call it the rocket truck yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah everyone calls it the rocket truck i'm going to rename it to the rocket truck um and the other one will be pulse driver or pulse truck as well anyway uh, but yeah, those rockets, for example, they're quite inaccurate. And the whole idea is that, I mean, it is very important to the gameplay that these weapons are not super accurate because just, you know, these laser missiles, it may, it, it's just much more fun when it is difficult to hit to a degree. It mustn't be too excessive, of course, you know, but especially like the, the, the rocket truck when it starts like spamming missiles, it's a really, it's, it's a sight to behold, so to speak. But if they were all very accurate, it would be, you know, no challenge. A question from me as well, thinking of it. So, when when super weapons will be put into the game, will there be a counter to them? So, um, for example, you're on your alien nest, getting nuked, and you die instantly, right? Would, would there be like some sort of um, like anti missile system or like a biological anti missile system that the aliens would be able to use to try and st like try and intercept it? Or and the same goes uh, for the Titan. Maybe some sort of like defense that you could build to try and like is is. Spe spe oh my God, specifically designed to counter the Titan. That's a good point. Uh, so, like one of like the way I want to approach it is the this missile, right? As soon as you would go into the launch launch sequence, it would take some time to launch. Okay. Um, it would essentially issue a warning. I mean, this is just going to be like a meta thing where it's like warning missile launch detected. You know, exactly like in Dune Two, quite frankly. Um, and the reason for this is it gives 
time for the players to prepare um, uh, and so on. And for the aliens, like if it's being launched against their base, then, uh, you know, the nest, I mean, they shouldn't have one nest. In future, like, they should have more than one nest, right? Right now, you can, of course, build more nests, but there's no not much point apart from just not getting eliminated very quickly. Mm-hmm. But because the, the aliens lose or, or will lose only once their queen is destroyed, then if it's being so- sent against their base where the queen is, that gives them time to kind of, like, escape with the queen. But if okay. I get to, but like, doing literal counters against a missile like that, I, I don't want to do that. I mean, it would be very strange if aliens literally had a like a biotic counter to a big incoming missile. It would be very strange. Um, the humans, like the opposing uh, opposing force, I mean, there it makes a little more sense because I mean, they like once you have like the shield generators, right? Mm-hmm. Then um, uh, the shield generator should like the shield itself. It should work something like in um, uh, Star Wars: The Phantom Menace, right? Where you know it deflects deflects incoming projectiles and this kind of stuff. But you can walk through it, right? So, of course, I'm gonna have to teach the AI to be able to deal with this. So it should be quite large in its scale. And if a, if your super weapon hits it, it'll just take out the shield essentially. Um, uh, probably put it offline for quite some time. So you can use that super weapon to basically breach the shield, and then, of course, you know, send all of your stuff against the enemy base. Okay. Um, and would yeah, that it, be... it, like the, the super weapon should make it like the super weapon. I, the way I want to do it is it shouldn't be like in total annihilation where it results in the end of the enemy. Um, yeah. But it should really help your situation, but not solve your situation. And I assume there'd be a way to down the shield prior to launching a missile. Like if you send your army oh, of course, first, of course, down the exactly. shield and then missile. I mean, it if you had like, yeah, I mean, if you had like what four or five siege tanks, like pummeling that shield, it should be able to take it down with no problem. Okay. Um, and then yeah, so you pummel it down, and then you send in super super weapon, and yeah, that's a that's a very valid tactic, of course. Okay. Uh, what about the engineer class? Who's uh, capable of repair heavy unit or buildings for a little support gameplay style? Right, um, basically like an engineer class, an infantryman, or a repair truck, or um, something like a repair pad from Command & Conquer, where a video would go mm-hmm. onto the pad, it would drain Commander resources, but it would repair the vehicle. Mm-hmm. So I definitely wouldn't want um, uh, like the engineer to be draining Commander resources, because if, especially if it was in, in control of a player, that would be very yeah. unfortunate. Yeah. Um, but definitely I think it should, like, the engineer, repairing buildings... Not so sure about that because the buildings are giant; they're truly giant. So having like this little dude running around just fixing it just feels a little strange, right? Um, uh, so I'm not sure about repairing the buildings using that. The, the buildings should be able to repair themselves. I mean, if we're talking about repair, right? I mean, that, that's that's a crucial thing. The way I want to approach it is a two-way thing. One is passive repair; that should be free. That's that just basically constantly as long as it's uh, below. I might do either 50% or 75% damage, uh, like health. Uh, then it'll just keep, like slowly but surely repair by itself. Okay. Then there should be active repair. And that should be literally a button action. If you do that, then of course it's going to repair much faster. And you can enable it, disable it per building, of course. And uh, uh, and if you enable active repair, then it will actually use resources to fix the building, but it'll be much faster, right? So you can, for example, use it. All right, I mean, that's probably going to be the standard for like the research facility, right? Okay, it's under attack, active repair. You're probably going to leave that on all the time for that one. Um, whereas for silos, you might not, not, not have have it for that and, and so on so that should handle like repairing buildings but because buildings are so large it doesn't make all that much sense to have like engineers because otherwise you have to have like 20 engineers to make it look reasonable because i think one of the important things about silica is because of the scale it looks correct when there's you know people running next to these giant tanks um the harvester the amount it harvests it makes sense because it's a giant vehicle yeah. So I do want to keep that feeling, and I just, th- therefore I don't want to have like this one dude running around a building and just fixing the entire thing, right? It just will look strange. Sure, maybe maybe they should be able to like uh, contribute to that, right? So if you do have let's say five players playing as an engineer, they should contribute to its repair. But the engineers should definitely be for repairing vehicles, and there it absolutely makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not only That's that, good. also construction, like construction of. Um, um, field defenses you know i want to put for example like static machine guns or something something like that simple things which are not super strong but they can make quite a difference um so that i do want to do for the engineer that's interesting like, i do yeah. want to have an engineer long story short i do want to have an engineer but it wouldn't be like primarily aimed at repairing buildings that's good yeah, yeah. so i think the walls that you've got in the siege map which i can go to in a minute um mm-hmm. are those the type of design you want for the walls or are you thinking of going for more of a traditional block style or um, like okay. a Tiberium style where the walls are kind of like a, a, a triangular like shape like that almost like a, a blade coming out of the ground and they it's like a long blade mm-hmm. 
Uh, good point. So the thing about the walls is, right, I mean, this is the one, one of the things which I was mentioning on the, on the Discord, is, you know, aliens could just flood over them. They're not going to have a problem with the walls. Sure, you could put spikes on top or whatever, but I mean, aliens are always just going to find a way to get over them. And if it kills them on one hit, it doesn't make sense either, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so the walls should be scalable by the aliens. The aliens already have a tough time getting to melee range anyway. Um... In terms of like their design and size, that's the thing I'm not so not not entirely sure about. I, I noticed someone saying like laser walls, fire swarm, you're saying uh, electrified walls or laser walls. True, but the thing is, uh, like you don't want an absolute defense against against the uh, the aliens such as that because, it, I mean, it ruins gameplay at that point to a degree, yeah. right? Um, but I mean, you know, I'm I'm still open to to like, of course, I'm always open to kind of like changing things. But it must uh, uh, like best thing is we try something. We see if it works. If it doesn't, we change it. Um, so that's the way I want to approach this kind of stuff. But the walls, you know, I, I thought about having either really giant tall walls or like, you know, more small ones where you can hide vehicles behind them. Um, but not, you know, I mean, having giant walls would hide uh, structures behind it. But, you know, it, I mean, yeah, you can you can see it there. You know, these walls will hide the structures, but those are giant. Those are truly giant. Yeah. And to place those would be very problematic. You know, and if you go into the city just behind this, uh, just behind this gate, then you can see the walls there are significantly smaller. I mean, they're not going to hide the barracks, for example, but they will serve to hide infantry, small vehicles, and so on. So I'm, I'm still not 100% sure how to do it because, I mean, these walls look fantastic because, you know, I literally this, this my, this map I did completely by myself, this one, but this, this map in particular. You know, I really made sure to like blend the walls nicely with the train, or as best I could. Um, so you know, you, if you're placing things dynamically then that is a problem to do. So, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm still not sure exactly how I'm going to solve the walls. That's why I'm leaving them till later. Because yeah. although this is a really nice fortress and that it would be great to be able to build something like that, um, it is. it has to look good as well. I mean, it can't look like crap. It's like, great, we've got walls, but it looks like shit. You know, so it's it's got to look decent as well. Yeah, yeah. But that, that thing is a massive, giant monstrosity. It's going to kill everything. I, I've actually encountered... This turret, I actually brought it up in the in the in another uh, oh, oh, stream. Oh, dude, just just for fun, literally like open the spawn menu. Like if you just press backspace, if you got okay, you got enable cheats first, and then you, when you press backspace, you got the spawn menu. And if you press uh, the the button with the curly brace, um, it's got like the square bracket as well. Uh, then you can switch which team it's for. And if you put, for example, Centauri, then yep. uh, uh, and then you go into the city. Like with your camera, and there, if you just spawn, for example, I don't know, any vehicle doesn't really matter. Just yeah, just let's say there, so the cannons can see it. Oh, that's gonna kill it. Like ob obviously to, to the ground, yeah, so it doesn't fall fall because it'll spawn at the camera. Um, yeah, just spawn like a yeah, that's gonna probably whoa. Yeah, thought so. Oh, didn't die. But there you go. See those can cannons firing in the distance, and there you go. They're not gonna live long. And that's all this opening fire from over here. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, you know, those cannons are ridiculous. Of course, that's the thing. This this map is very much a work in progress. Um, but you can see, like, just, just to clarify, that uh, uh, citadel, like, just for the fun of it, spawn uh, a harvester in there, or like, or just a dude, just a single dude, like, somewhere inside the, the premises of the uh, uh, of the citadel, just so people can see the scale, because it's it looks relatively small, but it truly is gigantic. Yeah, it's massive. Because because the harvester is a big boy as it is, so if I just put like yeah. a single scout in there, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just giant. You can't even see the scout anymore. I mean, he's probably been killed, but um... yeah, he's, he's been he's been thrown away. But that's that's the point. I mean, the the citadel there, like this is meant to be a siege map, right? Yeah, literally, because uh, uh, I wanted to have like a siege game mode, but ultimately we just like we didn't cancel it. I say we, but I didn't cancel it. But uh, uh, just put it on hold for now because it yeah. required a lot more um, like improvements to the map, and it was just ran out of time, quite frankly. So, but this one should be that you like uh, start off near that main gate. Uh, basically, the Centauri are attacking Sol, so okay. this is the citadel of Sol, and the city that goes with it. Right, this is meant to be the first city on Volterus. Okay, yeah, and it's got the is, uh, this, Sol emblem yeah, as well the, on the gate. Yeah. And so this this um, uh, map is meant to take place prior to 
the current era, if you if you want to call it that, right? So the current era being being uh, let's say about 10, 20 years after the great siege of the Citadel of Sol or something like that. So the, I'm still coming up with the name to make it sound a bit better. But the main thing is that basically there should be this is meant to be fought for by the Centauri, and they uh, like in the law they eliminate this this area. And I want to finish this map and make a second version of it where you can actually play in this map in a strategy mode, but the citadel and all the turrets are destroyed, right? right. The city's, of course, ravaged and, Ruined, and so yeah. on. Yeah, so so that's what I want to kind of, like, uh, uh, do. Because that would be really interesting to, like, move about the ruins of the city, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that, that, sounds, that, sounds, that sounds wicked, yeah. Yeah. And the whole idea is that in the siege game mode, you'd be able to play out this, this siege, which is you'd first, of course, fight for, like, from the Centauri perspective, you'd fight for this gate, then you would fight for entry into the city, fight for the city itself. So there's a lot of infantry combat at that point. Um, and then, of course, once you take the city, that citadel is going to start bombarding you like hell, you know. And so then it's really about like destroying those turrets on top of the citadel and getting into the citadel itself and working your way through and up into the top part of the citadel. You know, so that's that's the idea of this map. It should, should be quite epic and fun to play. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's the main thing. It's 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 not entirely performant at the moment because, especially at night time, if you if you put it for night time, it looks really good. But yeah, it runs doesn't run all that well. So I'm gonna have to like uh, find a lot of like tricks to improve FPS in this map. Yeah. I mean, how do you put into night time? I've got a number pad. I think that's that's what it is, is it? Oh, you number have, pad. You have a number yeah, pad. I got okay. I got TKL keyboard, so I haven't got <clears throat> access okay, to changing fair. time. Which is oh, on me. No. I need. I need to get myself a number pad. I think. <laughs> yeah, you need a good keyboard, man. Like, okay, fair enough. Uh, I want to have a look because I forget the if I put a console command for it, and if I didn't, that's on me. All right. Um, 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 um. You can theoretically put time scale to a ridiculous value and just wait, but yeah, yep. All right. You're not going to be able to do it with basically like like jumping to it immediately. But you could set like a uh, time scale that's one way to kind of like uh what should i set it to 100 uh i think it's limited to like 10 but you can try oh, and right, put okay. 100. Oh. try and put 200 why not there's nothing happening make sure you delete everything but delete all the units yeah just the units if I, i'm pretty sure they're probably all dead anyway but yeah yeah i think there's just one guy here which is soul oh yeah i think you should be right shouldn't he yeah he's, he's fine the main thing okay. is just not to have like twenty because then it won't, won't go as fast because it will be limited yeah. by it. So I'll leave that. I'll leave that take over. We'll get <clears throat> we'll get back to the questions and then we'll have a look at the map at night time. Um, Wait, so did you put ten times or hundred times or? I, I put hundred times. Said time scale set to hundred. Okay. Yeah. I assume it will. It will. Oh, uh, lost your audio, man. Can't hear. Can you hear me still? Hello. Oh, yeah. hello, hello. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Right. Gotcha. <clears throat> yeah. I was just looking at the stars. If it's See if the planet's actually going into night, but it's not yet. Okay. So uh, let's have a look here. There's so many questions. <laughs> uh, do you do you plan construct? Oh, we've already done that. The bunkers and constructions. Uh, will you make tournaments or rank matches in Silica? Yes. Definitely ranked matches. Um, one important thing is I, I do definitely want to have like a competitive multiplayer gameplay mode, um, which is very streamlined in the sense that, you know, no cheats at all, obviously. Um, the server has to have no mods and this kind of stuff, obviously, you know, makes sense if, since, it's a, since it's a ranked ranked mode um, and so on. Um, and that would be the competitive gameplay. The normal gameplay, because I wouldn't call it casual because it's not meant to be casual, right? Like, CSGO has competitive and casual. This should have competitive and normal. Normal would be, of course, you know, with the the way it is currently, with, of course, you know, there, there still needs to be that you can't switch teams during the match, for example. Yeah. Right, once yeah. the match starts, you shouldn't be able to, like, jump into the teams, right? Once you join a team, you should stick to that team uh, and auto team balance. And, of course, you should still be set up by the server. Um, but, yeah, ranked matches, definitely. And there should be a, a separate rank for commander and for um, uh, FPS. Okay. <clears throat> That's good. Uh, how... How are the starting locations for each side decided? Uh, randomized within a certain area of the map or fixed set locations that are picked at random each game? Okay, so right now the way it works is it kind of, um, it goes through the three teams. It first selects a random point for the one for the first team. Then it selects a random point for the second team, which is further than a minimum distance and closer than a maximum distance. And then it does that for the third team as well, of course, relative to the other two teams. Um, 
and this is not a perfect algorithm i still have to like improve it somewhat um but uh, uh but yeah the idea is that it should be a little bit randomized so you don't know that you know wh where the where the team start uh i also want to actually improve this a little bit by also doing like in the server settings so you can set uh the starting distance you know you put so i, I know someone mentioned before like uh, on on discord especially that the games can be quite long at times so for example in the great erg Right, if you start on the opposite ends of the map, that's it. It's a very long match at that point. And the idea what to do with this is to be able to change the starting distance to short. If you put it to short, they're going to start relatively close to each other. So you get into the action very quickly. And then it's going to be a very heated match, um, you know, the whole time. Yeah, yeah. It'll be a relatively we, quick match, logically, because someone will die quite quickly. Yeah, and, uh, last week we had uh, one game where um, it was human versus human, and we were like the furthest away as we could possibly be on the on Badlands. Mm -hmm. And then there was an alien versus human game straight away afterwards, and we were literally right next to each other, like within. Well, I, would, I wouldn't say next to each other, but we were within proximity to the fact that um, a Goliath could get there quite quickly. Um, that that game was done within. I think it was like half an hour. I think the the, the game was finished and that was that was 36 player server that was that was uh i think that was just after you left actually because you, you was in there with me you, we did the human versus human one and mm. we were both in rail tanks shooting each other across the map and then th when you left we went alien versus human and then that's the one where we were spawned literally like within like it, it, it had to be like a thousand meters from each other yeah yeah, yeah that's true that's true <laughs> By the way, someone asked uh, about uh, uh, armored transport. Maybe if you can just uh, yes. spawn the armored transport there. Because, of course, there are armored transports in the game. Uh, or there is an armored transport in the game, to be fair. And there's also and, uh, an unarmed. Uh, I, you did put it sold, yeah? Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Uh... yeah, the unarmed one, I'm not sure if I'm going to be using that one, to be perfectly okay. honest. I mean, I've left it in because, you know, it's 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 a useful thing. But, but, uh, uh, but this is the one that should be, like, the transport to use. So, so this it, one here, yeah. So it can currently hold. Yeah, that, that's the other one that that's unarmed. I'm just, I'm not sure if I'm going to use that one. I, I'm just not a complete fan of it being a transport. It might be used for something else. Okay, and it's too big. It's just too scaled up. I might actually use it for something else. But anyway, okay. um, the whole idea is, of course, this this armed transport should be um, you know so one person drives and uh, the rest can hop in the back and be transported. And the AI can't use it yet. That's why that's the only reason. It is not in the um, uh, in the game, like it's not used in the game currently, right? But otherwise, as soon as I teach the AI to be able to like utilize that vehicle, then I'll of course put it in so you can build and everything. But otherwise, right now it literally does work. Players can jump into the back, um, so if you do spawn it, players can jump in the back and, and use it. But it is an, a relatively decent offensive unit right now because actually in in a previous old version of Prospector, um, it was a it was a bit bit different. I actually designed this truck for that for that mode at the time, and uh, uh, the grenade launcher and the machine gun are quite OP for a transport. Quite frankly, <laughs> so yeah. When I when I first spawned this in and and went in, and I thought, my God, it's got grenade launcher, <laughs> and I was yeah, like, oh, yeah. that that's got some big explosion damage. I wonder how much damage it would actually do. Um, there we go. Yeah, it's it it does like short order of everything i mean one way to solve it is of course reduce the ammo so it can only shoot a couple of shots and then has to reload um uh or reduce the 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 the, the uh, you know rate of fire because right now it's like doo, 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 and yeah. you can reduce that to like half so it's like doo, doo. but yeah okay yeah because I, I was gonna actually ask that question when like because at the start of, of, of a game especially in multiplayer um, you get two buggies, and they get taken by players for scouting straight away. But then you're left with either the teleport system for the rest of the players, or mm -hmm. um, they have to walk. So I was thinking, uh, what tier would this transport be available? And yeah, when precisely. do you think when do you think it will be available to use for us to use? Well, I mean, the way I want to do it is that you would start off a game with the transport. Okay. However, it would not be armed. There would okay. be, uh, they're basically like the arm armament would actually be an upgrade. In which case, now that I think of it, I could probably leave it as is. Um, uh, and of course, you know, so at first you'd be able to like build, for example, as soon as you build light vehicle factory, you'd be able to build transports, but they wouldn't be armed. Okay. And uh, uh, as, like, and then with an upgrade, you'd be able to build armed transports. And at that point, of course, you wouldn't be able to build the, the previous ones. It's just a easy way to kind of like do it. Basically, it upgrades the upgrades um, uh, itself. Yeah. Okay. The transports. Yeah, and I think that would be the best way of doing it, you know, because that's that's fair. You know, you begin the game, you have a transport, you can transport players around the map, but of course, you know, it can't defend itself. 
Okay. How we'll many see. can? I mean, you know, that, that that's the thing. It's like, I mean, um, in fact, you, I, I bet you're going to ask how many people can fit inside. Yeah. Right now, it's six. Um, okay. And the plan is to actually increase it to about 12, which of course immediately becomes a problem because if you put 12 players inside and you drive <laughs> to the alien base at the beginning of the game, yes. GG. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's actually, yeah. Because how, how much health, actually, I can check how much health it's got, can I? But that could that yeah, could be subject to change, wouldn't it? So oh, yeah, 6,000. Sure. I mean, yeah, li literally, okay. So, so, so to clarify, a previous version of, of Prospector, um, it had actually you fighting against a Goliath at the end of, like, the match and uh, uh the thing is this had to be able to kill a goliath sure it was like a really tanky right but that's why it's set up for that so it's optimized to kill a goliath or to be able to like just outrun a goliath um while being able to defend itself um so that's kind of like where this came from so okay. it's, it's not optimized for being used currently like as a normal unit that's why i still haven't put it in uh like made have made it available okay yeah, because it's a burning question from a lot of people. Like um, at the start of the game, they feel kind of lost of what to do. So having some yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. transport craft would definitely give a bit more. Like, oh so, yeah, let's let's go and take a bunker and maybe harass something, you know? And they can yeah. all go together and do that as a squad. Exactly. I mean, the the thing is with with these transports, that's that's what I'm a little bit worried about, right? With the, with the, this transport being, um, uh, like the more I think about it, if you could just start the game with twelve players, um, uh, like jumping straight to that transport, and you know, driving basically in a group right and everyone's like all right guys hop out in three two one and deploy it's only 12 players right near the enemy then jesus christ that's really powerful right i mean against the humans that's no no problem because i mean like even if it was 12 riflemen then that like the, the hq is just gonna crap all over you it's just gonna take you out you're not gonna be able to do all that much unless you really get inside the base which you could theoretically with this this thing right so i mean that's the thing i'm maybe on the fence of giving it straight from the beginning of the game um Rather, I think it would be it would be better to like uh, uh, give additional tasks, things which you, which the player can do at the beginning of the game. Yeah, M more bunkers, right? That's one thing. I haven't, I didn't get proper time to do bunkers properly. So, uh, like to put bunkers in more locations in the uh, in the map. Um, so, you know, not only bunkers, but also like, uh... okay. To clarify, what I want to do, I want to have bunkers, which of course are defensive positions, but at the same time I want to have like uh, positions which you can explore, like old campsites, for example. Abandoned old campsites, which have, for example, some, uh, 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 you know, abandoned equipment. Now this equipment would, for example, be, uh, uh, you know, it would be, let's say, equipment for a, uh, uh, a sniper, for example, marksman. So at the beginning of the game, if you found this equipment, you'd be able to, like, switch yourself to a uh, sniper unit, okay, you know, which is uh, to a marksman, and so that can be like it can make some difference at the beginning of the game, but of course, it doesn't make a massive difference, and that's the important no. thing. You'd yeah. be able to find a heavy, for example, somewhere that can make a difference, but still, it's only one heavy, so that's not going to make that much of a difference, you know. And but but it can be really fun for the player that finds it, or of course, the AI should be able to claim it as well, right? So from a command perspective, you should be able to claim that that with an AI as well. Um, or maybe not actually, because then the commander might claim it for the for himself, and the players don't have it, and so on. Anyway, but uh, uh, but that's the point. I want to do more of these like points of interest, which are randomly spawned, um, that the players can find and and explore. Okay. So there should be a lot yeah. of like this kind of like exploring the location, finding things. Especially, I want like I already have like a casing prepared. You know, I want to have like some old drop pods which were dropped but never picked up, so you can find them use them it opens up and there's some for example some resources inside or you know some other stuff i've noticed as well um you can spawn containers in which actually open up you can walk into them and stuff is, is uh, that yeah, yeah, something yeah. you'd like to use like for example have it half buried on the map or something and someone could literally find it and open it and then be able to pick up like uh, some sort of equipment from it or maybe there could be a buggy in there that is neutral and you can take control of it and then you can use it for your your team or something um Okay, so those containers, like those containers, are old. That's that's from Prospector, in fact. Okay. Um, uh, like you do mean the black one, right? It's a black yeah. container. Yeah, that one's old. I'm, I'm not even happy with the way it looks. So that one's gonna be probably just completely dumped. Uh, it is used in some places on the, on the buildings, and that's fine. But uh, uh, it's not something I want to really like have in there for like uh, uh, for something that's dropped. I do actually have some drop pods, and if, if people are interested, I could actually like uh, uh, and if it's possible to stream my screen. I know we didn't talk about this previously, but um, if it is possible for me to stre stream my screen, I could actually show in um, like one of the um, uh, locations where I'm actually working on. 
Um, yeah. Like, in fact, it will be used to utilize in Prospector, and it should be available in some of the strategy matches as well. So, if people are interested, I could show that afterwards. Yeah, I could, I could, I could pull your, um, I could pull your camera feed up on Discord, and if you share mm -hmm. your screen on there, I can then put it straight into the stream. Yeah, I can do that. I can do that. Mm -hmm. Because I know, I know, the uh, like the the the, the Vod Ninja. I can. It, it said I could like uh, share my screen there as well, but. Yeah, we, we, we can we can get back to that later on. But yeah, 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 definitely sure. now. Yeah. I think we'll think because yeah, because it takes some time to start up the Unity editor and when it was. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. No, we, we see the drop pod anyway at the at the start of Prospector, so we we yeah um that'd be quite cool actually. Yeah, having the drop pod. Um, okay, that's a, that's a good point. Yeah, like uh, uh like. With with the drop pod, of course, it would be nice to find uh, like an old drop pod, right? I'm still not I'm still on the fence whether to put drop pods in or not. I know everyone wants drop pods, but uh, the thing is, it like it really kind of like messes with the game to a degree because it's something that something you can't defend against, and suddenly you just like deploy a bunch of these units, right? With the teleportation, there is a uh, an amount of um, uh, it, it's 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 going to be definitely slower, right? So it, it there should be some time before you can reuse the teleport so if you go and you teleport somewhere and you attack and you get killed you should have some decent amount of time uh before you can actually re-teleport right so you should be a bit more careful um so and that's the thing you you won't be able to like spam units with with teleportation with the drop pods you know if, if it was literally something you could use to deploy units there you know, I mean, you'd be able to literally drop it into the enemy base or something like that. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just not sure with it, right? It, it's, it's got a lot of, like, question marks. However, the idea is, of course, Prospector starts off with you in a drop pod because the idea is that, you know, you're, you're deployed to a remote part of the planet which is not yet explored, and you are there to explore the area and search for Volterium. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's why it makes sense that it's like, all right, we're going to send you over there. So you need a really fast transport, like a transport which gets you there. But it's not like a big, you know, ship that lands because we don't know what's in there, right? So yeah. the idea is that these drop pods get like flooded into these remote locations, and uh, and of course these these troopers, these are like uh, more trained elite troopers, kind of like go and ex explore the area searching for Volterium. Cool. Um, yeah, so that's the current idea with the drop pods. Cool, cool. Uh, guys, just quickly, thank you very much for all the follows. I've sorry I've been keeping up with them, but um, yeah, guys, thank you very much, very much appreciate it. And if you haven't already left a like on the stream, please do. We're very much appreciated on that as well. It helps with discovery for the video, and also after the stream's finished, it turns into a video on YouTube. So already that would help push it out even further to anyone that might have not seen the stream. So um, they might be looking for questions, which could be answered here. So very much appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, right, okay, there are. There are tons of questions. I did see a question that was pretty, pretty up there. I think it was actually my Discord. Hold on, let me just grab it quickly. Uh, mm -hmm. Here we, here we go. So we've got. Uh, how do you feel about the tournament? So already said you're going to do uh, rank mode. Uh, did you enjoy? Uh, did you watch the tournament back when uh, Mike was casting it? I was. I was yeah. watching it. Uh, or I was watching some of it, but I actually had like another interview at one point, so I had to actually um, uh, like uh, I wouldn't wasn't able to like watch the whole uh, the whole thing. But I really like the tournaments, and I do want to kind of like into the future support them more officially mm -hmm. because I think it was a lot of fun to watch, and uh, officially in a multitude of ways. First of all, uh, spectator mode absolutely necessary, um, uh, and of course that's the thing. The problem with the spectator mode, I mean, there should be a different spectator mode for tournaments. Yeah. And there should be a different spectator mode for, of course, you know, when you're just spectating. You know? Yeah. Yes. Because if you're spectating, the problem is, of course, if you can watch and see where both teams are, and then you can join one of the teams. Obviously, you can imagine, right? Especially for the yeah. aliens. For the humans, it's not that much of a problem. For the aliens, definitely. Yeah. Um, because you'd be able to say, "All right, guys, you know, you hop in. There's the alien queen, or whatever." Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that's that thing. Uh, but for the tournaments, I also want to support them more officially. So like when. When there's like more organized tournaments, I want to do it so that, for example, in the main menu, you'd be able to see like on the side of the screen something saying like, "All right, you know, this tournament's happening at that time," uh, and it'll show the results of the tournament as well and all this kind of stuff. Oh. So I, w I would like to kind of support these kind of uh, events. Yeah, so I remember talking to you. And you're a quite competitive, orientated player, anyway. So you're you're you love the the thing about ranked tournament play and just overall competitiveness <laughs> of, of gameplay in general well, so i mean to, to be fair i'm actually not that much of a competitive player i mean i i, I mostly like to play co-op in fact 
Okay. Um, but uh, uh, but I mean, you know, I mean, if if Mike challenges me to like, you know, the Dead Wizard, when he challenged me to like a, uh, uh, or I think Chat suggested it, like a tank battle, I just I just couldn't resist. You know, <laughs> this, this is a lot of fun. Uh, this one's pop cap. We've already covered that. Uh, okay, so this question, I'm not too sure if you would if if you would like it, but. In other RTS games, you have to build some sort of housing that increases population limit. But you, would, would you do the same or maybe just some upgrade in the research center so you don't have as many buildings, but you start off with, say, 100, and then you could, well, no, 100, like 50, and then you could increase it, say, 100, 200, and then it gets to a point where it can just go in, in, infinite? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, to be honest, I, I did think about that, exactly that. Um, uh, but quite frankly, I'm not sure I'm really a fan of it. You know, because it's um, it doesn't fit in with the scale to a degree, right? If you look at, for example, uh, Age of Empires, right? A building is this big, and a character next to it, you know, a, a villager is this big. It's like he can barely fit in the house. I mean, you literally have to crouch to get into the house. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, you know, you know, and it's like there, it kind of makes sense because, it's, of course, you know, it's meant to be like a you're compressing a massive time scale. But here we're looking at a realistically presented. Realistically, of course, being in quotations because this doesn't exist, right? But authentically presented uh, a battle, right? And it's it is meant to be a battle, and the idea is that even the, the construction is realistic in speed for the technology of the time, right? Uh, so, you know, um, I don't think I'd be be really much a fan of it. But I mean, if if we see that it kind of like makes sense for balancing, then it is an option, right? Um, how to approach that? You know, having literally some housing. Oh, I'm not sure. I mean, it could be like, yeah, someone's saying like housing is the barracks. What do you mean? Yeah, exactly. True. Right? Barracks literally are housing for soldiers, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I mean, you know, having like each barracks can give you a maximum of, let's say, 50 infantry. What about the vehicles? You know, I mean, you have factories that produces the vehicles, but that's not where they live, right? And, yeah. and that's the thing. It's, it's not a garage. So, uh, uh I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm probably like at the moment I'm against it. Yeah, quite frankly, yeah, at the moment yeah. I'm against it. That's so right, I, that's I'd right. rather like uh, literally just have a maximum pop pop cap, and if you fill it up with infantry, then um, you know, uh, it's, it's it's a long long story this one, right? <laughs> if if I have a separate pop cap uh, for um, uh, infantry and vehicles, you know, uh, or like a, a uh, combined one, I would prefer a like separate one for infantry and for uh, vehicles. Um, purely because it means that infantry will always be used as well. Okay. Okay. But I mean, the pop cap, I just want to clarify. I do want a default pop cap, but the pop cap should be possible to disable. Yeah. So this this would be beneficial more for like ranked modes because then you'd you'd know what what the best optimization is for ranked play versus if someone just started up their own public server and just wanted to throw on in, infinite just so they can mess about or have a public game with everyone that can just spawn in as many units as they want to basically yeah precisely yeah precisely i mean uh, obviously in the ranked mode you know i mean there will be it will be very streamlined because it is ranked yeah. um so you know it's not going to be server settings or anything like that the server settings can't exist in that kind of thing um but uh but for like normal uh normal servers normal gameplay servers then yeah there i imagine you know some people are just going to want, want to like put for example even more strict population cap because their computers might not handle as much or they want to have more uh, like slower uh, gameplay because of course with less units it does slow down the gameplay somewhat right mm -hmm. yeah yeah right we're in night time now um... yeah if you want to like move the camera into the city because the, the lights are like disabled at a distance oh yeah yeah and there's a ton of lights so and you can see it does have an impact on the performance. I'm, I'm not sure, like, I can't really tell what, what uh, performance you've got there right now, but, but, but yeah, it does just... have an influence. Like, it does influence the performance. Left. So, 80 frames per second at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, if I spawn in as a soul soldier, hopefully I do. What graphics card do you have? Uh, 4090. Oh, well, <laughs> all right, fair enough. Well, that makes sense then. <laughs> But yeah, about about seventy five, and I'm well, not dead center just yet, but I'm I'm in kind of like uh, out the way from the turrets just in case I end up getting nuked. Um, yeah, which, yeah, yeah, which I've done. Oh beforehand. well, I mean, you, you're soul, you're right, you're, you're soul. Yeah, I think I'm soul anyway now. So, 
Oh, no, yeah. in fact, you're neutral. They're not going to attack you. All right, okay, cool, cool. Okay. I haven't actually physically walked around this siege map, uh, by the way. This is, like, the first time I've actually decided to walk around it. Normally, I just oh, spawn right. I just spawn loads of units in there and just watch them kill each other. Like, if, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or use it for, like, a thumbnail or something like that, you know? So, um... I know, very... Yeah, how long did it take to make... Do you, I assume that the buildings... Are, uh, you, you create a blueprint and then you can chuck that blueprint down. But are the lights... you have to fix them yourself? Or... Uh, was Sorry, what, what do you mean by that? So the lights, did you have to add them yourself and have, and have them like on the building themselves? Or did you have to... Uh, did you have them already oh, yeah, like yeah, pre-placed? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, okay. So, 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 so to clarify, the buildings, the individual like buildings of course yeah. you know uh, uh the the uh, the design of them and all this kind of stuff it was a bought model yeah then of course yeah. heavily adjusted to kind of like fit into the environment and all this kind of stuff mm -hmm. i had to do all the colliders and all and uh, all the like adjust all the textures and all this kind of stuff to support unity um and of course i also had to put like all the prefabs onto them so like the functional okay. doors the the lights um uh, and all this stuff like none of there were no lights like this um uh, so that's per prefab the prefab being like a prefabric, if you want to call it that, where it's the model plus some functional elements, and then you can just like spam that wherever you need to, right? So you combine yeah. it in, in various ways to make it look good. So I put it so that like the lights are, I did those are all manually set up for each individual building type, but then of course you put the, like you put a lot of the building types around the map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is the HQ tower, if I remember correctly. Yes, precisely. Yeah. Yeah, so just remember entering here, then at the back it would be teleporter, and then that yeah, one exactly. open. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. There you go. Good news. You did all the lights yourself. I bet that <laughs> took. I bet it took a while. That definitely took yeah. a while. I bet. It did. It did yeah. very much. I mean, to, to be frank though, these buildings were like this city part was much. Like to put the actual buildings themselves was quite quick. It, it, it wasn't that that difficult. The biggest pain was getting the like the terrain and all the textures and all this kind of stuff to nicely blend with the buildings underneath. You know, like the pathways, you'll see they're slightly depressed into the ground to kind of like, uh, you know, because that's where you have the tiles and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. So, you know, getting a map to look nice is very time consuming. Yeah. Yeah. I, I could see, like, you, you probably have to scour the map as well and make sure there's, like, no, um, like, holes in the map terrain itself where you could fall through or whatnot. Like, you see on other FPS games, you, you could be walking, and you go, I'm going to try and take cover behind this rock quickly. You go behind this rock, massive gap, you go straight through the map, and you're gone. I've done yeah. it multiple times in, in other FPS shooters, and it's just... <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, here I've got, like, a uh, a backup fix where you can never go through the terrain itself. Oh, if teleports. terrain in the map, if there's, like, terrain in the map and you fall through, I yep. mean, literally, if you, if you just go into, like, uh, a free cam, right and you move under the ground and you press t to teleport the unit which you were last controlling to that position you'll notice that it'll just disappear because it'll like it'll start falling and then it'll disappear above the ground because it gets like it de gets detected that it's below the train and just gets teleported back yes yeah, so i see and this you, command quite often it says teleporting unit that fell through the yeah, ground to the train yeah, surface precisely yeah. sometimes in certain situations the ai can get into a situation where they kind of like clip into the ground and need to be teleported back into the thing you don't notice it that's the thing that's why I have it in the console, so I know about it, um, uh, because you know I, I do want to eventually fix it, like to be perfect, so that that cannot happen. But yeah, mm -hmm. it's 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 not a problem for normal gameplay at all. Cool, ideal, ideal. Right, any more questions? I, well, I, I don't even know why I asked that question, to be honest. Um, let's have a look. We're gonna do we're gonna do a few more questions like we are now, and then we're gonna get in some questions and gameplay as well, so we can do something on screen for you guys. And then have like questions thrown in chat that we can answer on the go kind of thing. Um, let's have a look. Damn, that mouth sounded like exactly like a grenade. <laughs> when no. he was doing the, the sound effects for the uh, grenade launcher for the, uh, for the <laughs> armed transport. <laughs> oh, the... Th 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, it's maybe. the best way to put across an, uh, an idea, you know, to do the sound. So someone's asking, in the FPS mode, is an option to maybe to have a commando and take a small group of infantry uh, with you and your own small troop. Uh, you meant, I, I think you answered this question before, but just just in case no one's caught it yet, um, like making your own AI squad that follows you about, basically. Yes. So the idea is, if the team is controlled by the AI commander, then you'd be able to like look at a unit and uh, uh, tell them to follow you, uh, and they will. 
no matter what they are, probably you have to be like a greater unit, right? So you're not going to have like a little a light buggy followed by a siege tank. That's ridiculous, right? But vice versa, certainly. Yeah. Um, uh, if there's a player commander, then it's up to the player commander to assign units to you. If it, like right now, it's not possible, right? But eventually, it should be that that they that he can tell them to follow you, and if they follow you, they kind of go under your command, so to speak. Almost like a guard command from like other the other RTS games where yeah, yeah, precisely, you can is- issue a unit, defend this unit, or follow yeah. this unit. Um, yeah, exactly. I mean, the guard command should still be there. I think, um, a lot, like as a as a kind of like separate thing. But like, I mean, this would be maybe it doesn't have to be called follow. You know, it can be called a sign or something like that. You know. But anyway, it's it's not important. It's like group or whatever. Mm-hmm. But anyway, that's the point. So. Okay. You should have like uh, uh, being able to like small command a group of tr- like units around you. Yeah. In yeah. FPS, eventually, uh, of course. Plan tags, clan stats, and player stats, especially in relation to the competitive mode. Okay. Uh, clan tag. I mean, once it's competitive and like ranked in the list, then uh, definitely you do need like clan tags. Of course, it's 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 an automatic thing. I mean, you know, uh, just looking at Mike's uh, uh, tournament, you know. Uh, it's, it's very clear people do want to kind of like have this cl- clan so definitely clans make sense um you know i mean it should be displayed even in like normal games not mm-hmm. competitive ones um uh, so you know you can see that you're playing with a clan member of let's say you know a prolific uh, clan for example so yes long story short yes player stats uh definitely uh you know there should be like some long-term player stats to kind of cool. like uh follow you know yeah yeah uh when you release silica did the player base utilize the mechanics of the game closely to the way you in, you idolized it, or did you see something you had not ex- uh, like anticipated? And if you did, what uh, was different? Okay, yes and no. So to clarify, the aliens, the players, very quickly caught on to the way they're meant to be used by building the nodes, and mm-hmm. then of course expanding the base that way. That was a very surprised how quickly uh, you know the players caught on with that. Um, as for general gameplay oh god no completely different i expected like my idea was that that players would build about 100 200 units in total in the entire match roughly speaking right i mean i mean not, not like uh, overall but i mean like at one point that there would be 200 units uh, available in the match that's what i expected <laughs> okay yeah no <laughs> you know with 500 plus units usually in a, in a standard match yeah it's it can be crazy so that was like one thing where it's like oh my god I'm going to have to do really heavy adjustments to what I initially planned, you know? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's have a look. I did I did also notice as well that um, when you bring in players that kind of like, for example, when Jack Frags made a video, instantly he brought up Command & Conquer Renegade, like within what the, the two to three minutes of being into the video. Um, that was the type of thing I had as well. When I started up the game, uh, when I saw the third person aspect controlling the vehicle, and like the harvesters, you know, instantly they just it just threw Command Conquer Renegade in, in, in you know in like in, into my head straight away. Um, did you anticipate players coming in from those type of games and same with natural selection and and then mm-hmm. you've got the RTS types as well, so you've got Command and Conquer players, Starcraft players, uh, Age of Empires, you know, from the all broad spe- spectrum of RTS coming in and um, kind of doing things differently that you may not have expected. For example, like you said with the aliens, um, people very 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 quickly found out that you need to play them like the zerg from starcraft like you'd, you'd expand using creep technically like the nodes making creep and then you'd be able to build on top of that as you're going along and stuff like that and then for the human players i have noticed um the more traditional rts styles is not so much like you go out and harass the alien straight away which is my play style like, I'll, I'll go for the eco of the alien straight away but mm-hmm. some other players would play either like defensively, so they would they would they would build build within their own confines of the base and defend from that point, and then slowly start to ramp up production and push out. Which um, I actually I saw on our on our games there was a commander that spammed just hover tanks, just mostly he didn't even touch a single siege tank. It was hover tanks, hover tanks, hover tanks, and then a few rocket launchers and rail tanks, and it actually worked. Um, I I was on the alien team during the last game of that night and. The same tactic beat the alien commander who was pumping out Goliaths within the first ten minutes. Uh, yeah. So yeah. 
did you did you ever think that there'd be players like that that was able to like push the boundaries against like other like obviously seasoned RTS players? If you if you understand what I mean, like they've got those mm -hmm. tactics already. A bit like Galahad. If you take Galahad for example, the the man just he, he's just natural selection to the course. So he knows he loves his aliens and he he knows what to do with them straight away. He can get Goliaths out within six minutes and so and such. You know so. Um, did you expect that, or did you think it would be a bit slower to get up to that stand, like that standpoint? I mean, uh, I will say I did expect it to be like I did expect that, but I didn't expect it to be so fast. Hmm. Um, uh, you know, I did, I did like, uh, I didn't like thoroughly think it through. To be fair, you know, it wasn't like, um, like, oh, will players catch on? It was, I, I can't, it was kind of like automatic, right? I mean, like once players start to actually like have interest in the game, then uh, you know people do start to look for like interesting tactics and all this kind of stuff. I was mainly surprised at how much people were pushing the boundaries, you know. Um, that I was very surprised about. You, you mentioned Galahad. Um, the funny thing was like during Mike's interview, uh, uh, I actually realized that I actually played a lot with Galahad in uh, like in the past in, with natural selection because mm -hmm. I play I started playing natural selection in. Ooh, I think sometime in 2013. So it came out in 2012, uh, the end of 2012. And I started playing it sometime in 2013, like near the beginning. And I mean, I've been playing it, like the last I played it was in January, right? I mean, I would still play it um, uh, if, you know, if I didn't have so much work, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, so going back to the start of your question, which was, did I expect people from, you know, natural selection and such to have an interest in, in Silica? Uh, yes and no. Because uh, I did expect a lot of, um, like, I mean, this game is an exercise to a degree in nostalgia, right? I mean, uh, I loved Dune 2, I loved StarCraft, I loved Tiberian Sun, uh, and of course, countless FPSs, right? Um, I'm more of an FPS player than an RTS player, to be to be perfectly frank. Um, uh, but I do enjoy playing RTSs. But I just prefer, like, Tiberian Sun, I loved to the core. That was a fantastic game. But I did enjoy playing, um, uh, you know, a ton of uh, FPS as well. But uh, I did expect people like, uh, you know, my age group to kind of like, uh, and above, of course, to like remember these games and kind of like uh, be interested in Silica because it is a nostalgia trip to a, to a certain degree. I mean, I loved those games for not only not out of, not only out of nostalgia, but because of the environment they kind of like put across. It was a very different time things were less main like main of course there was not as many games and things mm -hmm. weren't as streamlined uh as perfected and so it had this kind of like raw feel to it to a degree and uh, uh that's the kind of approach i've taken with this game i mean it's, it's certainly not streamlined or perfected to to any degree at the moment but um you know i i do like that idea like you know, from from massive studio you would normally expect a game to be released in a absolutely polished state right Maybe not the case today, but let's I say that's coming. Know, I knew it was coming. Yeah, that's, yeah exactly. Maybe I was going to say it. I was going to say today. it. Yeah, I, some, <laughs> someone would have. So, <laughs> I mean, it really depends on the game, of course, and the studio, yeah. right? Yeah. But um, uh, but in the past, you know, the games were a little bit buggy, but you know, no one cared because it was like um, it was kind of like yeah, you know, there was nothing else available. It's a little mm -hmm. bit of a different different world now. But long story short, so I don't so I don't go ranting on for an eight, for the next hour. Um, I did expect people to come in from like these games, but I didn't expect um, uh, like especially from Natural Selection. It is a very different game mm -hmm. in the way it plays. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like on paper, yeah, one's like RTS, RTS, FPS, FPS. But uh, the the fact that one is interior and the other one, and of course, Silica is exterior, is a massive difference. I mean, the engagement ranges here are you know hundreds of meters. Yeah. Where there, hundreds of meters is the limit of the map. So. It's um uh it's it plays very differently and uh you know I was I was for example with Galahad I was very surprised like now that I think about it you know I was surprised that for example he really enjoyed uh uh, uh like Silica from this like in this regard because it is a very different beast you know you do have to expand across the map and it is it's a much slower game than um uh, the natural selection is I've had some really fantastic matches in natural selection too in its heyday of course um where I had a match which went on for two hours. Now, to clarify, a game there usually took about, what, 30 minutes, you yeah. know, not even. Like, 20 minutes maybe is usually what it took. Like, if, if there was really good good uh, team versus bad team, 15 minutes and you're done, right? But th this game took two hours because there was just constant pushing back and forth of the front lines, and there was nonstop action. It was absolutely fantastic, and I loved it. Um, you know, and unfortunately, of course, it, 
the, the game has of course a lot of players have left the game and uh, yeah. and so on so you know but um uh, i still of course wish natural selection only the best um and uh, that was the thing that that's why I, I try to respect like the the other games i don't want to like steal everything everything from the from the games and uh, and so on you know i do respect the work of other people mm -hmm. you know that's why i don't want to add massive you know uh, sandworms although it would be epic to see in um in the great erg for example yeah. To have a giant sandworm just go through and start gobbling up, you know, nom nom nom. Well, it, it would be very disrespectful towards um uh, towards Dune the franchise and you know, and uh, the author Frank Herbert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, and when when I first seen the Harvester as well, um, I, I saw the big landing pad on the back and I thought to myself, could that be like a attachment point for a carryall? Like going back to like Dune, <laughs> like picking up the the Harvester, which then escapes the you know the giant worm that would come and eat him for like gathering the spice on the uh, on on the sand um that's what that came through in my head um but when you said uh, in the last q a that it was it was maybe going to be used for like a drone platform where it will come and pick up the bolterium crystals and take it back to the finery and stuff so mm -hmm. um yeah i was wondering what it was going to be used for i was kind of thinking is it like an attachment platform maybe you can like build something on top of the harvester there like to uh, maybe what? like a so, so actually, that's that's a good point. So, w one thing I wanted to mention, um, I noticed. Oh, I forgot what stream it was. Uh, I think it was Detox's stream yesterday. Um, uh, you know, people were asking if the machine guns on the harvester are like a, a final solution. The answer is no. I mean, the uh, I do want to have eventually an upgrade. Like, eventually, what it should be that default the harvester does not have those weapons, um, but uh, but eventually we'll have like an upgrade which can add those weapons in. What I eventually want to do is allow actually uh, AI soldiers to be able to go inside the harvester. More specifically, obviously, man the the top of it, right? Yeah. So that should be your defense. Right, okay. Um, yeah. Of course, that's a bit more complicated because, you know, that, that, like in worst case, it can stay as it is mm -hmm. because the guns aren't aren't super OP. Um, like, even, even like I know someone's saying, oh, they can shoot at the ground to a degree, right? They can't shoot directly under the harvester, but they can shoot kind of like about 45 degrees maybe about 50 uh, uh, off to the side. And uh, uh, so if you approach the harvester, you do get shot at if you could approach it from the side. Um, but the thing is, it's like you don't get hit. You barely get hit, you know, uh, because it's it's quite inaccurate. The point is to have these only accurate for close range. And of course, they're also okay against like uh, aircraft, you know, which makes sense. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see how things go. I don't want to promise uh in this regard because it is you know i might run into like some super technical issue which would, which would take absolutely ages to solve and it just is like doesn't make sense to continue down the path of trying to have like uh, ai units be able to walk inside the harvester right yeah, but uh yeah. but it would be interesting i mean you know even even being able to for example take over vehicles i mean obviously you know a siege tank or something like that i mean there's no interior to get into or anything like that but a harvester i think is a little is a little bit of a different beast you know, it would be interesting to be able to like hack into a harvester, get inside, and then you have to hack one of the computers inside, for example, and then you'd be able to actually take it over. And it would, of course, take some time, so there'd be defenses inside and whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. But just ideas. I'm just literally throwing ideas out. Yeah, and then and if that were to happen, I assume it would alert the commando that there's a hack ongoing. Oh yeah, for for, for yeah. sure, definitely. I mean, it would literally have to be, I guess, like a a, a unit role. You know, uh, either for example, a saboteur. I want to have a saboteur. I've mentioned it before, which would have yeah. active camouflage. Um, not exactly like predator, but something similar to that, right? Where mm -hmm. it would be difficult to to like to see to make out when he's moving slow. If he's moving fast, of course, you can see him yeah. uh, a bit, bit easier. And the idea is this: this this unit would be able to place explosives, like strong explosives, onto buildings, vehicles, and so on. So he'd be able to approach the um, the harvester and just like plop, you know, plop it on the side of the uh, let's say the wheel or something like that. Um, and uh, you know these explosives could be destroyed, of course. But, uh, but yeah, so that would be like the saboteur. But maybe the saboteur could also be able to hack, you know, as an alternative way to kind of like solve the situation. Mm. But we'll see. I mean, in this regard, okay. we'll see. One of yeah. the things I did want to do was to be able to take over a building with infantry, um, and, and they wouldn't have to have to have any specialization or anything like that. But they would have to go go to the building, and there'd be points which they have to fight for or like you know take. Um, and so, of course, that way. It makes uh, infantry interesting the whole game. Uh, at the same time, uh, or like it's another thing which the infantry can do the whole game. At the same time, it would be something like it would be interesting to have firefights within the barracks, for example. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, and uh, the, I would assume then once they've taken over the building, um, if it's like, if, for example, in the enemy base and they took the building over, would that deactivate the building or would it um, assign its role to the other commander for, for use or would it be a deactivation because it's in their base, base technically? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's exactly the thing, which is like the, the question about, I mean, it would be cool to be able to take it over, but at the same time, I mean, imagine if you took over like an ultra heavy vehicle factory, like what do you start producing siege tanks like in the, in the enemy base so they have to destroy yeah. it and attack it it might a little bit be a little bit op so i i, I noticed someone said like oh, okay yeah uh, dacolite said saboteur can keep buildings from operating temporarily that makes sense so he'd be able to like shut it down you know? yes yeah, similar to like um the spy in in the older command and conquerors where it would go to a power plant and it would shut that power ah, plant yes. off it would go yes. to the refinery and steal some yeah. money or it would go and uh hit the radar and it deactivates the mini map and the commander you know that sort of thing yeah precisely i noticed someone saying uh tom's markovs is saying you could take over bases in june 2. i don't remember you, if you could actually like take them over because there was no unit which could literally take them over the i don't buildings. remember seeing it like an engineer or anything in june yeah there was, uh, like, because there's the saboteur, there is a saboteur unit in Dune 2, but it yeah. just did damage. It was literally just explosive damage. And there was a deviator, which could, um, like, take over an enemy unit for a time, for a little mm. while. But uh, I don't remember there literally being a, um, like, being able to take over. I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure. Maybe it was added in, like, one of the, uh, once, uh, the thing. Just send units in the base until they have no health. I don't remember, man. I don't remember. I've got Dune 2 on my mobile, actually, like the original version of it. Um, so I, I'm going to have a look at that later on. Uh, question here. Make the grenade launcher fire smoke grenades from the armor tra uh, the armed transport. Interesting idea, but that could result in no FPS or yeah, I was gonna smoke, say. Smoke, smoke everywhere. You know, it would have, it would have, yeah. it would have to be a very limited um, thing to do. I mean, maybe more logically would be that vehicles... Like some of the vehicles will be able to do like a smoke smoke screen or yeah. something, you know. I, I'm not, not smoke screens, of course. You know, the AI would have to be able to work with it and and all this kind of stuff. So I'll, I'll definitely have to like look at that later on. So, okay. Uh, can alien structures get add-ons for defense instead of a standalone spike towers? Uh, sorry, say again. So can can alien structures get add-ons for defense instead of standalone spike towers? So I, this this would be like um for the nest and for like the spawners ah, yeah yeah good point uh so the the nest that one should definitely have default uh, uh like defenses yeah. just like the hq right because mm -hmm. that way it kills one of the things which um uh, what's uh like the buggy, oh, the, yeah the buggy yeah. rush uh yeah the buggy rush exactly that kind of like counters the buggy rush right or, or at least reduces it in um how easy it would be to do mm -hmm. so Definitely, that should be part of um, like the nest defense, um, but otherwise, I do want to have it so like definitely not part of the spawning towers. Uh, so therefore, you'd, afterwards you would have to build turrets individually, which would be for the humans as well, mind you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, like the the only got... there is an exception. There is an exception, and that is the ultra heavy vehicle factory needs machine guns on the top. Mainly yeah, because big building. Jesus Christ, you cannot get aliens up the top. If they if they get one single alien gets onto the top of the the like, ultra heavy, you just can't get it off. Yeah, yeah, he's munching away on that forever. Then, yeah, <laughs> for how long it takes a crab to kill a building. <laughs> yeah, but the, so, yeah. So, yeah, someone's asking like how many people are working on silica. It's just me. Uh, uh, to clarify, uh, I had. At most, I had like two people working with me. There was uh, uh, Gassi Hutskova who did the locations, practically all of them, or like most of them, that is. Um, uh, then uh, there was Andre Benar who did the UI. Uh, they left, uh, like Gassi left for um, uh, arm, the armor team, and Andre left like completely, like he, he actually left the industry entirely. Um, uh, you know. But right now I am alone, and I actually uh, am like looking for additional help. But uh, I don't want to grow the team much at all. I want to keep it like to. I want to keep it a very small, very friendly little core team. You know? mm. Yeah, I think you said that in the uh, the the last interview that you had guys work on the maps and the UI and stuff, and then um, 
it was just you mainly do it, dealing with the the code and and all that sort of yeah, thing as yeah, well. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so like all all the units are physics based. I wrote all of them. Um, did all the particle effects. Did uh, practically all the sound sound effects. The sound effects, of course, you you know, I did the standard process where you have sound libraries which you uh, mix together to make various mm -hmm. sounds and so on. Um, uh, and I did have Andre uh, uh, Andre Novosad, which did a few sounds. So I, I do want to uh, give a shout out to him. Of course, I didn't do any of the marketing videos, right? Just to clarify, those are made by the um, the video team at PM Interactive, which are which are mwah, fantastic. Mm. So, uh, but otherwise, yeah, all the network code, uh, all the game code, yeah, it's all mine. You know, uh, all the setup of the actual assets of the, of the vehicles, I did do like a, a lot of like modeling adjustments, but I did not model out the actual vehicles themselves, for example. You know, I did not do those models themselves. Um, uh, so, but for example, I did take like I did have like a kit which I made the interior of the uh, the harvester for, replaced mm -hmm. you know tracks with uh, with uh, the wheels, for example, and so on and so on and so on. Yeah, I scoured the uh, Unity assets, and I, I've seen on the uh, the asset uh, area at the moment. Um, I did see vehicles on there that cause I know you've said Centauria meant to be a, a lower advanced version. Of soul, like they've kind of they've come to, they've came to the area together, and then they've split off due to yeah reasons Precisely. political and all sorts. But um, soul have obviously had a, te a technological boom, and Centauri hasn't. But they've mm -hmm. still got weapons that could counteract uh, counteract soul. But the, some of the assets I actually seen um, kind of like because you had the envision of them being almost like. Raiderish, like their, their their tanks are going to be rusted and tracked. Ah, and... uh, no, no, no. Okay, that was a misconception. I don't know where that began. I didn't actually intend them to be raiderish. I would compare it more to, and I'm going to stereotype here, uh, like the Cold War, okay. where it was, you know, the US, which was going for like really advanced, like more of an advanced route, technically mm -hmm. advanced. And versus the Soviet Union, which had, you know, which is focused on increased firepower and, and thicker armor and this kind of stuff, right? Okay. So I'd compare it more to that. So, like, uh, Centauri shouldn't be raiders or anything like that. I mean, the the idea is, in fact, the Centauri, if you just look at the, like, the, the intro, they're not actually, like, uh, the bad guys. I mean, quite frankly, if you, if you think about it, literally the humans are the bad guys for coming to Volturus. But it's a bit more complex than that because they came to Volturus, you know, it was the only place they could actually explore. And then they were attacked. So, okay, you know. Okay. But nonetheless, it's it's a bit more complex. I don't want to get into too much details because I want to leave that for like the the, the, the campaign, which I do want to do. I really do want to do a campaign. If I don't get to do a okay. campaign, I'll just I'll just vomit the lore out in this big um, big post. But otherwise, if I but otherwise, I'd like to pre pre like present it in the campaign. But long story short, um, you know, the Centauri, uh, uh, like the political relations between the two two like factions broke down very logically because. You know, the uh, the Centauri, the, the Souls started being a bit greedy because they were the ones doing their own mining operation and they were providing the Centauri with the Volterium. You know, so it's like, you can understand both sides, right? Soul is like, you know, we're sending all this stuff to Centauri. Well, screw it, I'm going to send a bit less, you know? Um, they're not really helping all that much, so why should we come? I think they contact you, oh, you know, we, we're not getting enough, we need more. You're like, um, you know, bad luck, you know, ignore them. So, of course, they start their own mining operation and that logically leads to conflict. It's just how, you know, human beings work currently. Yeah, yeah. So, or pol yeah, well, politics, let's say. Where where there's, like, valued resources, there's going to be a fight for that resource, especially when they located it. Precisely, so, precisely. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, so that's the idea, like, behind the, the like, these factions, you know. The, mm -hmm. like, the aliens, are just, they're just defending their planet. They're at home. But it's more complex than that, of course. That, that comes to another question for me as well now, um, which I did see a few times in comments on my YouTube videos, was... Um, so we got the siege tank, which is going to be named plasma tank. Yeah, I'm probably going to rename it to like once the Centauri have their own units. Um, I'm going to rename the the current siege tank to plasma tank because the siege tank is actually meant to be on the Centauri side, and it's meant to be like this this double barrel, big mofo kind of thing, which is like bang bang, you know, very slow or, or about as slow as a siege tank, but heavy firepower, um, not hovering, of course, because that's that's advanced technology, uh, and so on. Okay. Yeah. 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 I was I was thinking maybe like mammoth tank, if if you're having like big tracked vehicle that can sit on the sand, it's got a big footprint, so it's not gonna like have Wait, any issues. Mammoth tank. How... Mammoth tank was in CNC, like Command and Conquer Tiberian Sun. Yeah, a big. In Tiberian a... Sun, it was a walker though. That uh, yes. So in Tiberian Sun, it was a giant walker. Um, the mammoth tank f was a. Um, 
four Wait. four tracked like separate track okay. vehicle with a massive middle and then had a twin barrel turret with rocket pods on top oh okay 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 fair enough okay so in tiberian dawn all right yeah yeah okay that makes sense that makes sense so it looks a bit like the halo tank actually um, yeah yeah uh, yeah similar to halo tank actually yeah mammoth tank uh, i'm not gonna look for the one that was in tiberian sun which i assume was the yeah, the mammoth was a walker, and then they had titans and wolverines, which were no, walker actually, no, tanks no, as well. No, actually, no, no, it wasn't. Mammoth tank in Tiberian Sun wasn't a walker. It was literally the same thing, just a track thing. I mean, I could I could send the link to you, but... I could probably bring it up, let's have a look. Uh, mammoth... Yeah, just, just search for mammoth tank Tiberian Sun. That's surprising. What was that walker? I, I swear it was called the mammoth. Yeah, I, I, I swear, I, I swear too. No, oh, Mammoth MK2. Mammoth Mark II, of course. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, got it. Nod for the win. <laughs> I mean, to, to be fair, like, in, in Tiberian Sun had fantastic political game as well. Like, we, we, like when you play the, the, the Nod campaign, you got the impression the GDI were really good, right? Yeah. But then when you play the GDI campaign, you know, they're, they're like telling you, like, if you don't do this, you're going to be like dumped and like essentially killed to a degree. You're like, OK, so these guys aren't exactly the kind ones either, you know, <laughs> and I really like that because it's it's a more realistic approach. I mean, no, you know, we're human beings. I mean, there is no no one is perfect, at least certainly not in the military, like the, the military forces. As soon as you got forces involved, uh, like politics get involved, you're going to have, you know, friction mm -hmm. is the way I would put it. And people capable of doing less than moral things. Yes, that's that's the mammoth, and then the mammoth tank, which is a bit of a pixel picture, but it's coming from an old an old RTS title. Yeah, yeah. But that's that's the uh, the mammoth tank with the twin barrel and four treads. And then you got the the mammoth Mark II, which was essentially it's 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 meant to be it's uh, evolved. Tiberium Sun, and then they kind of backpedaled on that and went back to the mammoth tank in Command and Conquer Three. Yeah, the, the walker was evidently very. Someone really wanted to do like the at at, you know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, the at at is from um, uh, Star Wars. The yeah. walker. Yeah, the at at the um and the ATST the like the smaller. Um, I just I just played um, Jedi walker. Survivor as well. Yeah, the chicken walker. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that was a uh, yeah. ATST is the proper name, but yeah. Mm. Right. Let's have a look. I bet there's loads. Oh. It's well, hold on, what's this? Uh, a mammoth tank from Halo confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> Scorpion tank, actually. Uh, Scorpion tank? Oh, in Halo, you mean, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And there's yeah, a Scorpion yeah. tank in Command and Conquer as well for Nod, the one that could deploy into a turret. Yeah, you're right. That one, that one was, that was pretty okay. I never was a fan of that unit. Right. Any other questions? I've noticed the game doesn't use more than 40% of G GPU and CPU. Are you aware it's something you'd look at from working from a performance point of view? Yeah, so if I bring up Okay, my... good point. So so it's the GPU that's just related to like it, it depends on, on your GPU, right? I mean the GPU being the thing which does not limit it to all that much, right? I mean, if you if you've got a modern graphics card like a thirty seventy or something like that, then yeah, it doesn't actually like eat the graphics card unless you go really up with a uh uh resolution. The CPU being utilized forty percent is uh I mentioned it in in an interview before yesterday, yesterday, I don't remember. I'm losing track. But um, uh, but basically, it's up to um, it does utilize one of the cores or two of the cores very heavily. Um, but it can't utilize everything, right? Because uh, of course, like doing multi-threaded physics is a big problem, um, and multi-threaded AI. Uh, I'm, st I'm still gonna have to get into that to be perfectly frank. So, yeah, like you know, optimization definitely will utilize more of the CPU in the future. Long story okay. short. Instead of harvesters getting destroyed, could we see them be disabled and players have to go and repair them? And it creates like a dynamic object? Um, harvesters getting destroyed and they can be repaired? <sighs> Good point. Um, I mean, my gut feeling is no. Like, uh, I do think it's better like where, where the vehicle gets destroyed because just from, a, from an alien perspective, I mean, if you look at it from a human perspective, yeah, okay, so you could maybe go and actually capture that capture that vehicle but what about the aliens like when do you destroy the vehicle you know and uh, mm. like if a goliath goes on it what can it only disable it i mean i can imagine those gigantic claws just shredding it you know like uh so i mean i'm more of a fan of destroying the vehicle and uh, uh 
if it's destroyed with not like you know for example light buggy right which gets hit by a rocket launch like a rocket uh, uh, rocket truck rocket then of course that one should be just eliminated you know it should be in pieces but um uh, if, if for example a harvester gets destroyed then i would imagine that it would leave a it's it's like the the, the the husk behind for some time which would take a very long time to kind of like erode away right so this is what i would probably go for right now they just like disappear after a few seconds and it looks, yeah. looks like crap so that shouldn't happen in the future of course okay yeah i uh... like the idea of like littering the battle battlefield Right, because it also gives more like uh, uh, that's actually you know what that is a very good point, right? So uh, 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 sorry, I'm just like going more into this point a little bit, but uh, infantry are going to be more useful if there's a lot of stuff to hide behind. And now, if you have a lot of tanks that get destroyed and create, in fact, cover for the infantry, then there you go, isn't it? You can hide a lot like in the battlefield, which is strewn with like destroyed husks of tanks. Then, um, uh, then of course, there's a lot of places you can like hide infantry in. Yeah, yeah, that that would be good actually. Yeah, it would definitely give him tree, um, especially when they like open ground three hundred meters to the next rock. There's like maybe a, a wreck of a of a, a railgun tank just sitting there, then followed by a, a few light like quads, and it just it just proves for a nice bit of cover as you're darting between and you're getting shot at by a bunker or something, you know? Yeah, precisely. It, yeah, definitely. Plus, it also adds sense. to like I think it also adds to the gameplay, like in the sense um, it. It will look much better as well, right? And it's it's interesting because if you destroyed, let's say, a harvester in, in a very thin and narrow drive drive through area, then suddenly that that place is blocked, mm -hmm. and um, it means that all the other vehicles will have to find another way around. You know, so that can be quite interesting as well. I I, I definitely want to do like vehicle husks. Ideally, they would last forever, but again, you know, as with unit cap. <laughs> that that leading me on something else actually with the harvesters. Um... Uh, just trying to trying to remember. What, oh yeah, building uh, the harvesters. Currently, they're locked to the ultra ultra heavy vehicle factory. And if you lose your harvester early on in game, you're pretty much at a standstill before you can get your ultra heavy yep. up. Um, is there a way of, for example, if you lose your harvester, that refinery then has the option to manufacture a new one, but it can't manufacture more than its one assigned harvester. Mm -hmm. So uh, those are, that's, that's actually a very good point. I was literally the the refinery in the data. It actually supports building a harvester. Okay. Uh, I switched it off because what the AI, like just for now because it was not properly tested and so on. But also the AI was literally just abusing it. It just built the like one refinery and then it just built a bunch of harvesters because you know, I, I need to improve that to a degree. But um, plus the harvesters would drive into the being constructed harvester and explode um that's a classical thing yeah. but uh, that was uh, that's why i just left it for later but the mm -hmm. idea is that the, the refinery should be able to build harvesters i mean oh. there's there's two approaches to this one is that if you destroy a harvester it automatically starts get uh, getting um rebuilt but the problem is that then it's like you can never really disable eco for the humans which is i think dodgy mm -hmm. um uh, you know because even for the aliens if you kill all of their shrimp and they don't have any resources that's it right they can't build anything so I think that should still be a thing. Um, another option is if you, your last harvester gets destroyed, then it automatically gets rebuilt in one of the refineries. Um, that is another option. But the easier thing to do is that you can just literally build a new harvester from the refinery. You know, um, that's the way I kind of like am leaning towards it right now. Yeah, so you would be able to like you'd be able, literally able to like on a on a refinery say, build me a harvester. Would that be limited to just one then? If that it would, you'd be able to build multiple harvesters from a single refinery? Uh, well, I, I, I see. This is where it gets a bit more complicated, right? I wanted to have it so you could just no limit. You know, you could just build any number of them. But the problem, of course, uh, what could happen is, you know, if it's if it, if the price is too high, then it's pointless, right? Because I mean, if you if your harvester gets destroyed, most likely your your like if all your harvesters get destroyed, most likely you don't have enough resources to actually build another thing right and it's like okay if it costs like more than a refinery what the hell's the point right and you just build a refinery right so uh and if it's if it's too cheap then you'll build a crap ton of harvesters so yeah I, I'm, I'm thinking aloud here but i think the best way to do it is that if your harvester is destroyed then you would be able to build from any of the refineries but you would be able to build a limit of harvesters 
or, or like the amount of harvesters you'd be able to build is limited to the amount of refineries you have. Okay. But I'm not. I'm still not sure about that. To be honest, this is something that'll have to be tried out. And another question as well is: um, I know the harvesters, they are assigned to their own refinery, and they'll only go back to that refinery. No, they don't. They'll, they they can don't. actually go to any refinery. Right. Okay. Um, but it's just usually it works out to be like the closest one. So. Yeah. The, 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 what I was thinking of is because, as we know, the if you're docked with a refinery, and then the AI decides to shove his big his big harvester right into your rear, teleports in, and then, boom. Both harvesters <laughs> yeah, yeah, are gone yeah. instantly. Um, That's awesome. In is, quotations. Is there... Could there possibly be a cheaper option to build a refinery but doesn't come with a harvester for expansion purposes by utilising a harvester you've already had on the field? Maybe That's like a point. smaller drop-off point with not... Uh, maybe have a limited storage capacity to it like you'd have silos it maybe have a silo storage capacity but has the ability to pick up some bolterium from that mm -hmm. harvester or anything around that point um that's a good point uh like i i, I probably wouldn't want to do like two versions of the refinery it's mm -hmm. just that it takes up some more like uh build options and and so on um, and I like the idea of having, you know, just a refinery it's, itself. Um, I did consider at one point that you literally would just build a refinery, it would not have a, a harvester, and you have to build the harvester separate, right? But the problem is, like, uh, just from a time perspective, you build a refinery, and that's what you have to first build, right? And then you suddenly have to build a, a harvester build, because obviously without that, what are you going to do, right? Yeah. Um, so that would mean that the humans would have to start, just like the aliens, with an existing harvester, which is a possibility, right? It is a possibility. Um, actually, that is a possibility. Hmm. But never, never, never mind. Uh, I'm just kind of like losing my train of thought here. But uh, uh, definitely, I'd prefer to keep it. So you build a refinery. It starts off with a harvester, and uh, uh, you know, building additional harvesters can be done through the refinery. But yeah, like it has to be some limitation for it. I yeah, mean, it makes sense. Yeah, and you you want to eliminate the the whole collision of harvesters. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That that thing is like um uh, that should be the thing that that like if it if there's if there's a unit which is taking up that area, it shouldn't be going into there. It shouldn't the, like, yeah. the teleportation is when it get detects it gets stuck. That's when it teleports. Yeah, in. That's, yeah. it's a kind of like a fail safe. Yeah. But um uh, obviously at that point it should not teleport in, and it should in fact say, oh, this thing's bloody taken. I'll abort the mission. Cool. Uh, implement the teleportation system for the aliens. <laughs> aliens can use teleports, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, 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 I heard that. That's hilarious. I mean, obviously they shouldn't be able to use it, so it's, it's a silly thing. But um, uh, but I mean, why not, right? I mean, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can only get there with a small crab anyway. But um, uh, maybe hunter. Hmm. But uh, anyway, like for for like with regards to teleportation, I did consider like changing it slightly like uh in in natural selection 2 you had phase gates i'd want to avoid doing it the same way um uh because it's very precise and it doesn't fit in with the law but like one thing which i did have and like think about is that you would have the teleport station and you wouldn't be able to choose anywhere on the map but you'd only be able to choose other teleport points where you could teleport to right so those would have to be built the problem with that is then that means that if you get killed and you go get back to base, it, you know, if, if there's no teleport point near the attack, it's going to take a really long time to get back into the action. So that was one thing which, which the teleports really work well with. Um, and because even even with like the heavy units, I mean, you don't you can't really make a massive difference late game versus, for example, siege tank. That's going to turn say good night and off you go. But um, uh, so what I was considering with the teleports for the humans, and I'll get to the aliens in a second, um, is that there would be that the commander would be able to build independent teleport points, but those would only be like a one-way thing. So right. you'd be able to like run up to them and use them to teleport anywhere in the map again, like with the with the the, the way it currently is. But it would just be another teleport point, you know. Um, and it would be a small structure which you can which you can kind of like be built somewhere else, you know. Um, so you'd be able to kind of like utilize it to kind of like obviously if you you can imagine that if you'd build multiple of these and you have kind of like teleport infrastructure across the map. Mm -hmm. um, and they could be relatively expensive to kind of like counter the fact because I mean it is a teleport station, right? So yeah, yeah. Uh, so that would be for the humans. 
for the aliens, now this is an important one. For the aliens, the way I want to do it is um, not like the gorge tunnels, like in Natural Selection 2, where it literally is a tunnel, it gets connected, and you know, off you go. But it would be... It fits into the lore, and I don't want to get too much into it because it would reveal a lot about the lore itself, like kind of like one of the driving factors of it. But long story short, it would be kind of like these nodules, which would be on the surface, which you which you would be able to build, of course. And it would be, in fact, you don't build them, but they emerge from the ground, so to speak. Goes into the lore. I can explain a bit bit later, a bit, or a bit more in detail. But nonetheless, there'd be these nodules which would like emerge. So you, I mean, you'd build it, right? From a practical standpoint, you would build it, so to speak. Um, it would just take a little time to emerge, and then it emerges, and off it is. There we go. That's, that's, it's up and ready to use. The aliens would walk into it, and then be able to kind of like teleport to any other uh, any other nodule in the area, okay. um, like in, in in the in the map. So these would be things which you could build anywhere for the aliens, um, uh, anywhere with limitations, of course. You know. I thought he was going to tell me it's an alien cannon. Then literally, it'll just shoot crabs across the battlefield. <laughs> that would be interesting. That would be interesting, but yeah, I mean, that would be horrifying. Imagine a Goliath gets launched in your direction. But that's the thing. It's like uh, the question is, should it be able to like, uh, uh, you know, um, transport Goliaths? And I think that thing is just a little bit insane, right? It'll be excessive. So, I mean, I think the nodules should be uh, utilized either. You know, I mean, one way to do it is that these nodules are a natural part of the of the uh, of the location. Right, so there would just be existing nodules that you could go and use, uh, and should a human beings be able to kill them? Maybe makes sense, you know. But these would be things with which the aliens could use. Anyway, I'm kind of like sidetracking in uh, to think, but these nodes are like an idea of how how to handle alien teleports. Yeah, like or alien fast travel. Okay. Um, last question before we get into some games, and we'll still be doing questions during during games anyway. We just won't be concentrating solely on questions. Um, uh, this was actually answered in the stream of Mike, but we'll just go, go over it again, is uh, veterancy and enhanced com uh, com compatibilities with like vehicles and infantry, depending on how well they've done in the battlefield. Like, are they going to be more powerful? Are they going to be have like increased health pull or take more damage? You know, that sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. Is that going to become a thing, having veteran units? Yes, definitely. I mean, uh, I just remember the psychological factor in, um, uh, in for example, Company of Heroes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when, when you when your units gained veterancy, it was like, oh, you know, I want to I want to protect these guys. I mean, they've gained like proper veterancy now; they're a bit better, right? But it was more about psychological things. You want to take care of the units which have survived. It's a kind of it's, it's, uh, the novelty of it, right, to a degree. And uh, uh, so, I would want to do veterancy. Um, like, will it mean that they have like? more armor or more health uh maybe a little bit more health that does make us like sense to a degree where they're kind of like able to kind of like better take damage to a degree but definitely not like stronger armor or something like that right especially for a tank that just doesn't make sense even a tank shouldn't gain health just because it's a veteran um uh, and in terms of should it do more damage no i don't want to do that but what i do want to do is that it should be more accurate right so the units do become a bit more accurate to within some reasonable range uh so they'll be able to kind of like right now if you spawn as one of the flying units and you just fly through the air a hover tank will almost reliably be able to take you down from half a kilometer no problem with the main cannon not with the machine gun with the main cannon right this is ridiculous of course <laughs> right uh, uh and the whole idea is that that what i'm going to be doing in for the ai is in fact right now the way the ai works it literally has it uses the same input that a player does. It literally, like, I calculate, you know, what the AI needs to compensate, and I give it input to the unit, literally as a player input would would, uh, would work. Yeah. So uh, what I would do here is uh, add an algorithm which kind of, like, has simulates what a player would do, which is, like, you know, overcompensate, undercompensate, and so on. And veteran units would be more accurate. You know, so this kind of a, a, a tank would be, let's say, the way that, that it can take you out in, when you're flying through the air is uh, would be, of course, a really high veteran tank, for example. You know, um, So that's what I would probably focus it more on. And maybe uh, that it would be better able to select um, uh, weak points. Because right now, the, all the AI units, probably no one's noticed it, but the AI units always aim for weak points. Um, uh, I've got like an algorithm for that. So they always like, for, for example, when they're shooting at the um, uh, the scorpion, they aim for the tail because yeah. that's where they can do proper damage. Uh, so 
you, you usually don't notice it, but when you get taken out by a railgun tank, it's usually when it hits your tail, you know, uh, as a scorpion. It, like, of course, it can hit your face, depending on the angle and whatnot, but, like, it aims for the tail. It tries to aim for the tail. If it can't, that is if the tail is exposed. If it's not exposed, it's going to aim for one of the other uh, other hit points it can see. Mm. Oh, Sea Boy, thank you for the five pounds and one pence. Such a great game. Love the hero's grand vision for it. Have a great day. Thank you, Sea Boy. Very much appreciated, mate. Thank you, Thanks, thank man. you, thank you. Um, I did see something here about... Oh, heavily armoured infantry units, almost immune to machine guns. So, I, th I think the question's about adding some sort of, like, riot. Like, almost like heavily armoured, like, almost almost like an exosuit, I, I suppose. Like an exosuit human that has the t immune to, like, most anti-infantry rounds. Maybe a bit more prone to anti-tank rounds, but... Well, I mean, uh, quite frankly, you've already got that with the heavy. If you if you like go to a heavy and you start shooting at him with the SMG, a lot of that just like ricochets. Yeah, and that I've is noticed. an exosuit. It literally is an exosuit, right? So, um, like, it depends what you mean exosuit. If we if we're talking about exos in the sense of like, uh, for example, NS2, natural soldier mm -hmm. two, then uh, you know they're they're larger than a human being, um, and mm -hmm. it's literally a mech warrior suit, you could say, right? To yeah. A degree. Yeah. Um, a small one, but nonetheless. That kind of thing is maybe, maybe, right? Maybe. Um, but uh, uh, I kind of like the industrial kind of uh, uh, feeling of the current units. You know, mm -hmm. the way they kind of feel familiar, yet slightly futuristic. But, you know, like, for example, a hover tank. It's a very mm -hmm. recognizable shape. It looks like a normal tank. You can Im instantly recognize it's a tank, but it's hovering on thrusters. You think, like, which engineer decided this, this was a good idea to, to like, levitate a tank? You know, um, and of course it is a good idea because it can jump and it can obviously move around and all that kind of stuff. But, but um, <clears throat> uh, of course, not talking about the fuel, uh, which is only possible with the Volterium, right? But, uh, uh, but nonetheless, so uh, I, I, w I want to avoid mech suits for this reason because I think it would kind of like, uh, you know, walkers, mech suits and all this kind of thing. I think it would start to go down. It would kind of like kill the industrial feel, if you get what I mean. Yeah, and you're also then encroaching on, uh, like, Tiberian Sun's vision of um, having yeah. that sort of, of a thing with the Titans and the Wolverines. And, and you got to think of as well, like, the sand, the, the sand dunes, they're not easy to traverse in. And having massive mechs with, you know, with, with essential giant heavy feet hitting sand dunes, they're, they're, it's going to... In, in theory, like, in, in, a, in a scenario, if you put a lot of pressure on sand, you, your foot gets stuck in. You know, yeah. So, um, I mean, <clears throat> that that is a very good point. I mean, of course, it depends on the shape of the foot, right? If you've got yeah. a really wide foot, it's just like gonna crush the sand underneath, mm -hmm. and it won't sink into it. But um, uh, but the thing is, it's like one thing is that's what we're talking about: large mechs. If I think about like mechs which are slightly larger than humans, um, I mean, a robot. You know, a robot. Why not? I mean, that's not mm -hmm. a bad idea, right? Yeah. Uh, a robot unit, in, like literally robot infantry, right? That's a good idea. Yeah. I think that that could be quite interesting. Um. And those could act in the way the current infantry do. So they're like, they don't give a shit about their own um, uh, survival. But, um, uh, you know, because right now infantry are really stupid, right? I mean, eventually they should, like, if they're under under fire, they should act like in uh, Company of Heroes. They should seek cover. They should, um, mm -hmm. uh, and so on, you know, they should try and, you know, no one wants to get shot, right? Um, but yeah, large mechs, exactly. It, it brings a a multitude of problems which I'm not sure I want to handle because like uh, especially all of the units are physics based so the, the the it is an expectation that this walker would be too what happens when you knock it over does it automatically go Ooh, just like the vehicles because with the vehicles <laughs> it doesn't look that strange right it, it it's does. like oh cool you know everyone all the reactions I've seen is like it's like oh no I flipped my vehicle what happens now and it's like it's like oh cool thank god no worries you know no one minds that but if if you had like this mech tipping over and it's like yeah no worries it's yeah. a bit weird, you know, and just like, it, it just it, levitates. <clears throat> yeah, precisely. I mean, yeah, sure, you could you could maybe put like some side thrusters, you know, which mm. which would utilize its thrusters to kind of like right itself, right? Yeah, sure, that's that's an yeah. idea. Um, but then if you had those kind of thrusters, you'd be like, why can't it fly? <laughs> it gets into a multitude of problems. I don't know. I just don't like the mechs, and it also complicates the the uh, the things of them. For example, be having to walk on train, you have to handle IK in a physics way. So it's a very different different beast to just uh, mm -hmm. uh, just handling. You'd actually have to handle balance, like yeah. it, being able to balance. Sure, you can put the the center of mass really low, but I don't know. I, I just I just don't like the idea. Um, I keep seeing people asking for the crab pole now. 
the, the, the crab cannon. <laughs> <laughs> crab cannon. Oh, I mean, yeah, it, it would be funny having like a hundred crabs thrown at something from well, across I mean, the map. Actually, like one of the things that was mentioned there was what it would be really cool to have, like you know, commander special abilities. One thing is, of course, super weapons, mm-hmm. but um, uh, uh, like special abilities where, for example, the aliens could spawn a blob, which would be a spawner, and it would spawn, let's say, some small aliens, but they would just keep spawning them. Hmm. You know, and these little things would, let's say, you know, or maybe to a limit, there has to be a limit. It always has to be a limit. But um, uh, you know, this would be something that you could build, for example, like near the enemy base, and it would like, you know, crabbochet. That's a good one, nice one, Padalan. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, it would be like these kind of special abilities would be quite interesting. Uh, and for the humans, of course, there'd be you know some some other special abilities like uh, to kind of like match that as well. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think that would be interesting. Like the crab cannon, I like it. Crabapult, crabuchet. <laughs> Even if it was just it's a, a, it's a, a nice, a, it's a, a nice idea. Thing. But obviously, you know, obviously, it's it's like the thing is like if if you literally had it as part of the game, it would be ridiculous, yeah. right? But even if it was just like a spawnable thing for private servers, where it'd just be funny just to launch crabs straight over to God knows where. And <laughs> well, I mean, you know, there could be in one of the maps. Uh, there could be like an old facility which had like, for example, not a particle accelerator, but like just an an accelerator of some sort. And anything that goes into the entry thing just goes, vroom, gets you know accelerated with a force field. <laughs> so you could go, for example, with a vehicle, and it would just like shoof, launch you across the map. Obviously, not, not shouldn't vault you across the map, but some reasonable distance. That would be quite funny. You know, a crab would jump in, and you'd be able to utilize it to like launch into one of the, it's a little bit further ahead. Um, I did see someone's. Uh quickly a a a, um a hive carrier so like a a carrier unit that would have you can have like crabs you can have like all the other aliens like mount on almost like ride it into battle and like Mm. have it as like a mobile carrier just so you can like mount ai onto it and you can mount you know you get your friends on the back of it or whatever then it, it, it could walk into battle or something something similar to that and another one was also a siege bug um to kind of rival the um the rocket truck Oh, 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 okay, okay, like an artillery bug. Mm. Good point. Um, so... A whale with squid legs. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, going back to the carrier, the, the problem is like, okay, what would be the point of the carrier? Because if it just carries crabs, the crabs are faster. What's the point? Right? Uh, uh, so it would have to carry some, like, heavy units. So, for example, goliaths. Mm-hmm. But then it has to be bigger than the goliaths to carry them. Which would logically make it slower, and you get the point, right? I mean, unless it was like a big centipede, which is like going across the across the land, and there's like a bunch of like glides on on its back. It would look ridiculous. I think a carrier bug sounds cool, but there's no actual practical purpose for it. That's my problem with it, mm. because the, I, the aliens just run faster than it. I just had envisions of like you'd have like thirty crabs all lined up, and the glyph just standing on the mass of crabs as it's going across the ground. <laughs> Just carrying a whole bunch of crabs, carrying a Goliath into battle. You know, it is possible, actually. Like, <laughs> if you literally spawn a... But, of course, the physics will push them aside, because there yeah. is, of course, mass supply and all this kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right, guys. I think it'll be a good time to start this game, um, and then we'll we'll try and grab some questions as we're playing. But uh, we, want, we want to get in some games with you guys as well, and then... Uh, Alrighty, I want to move that to the other screen. And then Alrighty, towards... I want to find your server. Right, we'll start up now, guys. By the way, it's QA, Dram, and Lycan. It is a 36-player server. It's on Badlands. Um, Are you sure 36 is a good idea? Yeah, can I can. connection handle it? Yeah, I can handle 36. All right, all right, all right. All right. Yes, I will believe you. <laughs> I, I reckon I can handle 36. I've been doing 36 for since you patched it, I think. <clears throat> yeah? Oh, it right, is... fair enough. Because, I, I mean, I literally put in 36 because I was like, all right, cool. I'll enable it so people don't have to hack it with 32. Um, uh, so it's you know natively supported. No, 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 no. It's <laughs> not, not your bad. I mean, it's all good. Um, but I thought you know it's it's better to like officially support it. And we'll see how it goes. It literally yeah. is the earliest of early access. So we're going to start with human v humans, and then we'll move to human v aliens, and then um, we'll go for a three way. Even though it will turn into 10 frames per second gameplay because the aliens alone because they're. If we get a competent alien commander and they start spamming everything known to man, then our, our frames will drop to, yeah. <laughs> Ping Galahad and... <laughs> <laughs> Galahad, get in here. So, um, we'll, we'll do oh, that. Got... Okay, so we're doing humans versus humans at the moment, yeah? Humans v. humans, yeah. 
All right. You, you, uh, so how are we going to play? Whatever you like. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Centauri because I am a, a Centauri boy, and I. You know, I'll, so am I. So I'm gonna go with you. I'm gonna be. Are you calm? I can go player if you want. I'll, I'll link no, 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 comp no, no. to you if you it's, like. It's, it's up to you. I mean, just, just you feel free to calm. I mean. I, I tell you mm, what, I'll go I'll player. I, I'll, I'll, I normally prefer to go player. I normally take com if no one else has com. Um, yeah, I'll, you can go com. I'll, I'll let you go com. I want to, I want to see what the dram man can do. Oh god! All right, well, expect <laughs> shit. But fair enough. I'll, I'll, I'll go com. I'll go com. I'll go com. All right. So you've already built. No, the AI has built a refinery. AI's already gone for the refinery. Yeah. So yeah, guys, if you want to get in, it's QA uh, dram and lichen. It is literally that. So it's on the beta branch as well, by the way. So make sure you've got your beta branch activated. You won't be able to see it in the uh, in the normal game. Um, the, we're, we're playing the beta branch mainly to help drown with finding potential bugs and also experiencing the nice and improved refinery and harvester and other changes like the in-game chat being colored as well to their specific factions. Like, for example, Soul is blue, red is Centauri, green will be alien. And italics for your own team, like your own team chat. You really like this map, don't you? Great on performance. <laughs> this is true. This is true. It is a very simple map. Rift Basin is still my favorite, though. Rift Basin is the most balanced. I mean, that one is definitely just a default play on. Yeah. Right, I, I, so there's a dude shooting. He's shooting our base. There's a dude? Shooting? Like, uh, uh, sorry, sorry. A friend, okay. a friendly. On, on, on a friendly, 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 friendly. Yeah, but he was just trying out. Uh, substantial. The fading. The the, the problem with the the chat. Uh, substantial. Just just to, to clarify, can you actually hear us? Like, are you watching the stream, or you just like uh, randomly hop in? Asking that. Anything, but anyway, he's in the stream. Yes. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, so that fading with the chat, how it was slowing down the game. It's actually not the fading of the chat. What happened was uh, uh, when the uh, there was like when there was a person with a name which had like some funky characters and it really like crapped on the system and that was what was happening alrighty so uh, would you consider getting on board a developer for free to get experience in game development so kind of like uh, an intern I gather right an intern Oh right, 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 right. Okay, uh, uh, so th that's 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 a good point. I actually did uh, like have interns in the past, not not in um silica, but in in uh, other projects. But the thing is that like for interns, uh, you need to have a larger team. I mean, quite frankly, there's a lot of work left to do on silica. And if I was like, if I took an intern, then you can't just like oh. I would never want to take an intern where it's like, oh, just do this and, and screw it, right? And I don't take care of that person. I would want to take care of that person, which makes it impossible to do at the moment. Um, because it's it's not realistic to have an intern at the moment in the project. It just isn't. And uh, if, you, if you want to like hop into one of the houses, by the way. Yeah, yeah, actually, I can do that, yeah. I, I can do that if no one else wants to. But um, uh, Centauri, they're likely to have tracked vehicles. Um, I think that's what you said last last time. They're not they're not meant to have hover. I think that's left the soul because they're. Oh yeah, they're... yeah. Hover is only soul. Uh, uh, yeah. The Centauri should have like. Um, right now, I'm more leaning towards enemy buggy spotted. Uh, uh, I'm more leaning towards um, not literally tracked, but uh, it would be like wheels made of tracks. I do want to. I would prefer tracked to be perfectly honest. Tracked vehicles have like. Oh god, come on, you stupid harvester. Who wrote the Pathfinder? <laughs> oh, great old harvesters. <laughs> right. T1000, where are you? Okay, we've got to find you. Oh, yep, here you are, guys. Alright, just head off in that direction for now. I am building you a... Uh, uh, just the barracks are almost done. So you might want to head into the barracks, guys, um, to get a better um, loadout. I've got you a, um, a bunker right next to a Boltirium patch, by the way. Roger that. I would definitely use um, uh, someone in the harvesters. I'm just going to stop that harvester. But please take that harvester. Uh, anyone else in the other harvester? No. All right. Uh, maybe T1000 if you want. Actually, I want to type into the chat. Uh, will bullet whizzing 
S effect be added? Oh, so like um, if you had incoming fire, then you'd hear like oh, either uh, cracking dude, or whizzing dude, past we your head. To, we might have to please kick Demente. I'm just gonna tell him. We just like shooting at a friend, so. Okay. People always do that. Alrighty, so Litecord, we really need resources. So, at the moment. Got another bunker I'm heading to now. Uh, yeah, so you got the bunker to the north, which is sat straight on a Baltirium deposit. You know what? Uh, guys, I'm going to actually tell you to, uh, like, head to the, uh, the barracks to teleport to somewhere. Oh, I love flipping my buggy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so we have we have Highlander on the harvester. What a legend! And we have we have the other harvester. Okay, so substantial is getting the other harvester. Fantastic. Cheers, guys. All right. Uh, oh, see, there you go. In chat, it should also indicate that you're a com. I think that would be quite useful as well. Mm. To yeah, that'd be good. There. Right, so still need the res. Um, how are we doing with that one? Alright, we have one harvester heading back. So ETA about one minute for resources. And Okay, guys, we have a uh, buggy approaching our base. They've most likely discovered it. Yeah, they would have seen it. Uh, they've also got an expansion point with the barracks uh, right dead center of the map. That we've spotted along with a uh, refinery. Oh, time for the Shit. All right. Never mind. No, no, no. Why are you shooting? Good. <laughs> Shoot me. <laughs> Sometimes I'm not sure if they're doing it on purpose or not, but there is a, there is an enemy. Yeah, they thought, they thought it was an enemy. Is this, is this one here that I'm coming up on now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Alright, you got that one. Roger that. Oh, what else we got? Alright, we need those resources. So, Highlander is just approaching with the harvester. And then we'll Whoa! To start oh, this map boundary. Shit. I just got thrown back thinking, what? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's the map, <laughs> map boundary. Yeah, just, just careful about that one. Uh, keep pushing him towards the HQ. That would, like, if, you, if you can push him towards the HQ, then the HQ will engage him and it should be a lovely time for him. Yeah, he's almost dead right. anyway. Alright, we've got the first harvester coming in. Anchel is just eliminated the other. Oh, enemies died there. Cool. Good to know. Alright, we have one of the players here. Might want to actually pull them in towards that direction. I'm going to start building light quads. Players. We like called on the way. Any play west? Right, that's that buggy gone. <clears throat> uh, all right, so now we can continue building. All right, I'm going to start actually going to build a research facility, probably like near mm -hmm. that boundary to keep it in the uh, in the back, keep it safe. And what else are we going to build? We should probably. All right, I'm actually going to probably start building. A few riflemen, but only a couple. Uh, Alrighty, have a look. light quad on the way. All right, so one light quad has been built. For anyone who wants to uh, go get up, grab a light quad. I want to build another one because there's there's plenty of players. Hotkeys for RTS mode. That's that's going to be a thing eventually, isn't it? Yes, definitely, yeah. definitely. Uh, uh, hotkeys, most certainly. Like, I, I want to do it within like like next week or so. Or so. All right, I, no I noticed the players are actually teleporting and harassing the enemy base, which is great. So thanks for that, guys. 
We have to intercept a uh, a player. Right. There goes that. So while we're building that, I'm actually going to build another refinery, two refineries. We'll go overboard with them. Uh, friendly fire should be reduced to twenty. Uh, sorry, fifty percent, or have an option off switch. Uh, I think we spoke. I uh, spoke about yeah, fire will be toggleable afterwards. Toggleable, yeah. Right, that's that remote thing. All right, upgrading to Mark One. Um, how do you feel about vehicle balance being able to kite uh, alien forces? Um, being able to like outpace them, um, well, most of them anyway. I think the hunter can catch a buggy. I think in gen general aspects. Yes, it can normally. It, or no oh, okay. So they're really expanding towards us. Um, Lycan, if you can just please check that area over there afterwards. Oh god. Yeah, well, got two yeah. guys here Pro fighting. Yeah, go ahead and kill them first, and then then just please head in that direction. Uh, Alright, really need to push this. Alright guys, so we got Mark 1 on the way. Right, I've dealt with those. Uh, where are you sending me off to? To that silo? Uh, yeah, uh, just just if you can have a look, at, look, look around the area, because I suspect they're going to have more buildings there. It looks like they're trying to build towards us. Yeah, they're expanding silos straight towards us. Yeah, that makes sense. So I'm going to have to start responding. But I need more res. Alright, we got another full harvester load coming. Another two full harvester loads coming. And they're teleporting in. Yeah, I'm going to give more support in that battlefield, pushing up some units in that direction. Uh, alrighty, how are we doing with thing? Alright, so so we're on Mark 1, so I should be able to build a heavy quad, but... Ah, uh, you know what, I will. I'll build two heavy quads. Uh, also, refinery coming up as well on, uh... On me? Roger that, yeah, he's really pushing for res. That I'm going to probably have to respond in kind because otherwise we're going to very quickly lose this. Alrighty. I'm going to actually improve vision. So it's mainly optimization and bug fixes at the moment, Glenn. Um and then yeah, content, content will come afterwards. Thinking about what your ideal was two to three months for aircraft, wasn't it? If I remember correctly. Yes, precisely. Which, if you think about it, is not actually a a, a long time at all when it when it comes to um, implementing something like that after getting the game fully optimized and into oh, a state yeah, where yes. it's it's a. Uh, it's at its best, and then, and then when you add aircraft in, then there's a whole rethink in the game with balance, again with more optimizations and all sorts of things as well. So it does increase the workload like um, tremendously. Yeah, precisely. But that's what this branch is for as well. So this branch is used mainly for that testing. Yeah, exactly. Like I mean, it, it allows allows people to kind of like see uh, see what's being worked on before it's like before it's available, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, sorry, it's concentrating on the battlefield at the moment. So there's two buggies inbound to the two bugs that are currently attacking that, uh, that, that outpost. I am upgrading, uh, and I'm going to build. And as soon as I said that, they turned away. <laughs> oh, you guys are taking some of the bunkers. Oh, you fucking legends. All right. Um, what do that? What we're going to do, right? Pushing out in that direction too. All right, so really, really need uh, heavy vehicle factories. My last waypoint. 
All right, so we've got a lot of action happening near the enemy base. They're quite well off. Uh, all right, yeah, that, that, that's doable. That's doable. It's doable. I'm actually going to head back because my buggy is pretty messed up, so I'm going to try and swap yeah. it out and let the AI take the, the remainder of it. Yeah, no worries. Hello, Jamie, mate. How are you doing? All right, I've got, we, we've got some harassers in the north. Uh, if someone could like have a look at that, we've got some uh, heavy infantry. In the north. Oh yeah, I see him. Uh, there's infantry, there's heavy infantry spawning on that outpost as well, going after the buggies at the moment. I assume that player is just um, teleporting in. How you doing, Dustin? You come from Planet Side? Oh, Planet Side, yeah, bloody hell. It's a game I haven't played in so long. I'm gonna give this dude a um, a heavy heavy quad. Yeah, I'll probably end up. Um, I might go for a light quad if you've got another one spare somewhere. Might not. All right. So uh, putting up a heavy vehicle factory. In fact, I might go straight for two. I'm gonna take a risk with the second one. A little more to than no. Nah, actually, no. No, nah, that's just an idea. Right. Well, I'm stood still. Let me have a look and chat again. Uh, All right. So I am going to. Oh, okay. Lycan, if you want, if you wait 95 yep. seconds, you'll have a light armored car. Cool. Awesome. New baby. I'm actually new baby life keep... again. Cries like a velociraptor. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. Congratulations, Jay. By the way, mate. Um. Yeah, it's one of my uh, real life yeah. friends. He's just he's just oh, had nice, his, he's just had his third. Had his third. I just, I just a third. Jesus Christ! Wow, a lot. I got I got two, and I'm. <laughs> That's all we had to say. My God, I'm done. <laughs> Where are these harvesters going? Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. All right. I got you. It would be really nice to have an attack move. Attack move, yeah. So, attack move. Um, you'd, you'd, you'd send a, um, a command to the units, and they would hit everything on the way to their target. Oh, okay. So, they'd stop and engage any targets on the way to, to moving yeah, into yeah, that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I mean, I mean to, to be honest, with, with, with this, I'll happily, like, add these things which make sense for people, so... Mm hmm Refineries further north, yep. Roger. All right. I'm gonna try and push that refinery as far north as I can. Uh, right, there's a commando coming to the north, um, our bunker slash refinery area. Oh, oh no, someone, poor guy teleported directly into a construction site. <laughs> he did not live. Um, Austin, thank you for the $5, mate. Uh, how about a flying beetle-like unit that could land and enter siege mode and fire similar to a rocket truck? Uh, sorry, you can say I'm just concentrating on the attack right now. Just give me two seconds and I'll answer. Yeah, no worries. So that's very, uh, that's very, um... I swear there was a flying siege unit, well, a siege bug in Starship Troopers. Don't know which oh, yeah, one. Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, something like that. Something that would deploy into a siege unit. But it would fly, I'd, I'd assume quite low to the ground, but because it will be a big heavy boy. But it would it'd fly and like land and then turn into a siege unit and maybe take off again. And move elsewhere. 
Right, I'm going to go intercept this commando that's harassing a harvester. And apparently there's a rocket launcher and hover tank on the way. That is right. Uh, oh, we lost a harvester to a commando. To the north, yeah? Yeah, to the north, next to the bunker. Yeah, GW author, it's a player. I like how it's still reversing into the refinery when it's dead to stop now. Right, oh, all right. So we've got those going up. I will utilize this. I might actually build two of them. Harvester, yes, it's on its way to the field, which is being harvested. I've got heavy as well. I mean, currently, I don't see any stuck harvesters, which is good. Yeah, I think harvesters mainly and now that they the only re the only real reason they have to get stuck is when they're in the Bolterium field or they're fighting each other over the same patch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like right now, they're running into each other. That's that's the biggest issue. Um, My exact words: dung beetles fighting over a patch of Bolterium. <laughs> uh, yeah, like and watch out for that guy. He's, he's, oh, you, you hit him. He flew back, but he's still alive for some reason. Yeah. He's got full he, health. He, he will annihilate me. I gotta be real careful. Okay. Right. Oh, so um, I am going to continue pushing up north a little bit. Respond in kind. All right. So we should have all right. Rocket launcher built. So uh, maybe if. Alrighty, I am going to build some more support units for that. And as commander. There should be a hover tank supporting it. <laughs> Jumped on his head. <laughs> I was riding an enemy commando's head for like two seconds. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we've got um, a commando and a rocket trooper to the north at the moment. Uh, where am I? Headquarters, and get to the barracks. Or factory. Ooh. Alrighty. Alright, now we've gotten into the, the heavy, heavy units. So I'm actually going to... Oh, crap. Cancelling units doesn't work. Alright, good to know. On the client, it seems. Alright, so we've got another hover tank coming out of the heavy vehicle factory. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, uh, Blue, so they do, um, is known at the minute about the harvesters having that collision when they teleport in and blow each other up and that sort of thing. Um... Yeah, that's that's a that's a known that's a known thing. I think it's mainly when it's a player harvester versus an AI harvester. I think that's that's the main issue, because then, yeah, because it tells you which refinery to go back to because the other one's populated. Uh, so, sorry, say again. I was really so uh, the. the 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 harvester collision, um, like the harvester v harvester, uh, when, when it explodes, basically, uh, when it teleports back into a refinery and it's already populated by another harvester. Normally, that's due to the case of a player um, in a in a in an already populated um, yeah, AI, precisely. yeah, AI uh, controlled refinery. But uh, Martin Drams already said about um, telling the AI that. When it, when it wants to enter a refinery, if it's populated, then it will automatically stop and wait, and then and then after that, like try again, basically. Ooh, this will be a risk, but I'm going to do it. Anyone up for a siege tank? <laughs> it won't take too long to build. No, never mind. What I will build though, to kind of like sure. We don't get completely destroyed. Can you land a tank on a harvester pad and then hunker it down into a siege mode? Uh, don't yeah, think. Yeah, you can. You can. Would the would the balance of the harvester be thrown off a bit? 
it wouldn't have mattered. Like, it, 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 would it, would it would still affect it, but yeah. the thing is, it's heavy. I mean, it's. I mean, the harvester is significantly heavier than the tank. So, so technically, you it, could, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But then, is getting it on the harvester is another question, because they don't exactly fly. But you could probably f fly off a cliff, I suppose. Yeah, you can like if you found a place. I know someone's done it before, like legit done it, not dodgy done it, right? But. Yeah, not spawned it and then jumped in and then hung, like yeah, precisely. anchored it into the into the harvester. But no, yeah, you could. Imagine that. Oh my god. Having a having a railgun tank sat on the back of a harvester in siege mode. That would be legit. Alright, we'd really need to uh push for the north sector. I'm going to build more units to I mean, quite uh, frankly, I know exactly what I want to build. Need anti-infantry for those commandos. They're going to annihilate that whole northern sector. There's three of them and a rocket trooper as well, or a heavy unit. All right. Uh, Roger that. They've taken oh, the bunker, actually, I think, as well. Are you serious? Yeah, they've taken the bunker. Oh, God. All right, we need, we need to deal with that. Uh, there is a marksman that just teleported in, so you might be able to deal with them, maybe. Yeah, I'm sending the sending the units to, to take that out. Alright, Harvest is doing some fucking stupid things, so I'm gonna send them over there. Uh, alrighty. Oh god, they're really fucking a harvester up. A full siege tank on the back of a harvester. Would even that fit? Okay, we look we lost the harvester. Another one. Mm. Right, we're gonna have to really start pushing that northern flank. It is really I'm in the railgun tank at the minute, <clears throat> making my way. I'm able to pick one off, like from range. Alright, how's these vehicles doing? They're fucking ages away, aren't they? Uh there's a hover tank not too far away. Alright, oh, Mr. Lycan, you you got a good vehicle. Please go and help him. Yeah, I'm going with the rail. With the old Rayleigh boy. What's the server called? So you need to have the beta branch. So you go into properties on Silicon Steam. And then you go to betas. Turn the beta branch on. And then, I think it might be the only server there. But it is um, Q&A, uh, Lycan and Dram. Oh, there's actually, there's actually a, a couple of them. Was there? Yeah. So when I first fired up the beta branch and then made a video about it, there was only one server at the time, and it was just one person. So I'm, I'm glad more people are jumping in because it's, yeah, it's nice to see the improvements. It is indeed. Oh, is that a harvest getting pounded? Oh no, it's just combat in the distance. <laughs> Our harvester is getting hit by something though. Might be a marksman. That's why I can't see him on the map. Um, harvested dead center. One's at a Baltirian patch. The other one, I think, is human it, controlled. Yeah, guys, just destroy that bunker. Honestly, just destroy the bunker. Yeah, it's gone. It's already gone. Yeah, plus the harvester um, is much better off actually harvesting rather than just res. Alrighty. Will both uh, human races have different harvesters? Uh, uh. I mean, maybe in future, but definitely not now. I mean, because it's it's just way too much work to, to mm -hmm. uh, like do a single harvester, and it's it's like it doesn't bring all that much of an advantage. It would it would make sense they would share the same harvester. I didn't see that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's like they would have probably arrived at the planet and started... I suppose Baltarus would have been discovered whilst they were both relatively friendly to each other, or they both were still part of the same faction. Maybe. Yeah, precisely. I mean, that's the kind of idea of it. Alright, so I think we should probably start pushing their base, because at this point, I think that's the most reasonable thing to do.
jump on candy if that is you, mate. Um, I mean, you might even run faster than I do. I'm in a I'm in a railgun tank, so um, I'll land a minute. Let me know you're ready. Is that it? Yeah. I sent sent the the uh, the attack order. Oh no! Oh, it was a rocket launcher by itself. It's unsupported. It's gonna get shot. Is destroyed. he jumping on? Not jumping on? No. Oh, what these? Gonna, we're gonna lose that rocket launcher because it's it's unsupported. Who's, who's shooting our own silo? Where? 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 Uh, next to my railgun tank. There's one riding on me. He's he's he, he requested brothers a friendly shooting our own silo. I will uh, remove him. Right, I've got. Uh, yeah, I've got a rocket trooper and a commando running next to me, and a sniper is trying to shoot Candyman off my tank. Oh, uh, man, I need, I need res. No. So it's points, more specifically. Alright. Let's send it harvest back. I'm going to harvest whatever it needs to. And in the meantime, I am going to go and start building an ultra heavy. Indeed, we don't, so I'm gonna get more of those. Yeah, this ain't good. I got a commando sitting on a crevice and a and a, a, a trooper next to me as well. Whether I kill him though is a question with these rocket pods. I don't think I will. Yeah. Alright, so we've we've lost a lot of units because of people just Distributing themselves amongst the. Uh... Alright, we actually have an enemy in our base, Sly Unit. We have to. We have, definitely have to deal with him. I'm pretty dead here. I'm getting hit by a marksman in the. Uh, in the what's it called? The optical. The little dome on top that spins around. Dram has such an intense look to his his, his focus look. <laughs> <laughs> it's bloody hell! I mean, we, we're getting really like shat on. There's a, there's a lot of um. All right, guys, pull back. We really need to. Uh... Oh yes, I've, I've seen exactly a lot of teleporters. Is. A lot of teleporters. I'm gonna send that to deal with them. That should help. Flashbang. <laughs> hmm. All right. Actually, I might build two of them. I like how we're all queued up for the teleport here. <laughs> uh. Yeah, there's there's a, there's a heavy attack going on in the in the east. East, yeah, that's well, what I'm I mean, heavy being relative because I mean they just keep teleporting in the motherfuckers. Hey guys, come on, come on, push, push, push. All right, he's dead. Let's get those. Just one more Andres check. We need to get him, and he's almost dead. Yes. Well done. Hopefully, they didn't get to teleport in anymore. I wonder if there's a bunker in there. It couldn't be. The HQ would have seen it. All right, definitely needs like some, some things. I'm noticing it definitely needs. All right, so we lost all of our units. Okay. Uh, there is a railgun tank in the north shooting at us. You deal with him. 
There's heavy on him, and there's also our railgun tank getting pushed by a, a load of what seems to be buggies and light armored cars. Yeah. And a marksman trying to shoot it in his weak spot. At <laughs> night time on the stream. <laughs> yeah, it does look. Uh, there you go. That might that might be better for you guys to see on the night time on stream. Me activating the. Uh... I mean, it looks pretty. You got all the all the thunder going out and stuff like that. Substantial is in the harvester and he's not returning to base at the moment. Um, yeah, there's there's a, some sort of building or something to the east because the rocket trooper just appeared next to that bunker, which is actually neutral at the moment. And I'm too far away to get there in time. Uh, shit. It's now it's now no, gone red no. as well. Yeah, so they've taken it over. They've snuck in and taken it over. This this is yeah definitely I'm gonna have to limit how this stuff works because this is just frustrating. The, the teleporting to bunkers, I think, is okay, but definitely not being able to build around them, because I assume that's what they're going to do. That's what I do. Yeah, I take bunkers, then use them for refinery spots and expansion. Yeah, yeah, and then that's, of course, that shouldn't happen. I mean, it's, it's very dodgy. Any plans for a gunship-type air unit? Uh, like a C-130? Um, yeah, there's, like, okay, not like that, literally. Um... Not like a, not, not like a gunship, uh, uh, exactly like a C-130, but definitely something which can uh, like defend properly from the sky. Mm. All right, let's so send a rocket launcher to deal with that. The Ooh, issue we, we, with we friendly fire is there uh, like visual elements you're going to add to identify friendly units from foe a bit later down the line. Uh, well, I mean, that was the thing. It's like, okay, think about the situation we're in. You would not be able to tell if an enemy is friend or foe because of distance. It's like, um, that's one of the biggest issues with this. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, oh, I mean, there's a lot coming. Like, especially with, with like, colors. I mean, they're, they're definitely on the HUD. There has to be more information to uh, help with that. Um, but. All right, they have a siege tank. That's great. There's a load of hovers coming and a rail tank as well. I've just spotted it. It's where we lost our like forward left base to the west. It's 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 full. Like six hovers and a, and a, and two rails, I think, on on their way here. Yeah. 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 I'm I'm kind of starved for resources to a degree. I'm a oh. commando, but I'm not really suited to kill a a vehicle really at that range. I'm trying right, to get there... attention because there is a rail coming on our side to try and intercept this. Whoa! What the hell happened to the FPS? Um, <laughs> uh, flags okay, I was, I was... or building insignias of units on units, sorry, insignias on units, so I assume like Centauri insignia for Centauri units, flags on the buildings that would tell you who they're part of. Oh, uh, I mean, it can help, but I mean, that's the thing, it's like, uh, I think it would be nice there for like a visual element, but the fact is, it wouldn't really help, because like I said, I mean, at a distance, what it, you're not going to be able to see much on the flag, like during the day, it might help a little bit because of the colour, but, uh, but in the night, it won't help at all, not even a little bit, because mm. you're not going to be able to see it, you know. Oh, buggy spam incoming. Great. Yeah, I'm in the middle of this. I opened fire on one and then I thought, wait, hold on, I can hear more behind me. <laughs> and it's about four or five that just passed straight behind me, so... Um, so we've we got a couple of players which, which have been, I think, AFK for a little bit, which is, well, I mean, it's, it's fine, but... Uh, Alright. Oh my god, that tank just opened fire on me as well. He's gone. He's gone in, incognito as well, so I can't actually see him. Uh, make all the lighting match the um, the chosen faction. So, are you, are you saying about 
uh, that kind of goes back to Command and Conquer Renegade because every time you'd enter a Nod building, it would be a red hue, and then you'd enter GDI, and it would be like almost like normal lights, like quite bright. Um. All right, I'm just trying to trying to uh, understand what you, what would work. So, like, if you enter into the HQ for the Centauri, they've got like a red hue in the building. Like the lights in there are going to be like red, and then if you go into a soul building, then it's going to be like quite bright and and blue. Ah, oh, right, I see. Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, that's that's possible. But again, it's just it's just like flavor. Hello, rocket truck. Yeah, we're, we're gonna lose this. Oh, no. We only have one harvester. Yeah, that's that's a done deal. If we've lost eco. Yeah, they've they've killed our eco. <sighs> Oh my god, I'm in the middle of this whole thing and I've got big, I've got tanks, I've got rocket trucks, I've got, um, oh, yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> There's no chance. Buggies, it's absolutely nuts. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I'm probably just going to switch into FPS at this point because there is literally no point in me being commander right now because it's, it's just, it's a lost player, basically. I'm hopping into the thing. Oh, the AI is moving out a load of heavies now. I'm actually going to go uh, heavy, probably. Ten frames per second. Yeah, let's go. Oh yeah, by the way. Oh yeah. So because I'm hosting this server. Yeah. Am I computing more because I'm the host as well? So that is that why I've got lower frames, or is this the same across the board for everybody? Uh no, I've got pretty bad frames. I've got twenty-two. I mean, uh, it's it's like yes and no, right? So so you calculate the AI, which no one else does, right? Yeah. But at the same time, you also have to like calculate sending all the like values and this kind of shit. Um. Uh, at the same time, you like the clients when they get the uh, the packets, they have to like uh. uh What's sniped? Lerp into um. Sorry, I was just like thinking about the the, 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 the battle. Alright, I'm gonna stop playing that for a second because I'm I'm just a useless character now anyway. So So basically, um I completely forgot the question, man. Uh, oh yes, I know, host. I know, I know, and a performance, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the host has to do a little bit more of course than the than the clients. But uh, uh but right now what happens is when, when it synchronizes the physics, uh the the, the objects are nudged. I mentioned like it, so, so at some point that the objects are like nudged into uh, the correct position with physics but at the same time they're slightly moved as well right okay um and when they are moved they are moved uh into the right position uh that actually that actually like has to update the physics scene so when there's a lot of units around in the same place uh it can actually really lower fps so i mean this will help somewhat with this as well. Yes, yeah, so my frame's now going up, and I assume that's the loss of probably buildings and certain units that is starting to increase that for me. Yeah, seems so. But the, when it yeah, when this, it this lost, we've lost. I mean, <laughs> we got the last harvester. It was already half health when you know I was um, when I was commander. You know, I'm gonna go back into command because there's nothing I can actually do as a, as a light soldier anyway. We've got a dude in. We've got Hoovy Luca in um, rocket launcher. He's just moving around at the moment. He's not actually shooting. It's a bit of a waste because it's, it's it is a rocket truck which can be used. Oh, I see. Very clever. All right, he's trying to get an angle on those on those buggies. Well done. Um, yeah, the other headquarters is half dead. Our harvester is destroyed. We're done. GG. I mean, we might as well call it because we're just waiting for death now. I 
will kill this buggy. <laughs> I will do it. I actually won't. It's, it's in a nice bit of cover. And I'm trying to like jump and get arc a rocket over the top of this rock. Yeah, I'm dead. And it's probably that some of our refineries, which had a lot of res in them. Like, oh, they didn't have actually that much res because I was building the units, but because the units were taking a while to build. Yeah. Uh, oh, well. Well, I at least have... I could build a siege tank if I had enough res. Not that it would actually help all that much. Probably that was... Probably a waste of time. Uh, if you want to make sure that you're looking at the, as the enemy, the only thing you could do right now is look directly at them and see the target you are in the bottom right-hand corner is red. Uh, yeah, that, that goes down to um, identifying like friendly versus um, enemy targets when you're looking at them. If, if it's not like a command to attack that that unit, you kind of got like double check, especially when you're the human. But that that goes down to like the the the, the factions are, the, are identical at the moment as well. So it kind of gets eliminated when Centauri becomes their own thing, because then oh, yeah. they'd they'd look different in in general to Soul. So. Um, But then I, I know what they mean as well. Like <clears throat> when you're looking at a friendly, you, you gotta like make sure he's not uh, not a red target. He's a blue target. And then you look at an enemy that could be in fight with one of your friendlies, and you gotta look at them both, seeing which one's the enemy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, these are they can do. Like right now, when you aim at an enemy, like you, you know, it's around the crosshair. You get the um, the four arrows, like coloured red, indicating it's an enemy. Hmm. Oh well, it was a good match. Very well played by the enemy. Yeah, he did very well. They had a very, very quick early expansion. Um, literally within they the did. first five minutes, they they, they had the three base refineries. They've already had the bunker and a, and a fourth refinery out there. So they had some human harvesting. A hundred percent. I mean, we, <clears throat> we advanced faster in tech. But mm. Yeah, the tech is useless if you're, you know. Oh well, I'm not the best commander to be frank, but yeah. So the factions will change because they're identical at the moment. Um, but they will, Centauri will be made to look different than Sol. Yeah, uh, there's a plan for Centauri <clears throat> in place. Oh, no worries, man. <clears throat> like, thanks, Candyman. It's very nice of you. Um, but yeah, I mean, to, to be fair, I don't, I don't. Um, like I haven't played all that many matches online as a uh, as a commander, so and there's also this kind of still there's this this thing when you're when you're a developer, right? Because you, you kind of don't want to build too much, so you don't put too much to like kill the performance. It's this kind of thing which I have to get rid of. You know, I mean, to be fair, they played really well. Bunker issue, that one's annoying. Really annoying. Like, you shouldn't be able to build round, round bunkers. Right, what are we down to? We're down to tech, radar, and three factories. Minus the... One of the refineries now that just died off. Yeah. No, we, we literally have... Like, I mean, literally it's just going to be... Um, about them destroying the, the heavy vehicle factory. And the ultra heavy vehicle factory. We're looking at about five more minutes before they completely eliminate us. Because it takes so long to destroy those. Where are the rocket trucks to? Only thing is, it's, it's it's almost the next day. Yeah, yeah. So it's about to become day. I'm just running around. I'm not even attacking people. I'm just running around at this stage. I'm like, I'll have, I'll have some fun with this commando. I suppose I'll die instantly to him. But, um, you know. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Oh, oh, right, let's... What are these guys, right? Uh, uh, friendly fire is a thing that is by default. Reducing or turning it off is a thing that requires implementing some sort of system for it. Hmm. Yeah, guys, regarding the, the score and, like, uh, that you have, it's, it's, it's really glitched out right now. I've, I've got to, like, go through and fix it up it's just messes up for some reason so 
what was that about friendly fire i think it's, it's going to be toggle toggle oh my God, i can't say the word for it <laughs> you're gonna be able to toggle it on and off um in, in public servers that's for sure um reducing or uh, reducing the thing um uh yeah the idea is that you'd be able to set how much damage it does not like um uh like n no need to do it directly like in percentage right but uh like per one percent that's, that's nonsense but like let's say 25 uh, 0%, 25%, 50%, 75%, 100%, or something like that you know or by 50 percent crabs crabs yeah we're gonna do um human versus alien next uh i love i love the hunter he's, he's, he's my boy take him out for an early spin start harassing you know the, the humies <laughs> well done gentlemen and ladies and gentlemen yeah ggs i haven't typed in chat yet oh, i can't now anyway. uh no i can ggs there we go oh yeah by the way this this i, I have that error where i have to reconnect but um uh, this is actually fixed it's i have to do a build with it it was literally a one line fix very frustrating that it's been there for so long yeah, that's going to help with um, persistent uh, server population. Yeah, precisely. Plus, there needs to be um, changing of maps. That needs to be added. You know, once once the game is done, I mean, I'm going to do it so like when, when the game gets finished, you have the scoreboard and then you have voting for next map. And it can be the same map, of course. Mm. Yeah, but it's the best way to do it. Roly poly beats all. Yeah, it does. Actually, uh, one of my previous streams, I was I was in siege mode with the rail tanks. I was I was sitting on the ground, and I had someone behind me, like kind of like defending me with a with a with a I can't remember. I think it was in a hover tank or in a in a in a light um, armored car or something. And all I could hear for a split second was a roll, just a little roly poly, and I span around. Obviously, I couldn't move because I didn't. I actually forgot I was on the ground, and yeah, just just got flattened, just instantly flattened. <laughs> actually, actually, it made me jump. <laughs> I jump. I jumped out of my skin. Oh. The first time you, you you see a Goliath, it is. You're like, what the hell is that? Hey, what, what's that thing? Right, so annihilating the bunkers. Right, so we have Spanner. As our alien commander, and T1000 is now the uh, human commander. Roger that. So I'm looking for. I'm just looking for bunkers. This is what I do, start of the game. I look for bunkers until we find the enemy, then I start going harassing them. If you find bunkers, eliminate them, destroy them. Yeah. Let's type in server list. Oh, good point. Good point. Nobody expects the stealth roly poly. I certainly <laughs> didn't. <laughs> I just heard the end of my life happen in game. For for the the five seconds I was able to stay alive for. Right, so the enemies are south. Just seen a buggy up here. Uh, actually, I, yeah, actually quite close, I think, to the aliens. Uh, Goliath's moving faster. Um, do you feel they're too slow at the moment? Or do you think they're at their ideal pace they should be? You the Goliaths? Goliaths, yeah. I mean, to be fair... To be fair, uh, <laughs> uh, it's just there's a, there's a dude named My Balls. <laughs> I mean, what, what can you do when you're addressing the person? You have to say My Balls. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Um, Goliath, speed. 
Yes, yeah, so, so uh, in in this regard, oh, we found the enemy base. In, in this regard, like the, the the speed of the Goliath, I sometimes get a feeling of it's just a feeling right now, right? But I think the Goliath speed is pretty good, right? I, I don't think it should be increased because that would make it maybe just a bit a bit excessive. Mm -hmm. um, maybe instead of one roll, it does two rolls, you know, um, for the secondary attack. Hmm. Yeah, because the roll gives it a little bit of boost anyway in speed, and yeah. yeah also, it would allow it to kind of like juke, like juke someone out if he's going to go roly poly against the tank, and that tank happens to move out the way. He can quickly get back up and roly poly again to try and intercept the tank that's just just dodged him. Kind of make a bit more of a maybe take a Goliath at range. Well, I mean, you should take it at range anyway, but. Um, Uh, Momentum-based rolling, yeah, the thing is, I, I do think about that. The problem with, with it is that it would mean that, uh, you know, downhill, you just keep rolling, keep rolling. And uh, I'm not sure that that would be entirely good. It's, it's much more difficult to balance because suddenly it means that on some maps, the Goliath is going to be absolutely OP in certain, in certain areas. You know, where other places, if he's going uphill, well, he's useless. Yeah, so... Mm. I don't know. Like in, in this regard, I think I think the roly poly just being like one makes a lot of sense. It just mm. like for balancing purposes, it makes it definitely easier to handle, you know, and, and to predict. You see, like a flood of goliaths. Right now, you you know you have X amount of time. But if they kept rolling and rolling, it's like Jesus Christ, you know. It would be much more fun. I definitely agree that just being able to keep rolling with it, like be in that mode and keep rolling, makes a lot of sense. But then they could not be as strong as they are. They have to be much weaker. Do, do, uh, that's a good question, actually. Does the alien faction have anything to do with Volterium in the future? Hey, uh, in, like, are we talking now in terms of law or in like how if they will in future utilize it in some way? Yeah, will they utilize it in some way in the future? No. 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 So Volterium strictly... Uh, okay, carry on. So, so the Volterium is not... I'm hesitant on how much to say <laughs> in terms of the law. Uh, so I'll put it this way, right? The the Volterium itself mm -hmm. is actually it is related to the aliens, but it is they have no use for it. Right. Right. I'll I'll, I'll put it this way. It's excrement. Right? I was gonna say it's a thought. byproduct, doesn't it? Is that is that feces it is. or something? It, <laughs> it is a byproduct, but not of the aliens themselves, like the the, the bugs and this kind of stuff. You know, but something related to them. So. Uh, no spoilers, please. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Um, I mean, I'm definitely not going to say enough to actually spoil anything in particular. This, this is like a, a, you know, but it is related to them. I mean, it does make sense. <laughs> they wasn't expecting the hunter boy to turn up. <laughs> the three guys defending the hill. I just rocked in and just slapped them all, allowing the crabs to come up. Hello, mate. How you doing? <laughs> Trying to hide behind a rock. The hunter <laughs> running at me scared the hell out of me. Poor guy. <laughs> Uh. Alright, I see the mining operation is more or less wide open. Yes, oh, there's buggies here. Right, okay. I'm going to have to take this at a different approach. Crabs, let's go. The crablings. Okay, playing as an alien, I'm definitely, I'm, I definitely think the harvester's having machine gun is a good thing. I mean, I'm, I'm barely getting hit and I'm almost at the harvester. It's a full load and I think it really does make sense. I've taken a bit of damage, but definitely not enough to actually stop me, which I think makes it's, it's fair. You know, it allows me to get like get right on top. <laughs> Everyone's teleported. I'm just whipping them as I come in. <laughs> oh, the other harvester shot me. Oh man, <laughs> he's still alive. Oh, I'm dead. No. Go, my crabs, go. <laughs> He's getting eaten. Yeah. I love the crabs. They're so funny. Yeah, the crabs The crabs are a fun unit to play as. Yeah, so... need to improve movement with the aliens because it can get really annoying at times. They've got, um... Uh, not momentum. What's, what's the name for it? Um, like, the boat feel to, to, like, the hunter and all. I don't know if that's, like, due to his... How big the hunter is and he runs quick and it just gives him that inertia that's it he's got like that inertia behind him so it takes him a while to stop 
because he kind of like yeah. jogs. So I don't know if that's intentional or just it because he's certainly a... intentional. Um, uh, it's also because I mean it is it is because all the units are physics based, hmm. so it is intentional. Yeah, I mean it makes sense. You know, I mean if you slide along the the, the dust, you know. Yeah. Yeah, no, the hunter is my favorite alien unit. Start of the game. It's 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 almost like something out of a horror mo movie when you come over the hill with those two tentacles up in the air. Yeah, when you see it running towards you, it looks, it looks like this crazy thing. It's like, oh god, no. <laughs> okay, there's 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 a big attack on the nodes in the southwest. Yeah, I've spotted it. I think we're just going for a crab assault at this at this point. Oh, there's so many of us as well. So many of us, but there's a lot of riflemen. There's much more riflemen than than us. Okay, like in terms of a uh, the kill. <laughs> I'm a buried crab now. Oh, come on, come kill me. I'll kill one, but they're gonna just teleport in. I got one. <laughs> I got one. <laughs> There's three more that oh. I can see in the the one point spot. Then there's m more further further west. Than those. I, really I honestly don't... think it would be a good idea to harass the alien, the humans a bit too. Yeah. I buried myself underground. They totally just turned around and started shooting someone else. And I come back out and bit one in the butt and killed him, and then died. You'd love to see it. There is a certain thing coming out of this greater spawning cyst. I'm keeping my eye on it. As soon as I said that, it's it stopped pulsating. Now it's starting. Yeah, the game has a long way to go, but it is it is definitely like fun to play. I think. Oh yeah, I'm uh, I'm having a blast. I'm an absolute blast playing this like every, all the time. Yeah, when when like when the frames go go to hell, it it is a bit. Like, uh. Oh, that's fun. Obviously, logically, because you see less, right? But it's still fun. But it yeah, definitely n needs, like, optimization to improve it. Yeah. Ooh, I just spotted a, uh, a, a bunker. Like, it's just come up on the maps, like, so far to the <laughs> west. I wonder if Thanks, the team's going to react to that. I see what you say, Candyman. Thanks, man. Yeah, still there's a, there's a, like a lot to do, you know. Um, I'm just, oh like, my uh, god! Playing the game and at the same time thinking. Um, balancing is going to be you know the longest process mm -hmm. logically, you know, but it's the easiest process in quotations because it's just playing with values. But yeah, it's going to be a very long process to do. So I've got a ton of riflemen on a hill, and I'm a hunter. Um, as much as I want to go in there and like slap them up. Um, there's also a buggy coming up behind as well, and I know for a fact that thing could spray me as I'm trying to kill things. So I'm gonna have to try and take this tactically. Yeah, yeah. See, see the human base. Hmm. Thinking. Right, now I'm thinking about gameplay. By the way, like the, the game, like this, the game we're playing. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting shredded. Actually, getting shredded. Yeah, those riflemen are really doing us a nasty one. Ah, uh, I tried to try to burn out the buggy's uh, gun so I could go for it. I think all the infantrymen pretty much died out. There's like one or two left. Right, better not. Dude, no, no. There's this light buggy. There's one further north of the other one. I've just seen one going for the resource node as well. Got to go for him. So where, um, who's, who's the commander? Oh, Just saying there's no, crap, no crap, impalers crap, crap, crap. or anything as of yet. I've not, I've not even seen a single impaler. Oh no. Oh, there oh, they are. Man, I hid, I hid under the harvester and I actually got crushed by it as it drove over me. It's a uh, bug, of course, but it's a bug. But I got killed as a bug by a bug. Oh, oh, a bug. As a bug. <laughs>
by a bug. Yep. That's how it is, man. Oh, here comes Life. the hunter. He's going to slap him up. He lich literally pushed him underground. I just spotted that. <laughs> like the little red um, targeting thing. The human literally just went straight through the bottom of the map. As he died. A bunch of, dude, we got a bunch of teleporters. I saw a teleport. We'll go investigate it. At least tag the target. Yeah, we got some teleporters. Oh, no. Okay, they're there. This yeah. hunter is not going to be in a good way if he keeps this up. Oh, he's trapped on a rock. You're good. Get him. He's got away from you. <laughs> he hit another rock. Oh, no. The poor buggy. He's been chomped. He's getting destroyed. Two crabs and a hunter. Yeah, so we've got a lot of uh, teleporting in. And definitely one thing that, that's going to help is if the teleportation uh, either costs personal resources, which I think it should to a degree. Mm -hmm. But also there should be a cooldown time. Because, of course, there's no personal resources just yet. That needs to be added. But uh, the cooldown time will definitely make it that you don't just, like, all, like spam your way in there and then, you know, you die. And it's all good. And just keep respawning and just keep teleporting there. You know, yeah. It will, it will force you at some point to have to, like, go on foot if you keep just dying. Just like the crab army. Just all moving in. Oh, they're hit indicators, Raelians. Uh, um, indicators in, in what sense? Like when, when you get hit? Uh, ranged attack, I would, I would have thought. When, when you when you successfully hit. Oh, um, no, no, no. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm not much of a fan of it. Uh, like hit indicators, like uh, the meta kind of thing where it's like, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, not much of a fan of it. Like it doesn't, doesn't belong in a game like this, I think. Especially given the, the engagement distances. Mm hmm. Yeah. Harvesters of meme lords. Oh, they're, 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 whoa, that crap's on miles. Um, yeah. I, I'd say the harvesters are definitely the highlight of, uh, Dram's release. Um, from the, from the moment the game came into early access, and then the, as soon as the things came out about the harvesters, how did you feel about it? <laughs> and all the clips that you've seen of the harvesters, like, getting stuck on the refinery, getting stuck on rocks. Oh, yeah, the harvesters. Oh, Jesus Christ. When I looked at it, I was like, I mean, I, I would use more profane language, but basically, um, like, <laughs> long story short, uh, because when, of course, that's a funny thing, right? You can never test it enough. I mean, yeah, you know, I did test it and I did see some problems, but it was never um, absolutely as drastic as what I saw in, like, the, the multiplayer matches, you know? And it's mainly because the amount of harvesters being built are just very significant, you know? Mm -hmm. So, of course, it, it compounded the problem. Um Is it just me, or does it have, like, um, a bunker on west is a problem. Okay, yeah, cool, cool, cool. All right, so if that bunker is being dealt with, that should that should deal with that. You know what? I'm going to go explore the east. There's a red bunker yeah. right to the east that's been seen. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go eliminate it. Um, I assume they probably can hear us, so now they're going to go defend it, but that's, yep. that's fine. <laughs> And there's two heavy quads oh, headed for a poor single crab right to the south. I feel sort for of three you, quads. For all, you, for all you human players listening to the stream, and now I'm going to react to my attack on this bunker. Dodgy. <laughs> <laughs> you're human and you're listening to the stream, just please write into the chat. Just write dodgy. <laughs> and my cat is here meowing at me. Hello, boy. You won't be able to see him, guys, unless he sticks his tail in my face. What is it, boy? What are you meowing for? Hey? What is it? Oh, is it that time? It's his dinner time. Is it that time? Sorry? My cat's dinner time. So he's come uh... to see me. See me for dinner. But it's, it's not me feeding you tonight. And now I can physically see. <sighs> yeah, the... The light quads really make short order of crabs. That's one thing which is, in terms of balance, a little bit annoying. But, I mean, it's fair, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I could increase the speed of the, um, the crab somewhat, but... Increase the speed of the crab? Yeah. 
They've actually got more health than the scout and the right. Well, wait, how much health pool does a crab have? 150? Oh, a crab has about 400 health. 400. So they've got more health pool than most of the infantry units. Yes, they do have uh, more health than all of the infantry units. Each crab. But the thing is, I mean, you know, like, think about how easy it is for infantry to kill infantry. All right, cool. Nicely done. Yeah, true. I mean, the, the way I've approached the game is is more of a, like, a realistic perspective. Uh, no, it's 600, I think, is for the heavy crabs. The the thorned, horned crab. There we go. Oh, there's a massive uh, buggy push straight into the uh, main nest. Oh, boy. Right. Fair enough. Oh, and there's one right here with me as well. Including big yeah. heavy ones, and I'm, I'm an impaler. I'm definitely not going to kill it. Ooh. That's not going to end well. We don't have all that much to fight with them. We're on beta 2, but definitely not enough to push back against them. I'm trying to make my way there, but... Commandos are... Oh, I, I forget. I think they had like 300 or something like that. They don't really need all that much health because they have more armor. The humans generally have like not all that much health, but um, they have more armor. The uh, commando, that is. From the back, he's, uh, he's got like a, a softer spot, so you can like near the knees and this kind of stuff. You can get him quite well. But... Uh... I'm just gonna hide underground. I'm really trying to shoot this buggy at like 400 meters away with an impaler, and it's just not—it's not going well. Yeah, no. To be honest, I'm not sure we're going to recover from this. Let's see. Let's see. There's a lot of stuff incoming. I'm definitely surprised to not see any scorpions or behemoths up at this stage. I yeah, don't know how much we were getting harassed, but. Well, um, we, we're on... Okay, we got 2,450 resources. We're on beta 2. Hmm. So the shrimps might have been getting farmed up a little bit, I think. Yeah, I think we've really reduced the amount of shrimps we have. Plus, it, it, oh, okay, we've lost some biotic uh, bio caches as well. So I don't think we actually have bio caches near the... Uh, what's it called? Near the resources, which means I have to like ferry back and forth a long distance. Well, I think I think uh, uh, T one thousand is um like learning. Yeah, that's all right though. Yeah, that's fine. Oh no, I'm not paying attention. No, I'm gonna get killed by him. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> oh, I could have killed him. Oh, the crab killed him anyway, so it was it was worth it. Yeah, uh, the aliens, the shrimp, are having to ferry quite a distance. If you have a look at the map, you can see the shrimp, where they are. Yeah, they're quite yeah, they're quite far out. They've got to make it all the way back. Not good. I hide. Well, I could try, but the hunter's not going to do much to heavy quad. I mean, he is slow yeah, boy, but he's got he's got a. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I've taken down three. He's got big heavy gun. All right, yeah. Commander finished me off though. Well, we took down that attack for the most part. Oh, just got it. Uh, if there's going to be an alien queen, will there be an alien king? No. So the queen is like, a, a, you know, like with wasps, for example. You just have the queen. She is the hive mind. Yeah, for the for the for the colony, yeah. Because there's obviously, you know, there's, there's each queen has its own colony. Hmm. Are there going to be any shrimp upgrades? Like there are going to be uh, harvester upgrades. Uh, yeah, I mean, there should definitely be some, like, unit upgrades in general. Will there be a brain bug-like unit? 
Uh, what does that mean, brain bug? Oh, that's a reference to um, Starship Troopers. Oh, right. The big, right, right. the big grub-looking thing. Um, that was in the like the, the the final moments of Starship Troopers, where they capture it and they take control of the planet. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Now I recall. Um, I don't really want to say all that much because then I would would be spoiling. So. Uh, what do you think about making the horn crab just an upgrade or evolution of the standard crab for like mid game? I mean, that is an option, definitely an option. I mean, some of the units when I was like making them, it wasn't uh, some of them weren't really deep in design. It was like this would be cool, so I tried that and this kind of stuff. And the horned crab is one of them, and I think it is kind of like a logical evolution of the standard crab. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. They have a. They seem more armored as well, but they are also a little bit slower. No, oh, they're the same speed. Same they speed. Look, they, they, they look they slow look because, beefy. because of the way they, the way they appear. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. I'm not sure about their speed values. I know about their slap, HP slap, values. Slap, 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 slap. I'm probably dead here. Right, I've killed the heavy and I've got a marksman to deal with, but I'm actually one HP. So, oh, one shot again. This is typical me. Oh, and I get shot by a commander. Are you dead? Or are you still alive? I'm still alive, just barely. Oh, they're nice, trying to shoot yeah. me the tendrils at the moment. Yeah, they're trying to shoot my tendrils. Is that you, the crab? Yeah, I'm the go crab. Around, go, going around the rock. Yeah, oh. Get, get that. oh no, he killed you. That bloody commando. So I'm still alive, just barely. Oh, he's flanking. I think the Impaler could use with a bit of an a uh, precision upgrade as well. Yeah, I'm dead. The Impaler is not all that good as a ranged unit. Right, what have we got here then? So this is our main nest, and... Yeah, that commander is just waiting for me to uh, get out. Are you buried at the minute? Are you? Yeah, I'm. 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 I'm dug underground because there's a commander like right looking at me, so I can't. I can't get out. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I find is a good tactic is um if if like you're sat at the spawner and there's enemies nearby and the, the spawner's doing something, you want to take that unit, just dig yourself underground and mind control it when it comes out. Sorry, uh, say again. So when when uh, like a minute ago, I had the um I had that heavy quad sat outside the spawner. And yeah. I, I burrowed underground because he was trying to kill me. And then, um, <laughs> as soon as the hunter came out, I quickly just grabbed the hunter from underground, like as uh -huh. like mind transfer. So. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Quite a quite a, a valuable tactic if you know if you're taking fire, but you want to take a control of a unit. Hmm, that's true. By the way, we got hover tanks coming our way. It's oh, GG. Well, that's GG. Yeah. yeah, we got we haven't got scorpions yet. Uh, no scorpions no, we're, yet. Not only that, we're on zero cortex tier. Oh. So, it's GG. Yeah. Oh, well. All good. We'll go again. We'll go aliens and humans again. Um. Yeah. Uh, I did see something. Good afternoon, gents. Uh, thanks for hosting the stream. And if No worries, mate. No worries. And thank you to Martin for joining me tonight. No worries. Uh, my pleasure, man. About the Salakazurk. Yeah, you. Crabs are literally. The, they may look small on my perspective, but when you're a human and you look at a crab, they're, they're, they're big. They're not. Yeah, they're big. They're, they're taller than a human. Yeah, they're, they're massive. So, with 20 of them sprinting at you and you're just like a scout or a rifleman. <laughs> uh, even the hunter, when you, you think of the hunter, you think, oh, he's quite a small unit. No, he's towering. He's, he's a big. He's a big unit. It's, it's, it's the perspective gets lost, you know, until you're like literally viewing it from first person. All right, I see the the hover tanks incoming. Yeah. Trying to, I'm trying to fight a buggy with impaler, but it's it's yeah, it's proving ineffective. <laughs> uh, will there be a new command for the commander like 
guard attack, attack while moving. So yeah, so they uh, they will be in implemented. Yeah. yeah. Uh, color palettes for factions. So, soul versus soul. And, um, not law related, like skirmish. Like, if you'd host a game, yeah, yeah, definitely, you get... definitely, uh, definitely, I want to do stuff like that because it obviously shouldn't be like, it's not law friendly, but that's fine. You know, it's, it's, it can be a lot of fun. Like, especially once the teams are actually different, you may want like a perfectly balanced match, which would be, of course, you know, soul versus soul, Centauri versus Centauri, aliens versus aliens. Which doesn't make sense in terms of law, but certainly makes sense in in terms of like actual gameplay. And like having two v two scenarios, where we'd have two souls versus two alien commanders, and they would have their own nests. Yeah, precisely. Yeah, those two hover tanks are gonna do a lot of damage. I don't think we've got anything to take them on apart from. Oh, I mean I'm, we've got no chance. I mean, to be honest, we might as well. We're at a point where it's we're going to concede because, or not not concede, but we're going to get really trashed on because they have four, or they have, or they already have two uh, heavy vehicle factories, and it seems they're building two two ultra heavy vehicle factories. So they're going to come with um, what's it called siege tanks eventually. Mm. And we are cortex tier none. So we're literally just uh, crabs and impalers. Yeah. Because they've, they've really like pushed us. And I really need to add zooming on this map and panning. Well, Mark's been shooting me. Especially these large matches. Large maps, sorry. Far away for me to make a make a difference. I think uh, it's just our nest that needs to die for us to lose, isn't it? Right. It's just the nest that needs to go down for. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they're jumping the they're jumping the hill with the hover tank. It's funny. Yeah, uh, GW author, you're right. Like with regards to the uh, the teleport also... spam, the teleport spam definitely needs to improve. It is it is quite excessive. I mean, it's fair, right? That's what the game supports, but. It does need to change because the, the teleport spamming is really annoying. <laughs> we just killed that hover tank. Uh, it flipped itself somehow. I don't know how you manage that. Uh, okay, so someone's asking why can the humans keep playing without a HQ? Uh, so the HQ is, you know, it's not crucial to the operations. I mean, okay, so the idea is if you have buildings which are capable of producing, you know, units that you can still fight with, then it would be a Pyrrhic victory, but a victory nonetheless if you won. Mm -hmm. With the aliens, if the right now it's the nest because I don't have the queen in, right? But once the queen is in, if you lose all your nests, that's fine because the, the queen can will be able to build one herself. Um, so there, it's only about killing the queen. So of course the queen will be embedded in a nest, but she can get out at any point and move somewhere else. But while she's not in the nest, you won't be able to like add new units to the queue and so on. Um, we'll see how that plays out. If it play, if it doesn't play all too well, then I'll, I'll have to adjust it. You know, but there should always be an alien queen mm. in some form or another. You know, I mean, one way to do it would be that she'd be able to burrow through the um, uh, nests and move, transfer to another nest, for example. You know, it, that would be. But I'd prefer to avoid that. That's like more of a meta thing rather than something that makes sense. Right, we've got a bunch of commandos spamming us. Yeah, this is this is GG. This is way GG. Like we have nothing that we can actually do at hey, this point. A challenge for me, or a test for me. Have a crab below a siege tank, <clears throat> and then land on the siege tank. Would the crab explode or get damaged? Oh, what, you mean sound um, jet engines or something? Oh, okay. That... So, so the, jet, the jets they don't deal damage right now. And to be honest, when I see how problematic it is even to get onto the vehicles, I don't think I want to add damage for it. It complicates the AI and all this kind of stuff significantly, so I'll probably avoid doing that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, as for, I'll give you a second to kill these guys. They're highly annoying. Oh, land the siege tank on top of the borrowed crab. Oh, Would yeah, it kill yeah, the yeah. crab? Uh, if you land the siege tank on a borrowed crab, I think it would actually kill it. I think it would actually kill it. Yeah. 
Or maybe land it and it's walking underneath, maybe. That would do the exactly the same damage. Okay, so someone's saying, can't crabs make siege tanks float away like goliaths make harvesters fly sometimes? No, because a goliath is, you know, it has a significant portion of a... Uh, 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 of the mass of a harvester, whereas uh, uh, a crab has zero point nothing mass of the the siege tank. There very much is mass in this, um, so you can literally a crab that jumps on top of flying vehicles will pull it down. Um, uh, if there's enough of them, of course. Yeah, the teleport, the teleport spanning definitely has to be um, like there definitely has to be a cooldown for the teleport because, yeah, <laughs> I mean. Uh, it can be very frustrating where you like, especially with a lot of players, you kill three and another three teleport in, you know, before you, you manage to before you manage to kill them. So it is a non non stop fight. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna go human for this one, I think. So we're doing oh yeah, <clears throat> don't forget to not spawn in. Like don't don't select to spawn in <laughs> before the timer stops. That is going to be fixed. That is fixed. You've got the fix for it already. So. Yeah, yeah. It's it was literally one line fix. So if yeah. it's fixed, it will be in the next build. Oh, when when we like to see the next beta branch build then before the the main the main build. Oh, I wanted to have it in today, but I actually had like uh, I had a call and stuff, so I I didn't get to finish it. Um, but uh, definitely I want to push it tomorrow if possible. Mm. Okay, this might be a bit different. We've got two totally different commanders this time around. Let's see how they let's see how they they work things out. Mm. Uh, server host with customization settings. Uh, specify special. Oh my god, I can't say the word. Specify uh, individual unit stats as health, armor values, spread. Uh, Wait, uh, sorry, say say that again. So, uh, will you provide uh, server hosts with customization settings to specify things like individual unit health, armor, value, speed, damage, attack speed, uh, or weight, and spread? No, because those will be done via mods. So, basically, the, the server would just be able to um, use a mod. And the, the, the modding these units, I'll make sure it's very simple, so anyone can do it. Um, uh, because the thing is, is, otherwise you'd have like this gigantic list of all these values which you can change which I think would be a bit excessive you know, I do want to keep the um, the uh, the hosting simple you know yeah yeah. Uh, Dustin thank you for the follow mate and thank you guys for the follows today as well and also thank you for the donation as well um, very much appreciated um, in case you guys didn't know I achieved YouTube membership a partnership sorry uh, f two days ago I think <laughs> I can't remember it's just, yeah it's been it's been a long week and a long weekend so um I th it was it was early week. I think it was like Monday, Tuesday. I achieved partnership, and I've also got um, everything up and running. Uh, so if you guys, you know, want to join the membership, you get you get perks for it and stuff. You don't have to. I don't really expect anything from this anyway. Um, but there are there are memberships. There are three tiers, and you do get perks for each tier. If, if you know if you want to have a look, then I think the button somewhere located above the stream somewhere. <laughs> I'm totally new to YouTube, by the way. Um, I was originally a Twitch streamer for two to three years and my content was basically uh competitive casting for first person shooters like battlefield and call of duty uh but my calling has always been rts's so um and that's why kind of i've led myself through uh rts games and c landed myself in silica basically yeah what are the chances of that yeah i mean i've always loved like command and conquer i play i was playing anno 800 for uh, five six hundred hours in a row at one point just because it's a city builder and it's got combat ass like um assets to it and it's got a uh, unique um uh economy based stuff to it as well like you're, you're controlling a trading empire and then that's that's the type of stuff i really like as well but i've always had my call in with fast paced uh, rts's and stuff as well so yeah it makes sense man oh my minimap's bugged i don't know if you can see it yeah i i, I have it as well when you switch teams it doesn't correctly update the um the texture which is used for it Press know on. about it we'll fix it <laughs> another one to the list my balls can we get ram can we get run lock please <laughs> my balls <laughs> yeah I, I i do think it would be good to to be able to like put toggle run so yeah 
Ooh, uh, a crab incoming. I'm I'm crab. I'm looking at chat and I'm constantly crashing to like rocks on the ground. <laughs> Gonna end up killing my buggy in a minute. Um, let's have a look. Warhammer BOP. Uh, everyone keeps saying about 40k, like someone building a mod for this game when when it's available, like to convert to 40k. There's, there's a crab coming towards our base. It's not around me, but... Uh... Yeah, he looks like he's trying to stalk me, but no, he's, he's moving towards our base. Alright, so that means we must be not too far from the aliens. Uh, on the last check, it just rejoin. You can tell it's a player crab straight away. The moment he jumps over me and just goes, Oh, I've over jumped. <laughs> Turns around and stared at me in midair. Funny enough, I actually grew up playing uh, Dawn of War, the original Dawn of War. And then I did oh. play two and three. Um,. The original Dawn of War, though, I remember, um, my god, I was out uh, on a work um, assignment to another another shop, and I was staying at a hotel, and I'd I'd play. Oh god, I would I'd be playing. Um, oh my god, what? I was, I was I was playing, and I was meant to be up at six a.m. the next day, and I didn't finish this game. I was Necron. It was me and my friend. We're both Necron, and we were we were versing four uh, orc AIs, and the game it literally took like six hours because they they were just swarming the Necrons. We managed to push out with a monolith in the end, and managed to just like wipe the battlefield. But yeah, that's like one of those memorable um, memorable moments. Oh, that's the hunter. I don't really want to mess with him. Uh, custom paint jobs for harvesters, tanks, and such and different. Customization after early access. It doesn't make sense right now. Mm -hmm. Just because it, it would take like a long time to, to, to implement and do and all this kind of stuff. And the resources can be better spent elsewhere for now. Yeah. You know, it's that, most important uh, to actually get all the stuff done. And would you think that would be like a modded thing that you could do? Or would you, would you want to put it like as, a, for example, like buyable? Um, faction, like paint jobs or skins and stuff like that. Uh, I, th I think I think it makes sense for um, uh, you know, similar to Counter Strike, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, yeah. I'll be perfectly honest. I will be perfectly honest. I'm actually not much of a fan of like these kind of skin jobs and like the, 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 these paint jobs and all this kind of stuff because uh, I think about it is it really then changes the feel of the game. Like when you, when you, for example, you know, Counter Strike. It's of course my personal opinion. You come across like a soldier who's holding a pink rifle. It just feels ridiculous, you know. Um, sure, people like it, and that's why I think it, it is worth implementing because people do enjoy it. Um, uh, but I'm personally not all that much of a fan, you know. But yeah, it's, it's fair enough, you know. Everyone everyone likes something else. So yeah. I, I think if I was doing like different paint jobs, I'd try and do them so that they fit into the world, you know. Um, so it's not like oh a pink harvester because it's it's a bit ridiculous. You know? So I literally put no pink. <laughs> Sorry. So I literally put the chat no pink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is, I mean, having pink, you literally think it's like an error in the textures. You know? <laughs> but I'm not criticizing, mind you. I'm not criticizing like a, a Counter Strike's a, a choice of um, you know putting in these different skins and all this kind of stuff. It's just that I personally like, it just I I don't like it. I just don't like it. It's my personal opinion. Right, well, I've dealt with that crab that was attacking the refinery. Oh, I saw that pebble as I come down. I was like, oh, uh, hold on. Is there an enemy on our... Let's have a look. Before I end up flipping myself and killing myself. 
Look at this, look how good I am. I've got 115 kills. Man, this scoreboard's bugged. <laughs> I gotta fix it. It's nonsense, of course. I don't have 115 kills. So I have 58 deaths and 29 deaths for certain other yeah, people. Yeah, you're doing pretty crap, man. <laughs> oh, there's another crab coming. I just realized we have not actually found the alien's uh, base yet. This whole entire time. Haven't actually located him. This crab really wants his refinery dead. Oh, man. Mm. Yeah, uh, with, with, with like, the, the, the deaths and the kills, what I've noticed is it actually multiplies it by the number of players. <laughs> so it's some silly little synchronization issue. Uh, to clarify regarding waypoints, uh, waypoints you said it was going to be a thing, didn't you? Where you could waypoint sure, a, sure. A, a building to produce units and send them here. Rally point. Yeah, yeah. Rally point definitely will be a thing. And uh, waypoints is in, I assume, team markers? Like, we'll go to waypoint this, waypoint that? No, no, no. Waypoints would be like, okay, the way I understand waypoints is when you select a unit and you're like, go That's there, right, yeah. and then go there, and then yeah. go there, you know. So you give like three waypoints. You yeah, know, and so it, it then first get, makes its way to the first point, and then automatically to the second. Yeah, so you can like stage an attack much better. Yeah, so you can tell them to move here, then move to here, and then attack that target. Or yeah, precisely. Yeah. The important thing about it is to be able to like uh, run around something, you know, because that's the important thing. Right, I'm gonna try and locate the enemy base because I've just been driving around in the same spot. Uh, will there be super soldiers? Uh, technically, the commando is kind of a, a big beefy boy, isn't he? Indeed. Um, so super soldiers. Uh, I mean, oh god. Okay, there's a big queue at the the light vehicle factory. <laughs> okay, screw it. I'll just go on foot then. Um, oh, we found the enemy base. Okay, yeah. Just located a uh, bio stash. Teleportation time, I guess. Yeah, um, yes, for, so for super soldiers, um, definitely not something like which can take thousands of points of damage, you know, I mean, I do want to keep it so that the, uh, uh, the, like, infantry, I, I want damage to feel realistic, right, mm -hmm. so if you take a rocket to the face from a, you know, a rocket truck, then I wouldn't expect you to be able to survive, no matter what kind of a soldier you are. Only exception might be if there was, for example, some shielding, right? Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, will you be able to implement an active? Will you implement being able to see the active mini map on the teleporter? Uh, yes, most definitely. It's, it's more that I just didn't have time to to do it properly just now. No. Uh, I'm about to run into so much combat right now. There's a hunter coming my way as well. Um, don't know if I should pick a fight with him or not. Pretty end really badly. It's funny how the same tactics that work in Matrix Selection 2 kind of work here too as a soldier, where you can just j jump around. <laughs> oh man, I need, I need what I need to do for these aliens is when they attack, they'll automatically lock on to the nearest enemy with their attack because right now it can be very frustrating when you keep missing with the crab, you know, because the person just jumped to the side. Yeah. Kind of need that rocket trooper to kill off this hunter. Friendly fire. Uh, in your HQ, I forget. From memory, it is. Mark no, four the poor heavy. Three. Mark four or three. I tried, aliens. I tried to save you. Wait, how come aliens have no resources? That, I mean, if you've got no resources, then you're not utilizing the units correctly. 
We'll take down some payload quick. Oh, fuck. Add spawn? I wouldn't say it's a bit like... Fair enough. I mean, it depends. I, I'm not sure what kind of... What's, what that's oh called. my god, there's, there's, there's four crabs. No, five crabs trying to, trying to get to me. <laughs> oh my god. Make sure I don't hit a pebble, because that will be the death of me. Up south of base, fair enough. Well, I mean, when I see... I can see that there's a ton of nodes. In, a lot of them, I think, are absolutely excessive, so... I think it's just about distribution. I think I think the node placement could be a little bit better as well. That's another question, actually. Map editor, like an in-game one, where you can kind of like spice things up, change the location of certain um, like resource points and stuff. Um, resource points is a, is a bit of a problem because they need to be generated to kind of like fit onto the train, but um. Uh, Oh my god, why are there so many nodes? I launched this crab so far into the sky. <laughs> uh, Drum, isn't it a huge mistake I'm waiting for mod support to let hosts uh, make custom server settings? Hosts could correct balance issues and create more competitive and uh, thematic experiences for people. Uh, well, I definitely want to do a um, something akin to Armor Three Zeus, if uh, if anyone knows it. Um, basically, a kind of like player plays as the game master and can spawn things for the other players, and the other players um, you know, are. The objectives that this person gives them. So it's kind of like, a, a think literally, um, uh, um, DD, for example, you know, where you have one game master and then you have, of course, the other players which are, um, uh, which are playing the story that the game master has thought up. So the game master could theoretically just give them a million units that they have to fight against but, and, and kill them, but of course that wouldn't be very fun with it. That is a lot of nodes. Yeah, I just said that's a, that's a that's a hell of a lot of nodes. It's like a three stack of nodes heading to a single resource. Yeah, it's exactly exactly. I think there's. Oh way no, I'm I'm in trouble. A massive overbuild of nodes. It's definitely what uh, you know, killed. Oh me. my god! Oh, <laughs> I'm in reverse as well. Trying to kill these crabs off. Oh my god. No, the hunter! I just heard the whip! <laughs> I heard the little whip coming in. There we go. Right, how are we looking here? Uh, what tech are we on? Car. Let's drive out. That sounds like a good idea. We're at tech. Uh, commando, tech three. Yeah, we definitely need more vehicles. Aliens do heal over time. They do. Did you increase the light armored car speed? I don't think it's increased the light armored car, right? No, no, no. It's the same. It's the same. Will Alrighty. construction distance notification be added similar to like the Zerg creep? All oh, right, yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah, oh, like a pylon blue circle. It, yeah, I know what you mean. Like a like a um a circle indicating how far out you can build. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely, it has to be there. And for the humans as well, when they're placing their buildings, there should be like a grid indicator showing you where you can valid placement for buildings. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, Tom Carter. It may feel faster, but I have made no change to light uh, the light armored car. Ratchet Tech Four. We're at Tech Four, but we okay. Okay, we've started building a heavy vehicle factory. Everyone's waiting for the light armored cars to come out at the minute. I'm just in line. 
Are you the commando? I'm a commando, yeah. <laughs> I'm the dude here, jumping up and down. Oh, what? Alright, so that that guy just... I'll ride it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ride the the boy. Yeah, come on. Let's go. Teamwork. For, for two seconds before I slip off the end. Yeah, oh, I, have to, oh. I have to improve the holding on the vehicle. Oh. Yes, it's not gonna happen. It's yeah, I'll go. Oh, I'll wait. I'll wait. What I might actually do though is for like light armored car. I think that could ha like carry, for example, two soldiers or so. You know. Mm. Oh, like a uh, like a semi transport. Yeah, exactly. To, to like transport small amount of units. Mm. You know. <clears throat> Uh, passive income through buildable capsule structures. Almost uh, like Tiberium Spikes from uh, Command & Conquer, where you would capture it and it would generate a base amount like every few seconds. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, I did actually think about it. Like having... Um, I actually do have for Prospector planned uh, some player placeable uh, drilling rigs. They're small. They'll only harvest very, like, a small amount. But they'll keep harvesting by themselves. And they should be redeployable. So, okay, we got scorpions incoming, by the way. Three, I can see at least on the map. Oh, God. Right, okay. Oh, we yes. Really, really, really need tanks at this point. I mean, I don't think they're doing a bad job, to be honest. I mean, those nodes are a bit crazy, but it's a waste of res, but. Yeah, that's a lot of nodes. There's also a bunker to the far, uh, the far west that could have been utilized. Just thinking oh, for yeah. a, for a cheeky barracks uh, placement. Yeah, true. But, um, to be honest, it's like so dodgy. You know? <laughs> yeah, it is dodgy. It's being that close to them as well. Yeah, exactly. Uh, need need ways to generate infinite money for all factions for those super long form games. Um. I'm not sure I agree with that, because, I mean, I think ultimately it should kind of, like, wind down, you know, like, that, I, 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 I don't, like, it's never happened that someone's exhausted the resources or even come close, and by the resources getting slowly exhausted, it forces you to push up in the map. I'm not sure I really want to charge these scorpions, because, especially not with this. Yeah, I'm not. I'm. 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 Hopefully, I will see a hover tank come out in a second because this this factory is almost done. So the placement of that additional HQ was a little bit unfortunate, I think. And it won't, it won't um, come out in time, will it? For the uh... wait, oh, uh, you're probably using it as a turret, which makes yeah. sense. Yeah, I think it's progressed quite far actually, just by looking at it. I think it's almost under full construction. Actually, you're... Oh no, it's oh, still no. it's still no no no. It's, no, it's, it's about it's it's about fifty percent done. Yeah, I could see. I could see the uh, the tower still being created, like yeah, the yeah, um, yeah. the pyramid of uh, printing. It, right. Okay. Yeah. This 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 thing I want to I want to know is is this is this a factory that's printing um, vehicles, or is it materializing vehicles? Because uh, the the way it looks, it it looks like it's kind of printing it, like almost not like a three D printer, but like a yeah. <laughs> Well, it's it's a kind of like fabrication technique, which, you know, you could say three D printing, but in just not in a confined space. Hmm. So you can see like it builds a crap ton of supports, um, and it's able to kind of like print whatever it needs to. And the fabrication technique, of course, works for for vehicles as well as buildings, which makes sense. I mean, you know, what's the difference between a vehicle and a building? Big, yeah. <laughs> but you know, obviously. Also, what doesn't make sense is, of course, how, how humans are created in barracks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tele well, teleporting them down from the mothership or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, I think that's that's a, that's a good idea, yeah. You know, you probably don't want to explain it by breeding. It's a bit... <laughs> oh, well, cloned. Uh, tank generated soldiers. We're, we're yeah, going guys, into... We are not going to keep this position against those... those uh, the hover tanks. The hover tanks was ready. It is ready. Yeah, the, the the scorpions are just going to just chew me up. All over us. Yeah, I'll tr I'll try my best. I will try my best. Make a custom challenge map with low health commandos or something. What's the challenge map, man. Uh, low health com. Oh right. Challenge. 
You have to you have to um, expand on that one, Lewis. As I was like, what? Saying that weekly Well like a weekly um custom like mode. Almost like oh. just edited versions of like strategy, but like there's there's certain tweaks involved that change everything up. Oh yeah, uh, definitely in the far future. Like mm. anything like that, because that's like constant uh, content updates, which are like you know now is the game's not done. So yeah, yeah. yeah I done. literally I cannot see the scorpion. So uh, scorpions in base. Uh, when I said we're done, I meant of course like. Um, all right, we got a hover tank that can at least do some damage. I mean, for all the complaints about the res, I mean, the aliens are doing really well. I don't... I yes. <clears throat> I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to... If that HQ has gone up, though, and it is opening fire, but it's not opening fire at the right target, I don't think. There's two scorpions to the far north going for... Actually, where's our harvesters? Oh, they're at the back, okay. And then there's just two scorpions to my exact left. Uh, talk about dedicated servers. Yes, yeah, so there will be dedicated servers. Um, Where is the report? So, when will we likely see the queen introduced? Within the next two months or so. Like, uh, I want to do it like uh, worst case, along with the the A units. Okay. I don't have to do too many balancing passes, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's understandable. Uh, trying to keep an eye on what I'm doing as well. What does I'm looking at? Chat. Proxy chat. <clears throat> yeah, like, so uh, proxy chat. I think most important is to keep voice voice uh, voice chat going. Yeah, it's gonna be very important. Afterwards, proxy chat. Can be either an extension of that because it should obviously work in the same way. Because if, if you have some of the, um, oh, sorry, just concentrating on the battle here. That's you up there, Lycan. Yeah, they're sat All behind right. the construction. It's ultra heavy. Yeah, and it and we there's really just start pushing the whipping their tails over the top. Oh, there's a hunter coming in from north as well. I think I noticed someone wait in the chat here in the game. Yeah, okay. On Pata, have you noticed? Uh, oh, sorry, uh, have you considered showing health bars on top of the enemies instead of on the side? Um. Okay, we got a Goliath incoming, by the way. Yeah, I mean it's it's definitely a possibility. Uh, like like the idea to put onto the side was to minimize how much HUD clutter there would be. But yeah, I mean it does it does make sense to agree to have it on. Uh, of the enemy. I mean, there's definitely going to be changes made to the hard drive. This is not final. You know, the hard and this, these things, these like especially the hard is minimal mm -hmm. importance right now versus you know improving the harvesters further, fixing performance and this kind of stuff. I'm fine with Scorpion, and it's definitely a losing battle. Trying to aim for his tail, but trying to hit a tail when it's darting around just above a rock. Hand grenades, so uh, yeah, utilities for our infantry. Yes, will will be added. Oh, that was an enemy shooting enemy. We've just lost two hover tanks. Okay, one hover tank. The other one is basically dead, though. 
It's probably me if I'm, I'm yeah, the only I'll, tank on the hill. <clears throat> okay. Those two hobby tanks attacking a Goliath. Oh. I've, I've, I've claimed it. It's heavily damaged, but... Alright, uh, Lycan, there is something coming out of the Ultra Vehicle Factory, which we definitely should defend. Okay. It'll probably take some time before it's done, I assume. I'm really trying to hit this scorp in the tail. Oh no, there's a building. Oh my god, I just went into a building construction site. Alright. That gave him some damage, so that's Scorpo. Right, one Scorp dead. And oh, now I've got hit. another one come in, yay! <laughs> oh, and the Hunter's coming as well for me. Uh, T-1000, yes, it is planned. Oh lord. Oh no. Oh, not a big whip boy. Oh, he's gonna whip me to death. And I've got a scorpion. Yeah, I'm, I'm dead here. Oh! Whew! I've got to turn my, turn my butt around so my front arm is facing. Will there be a campaign? So you've, you've expressed wanting to make one, but if you'll be able to. Yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a question of, I mean, uh, look, if there's interest, definitely. Uh, I, would, I would really love to do it. Right, I'm, I'm just barely alive in this uh, hover tank. Managed yeah. to fight those two scorpions and that hunter off. With the help there of a rocket another, truck. There is another scorpion on the west flank. Yeah, there's two of them. There's one appearing right next to the ultra heavy and another one about to get hit by what I assume is a light. Armored car. Yeah, like in terms of campaign, what I want to do is uh, do it. A oh, Starcraft. My turret's been thrown into a, a, a madness. <laughs> What's it doing? <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, oh, there you go. There's, there's a bug for you. You stand on a, a specific point on top of the hover tank's turret, and it will just start spinning in a 90 degree angle without any control. Wait, well, sorry? Say again? I just hit that scorpion tail kill. Uh, the hover tank, if you stand on the turret in a, in a specific spot, the, you lose control of the, of the turret as a, as a, as a player. Like, what? Like, th this commander's going to do it for me now. Like, I'm not moving the turret. I don't know if you can hear me. If you could jump back on where he stood. He's done it. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Oh, come on. Stop fucking moving. There. There you go. Oh, yeah, because it tra traces the player in front of it. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. You don't lose control, but it's because it, it does a ray cast and it detects a player in front of you. There's a big siege boy. Yeah, I'm, I'm in control of it. The so time to push back. Let us make our way. In that direction, what's in that direction? Nothing except for... I wasn't aiming at the soldier, I wasn't even touching the mouse. It, the turret was rotating on his own. Yeah, it's, it's because it detects him and it tries to aim at that Tries position. to aim at, it, at that position, yeah. So it, well, he's moving the... Um the field of view technically of the of the tank what you can see so it's kind of like pushing yeah precisely yeah rock launcher really needs to push back Shit, I think I killed someone. Sorry. How you doing, James? Welcome. I'm trying to... Alright. Can someone help that rocket launcher? Because it's getting attacked by a crab. Oh, yeah. yeah I see it. Uh, 
can barely see where those guys are. There. You was in it earlier during the interview phase. Got any questions, James? That you 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 would like to ask? Oh god, that's Behemoth shooting me. And something blew up behind me. Oof. Oh, we got a railgun tank passing by here. And there are a lot of scorpions. I mean, for the complaints about starting position, I don't think they're doing bad at all. They're doing good now. They're doing very good. I mean, I, I actually might call it that this will be an alien win. We really need to like utilize on the units we have when we start pushing back because otherwise we are not going to get anywhere. Uh, yes, the, there is a plan for a campaign. Um, yeah, th there's a plan for a campaign, but it's later down the line. Any plans for a bigger dev team to get involved? Uh, you said maybe maybe one, like, but you don't want a big team. You you'd like to have um, yeah, yeah hands on. I, 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 yeah, the, the problem is the bigger team you get, the the the, the less efficient it becomes because there's of course you know a lot of stuff you have to think. And I, I don't know, I just, I just enjoy working with like a very close knit small group of people. I need to get out yeah, there, there actually. Are, there I are, are a to... crap ton of crabs incoming. Yeah, I can see the crab rush going straight for the siege tank actually. Yep. I would be careful because I've got scorpion shooting me across the map. And I'm literally one shot as it is. I'm eliminating them as they come, but. A lot of them. I need to eliminate the. Right, you know what? I'm gonna start pushing against the scorpions because those ones are causing the most problems right now. Uh, what are the mechanics of the eyeball HUD icon? Oh yes, so the uh, it's spotted, isn't it? You've been spotted if you are if you've got the red symbol. Yeah, if it's if it's okay, if if you can see the icon, the icon, then it means you're concealed, right? Concealment means that you won't be detected uh, unless it's like a, a direct line of sight and whatever. I explain it more on the Discord forums. Um, red, it means you have been detected despite being concealed. Is there a form of tracking for the rocket truck's missile? Uh, it, okay, the way it works is when you select the target with it and like fire, then it will f go to that position. Provided, okay, someone just hit me with a rail gun tank. Um, it will go to that position and, uh, and hit it, basically taking the velocity and this kind of stuff into account. So it won't actually follow the target and try and hit it. Yeah. You guys, we really need to push back against these. We're all only def in defense. We've got so many railgun tanks and we need to start pushing, man. Because we're just letting the aliens build up more and more. Uh... Uh, humans getting base defenses anytime soon. It feels like what the aliens can base them by, uh, base them by the thousands. All right, okay, yeah. Well, the human bases are defenseless. Um, well, the, the thing is that the, the human bases have a ton of health. The alien bases don't. The aliens are quite easily killed. Um, you know, so, so railgun tank will take down one of those turrets one hit, whereas. Uh, you know, to take down, for example, the HQ and whatever, it takes a lot, right? The dub dubstep disco ball tank. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh, there's a massive... Uh, there's a, a push to the far south. Goliath and three scorpions. Yeah, you know, I think we're going to have to start pushing relevant of... Uh... 
Uh, do I turn to meet this? I'm in a siege tank as well, so... Uh, they got uh, There's railguns in the defence line, so the railgun should be able to handle the Goliath. and The Scorpion should take a few shots from them as well. There's another rail tank going there, so I think I'm going to slowly make my way towards the aliens and try and hit their base. Yeah, the thing is, right now we're, we're only in defence. We're just going to get slaughtered slowly. Yeah, there's a bunch of crabs coming. Yeah, I've got crabs on my uh, on my thing. I... Alright. We just need to start pushing, man, because, like, right now, we're only in defense. Oh, yes, I'm about to be crabbed. Yep, I'm crabbed. There's a crab on my undercarriage. <laughs> There's a buggy trying to kill him off, so... And now there's a crab on my, my top end. Yeah, at this point, it's almost easier to switch to turn your lights on, man. It's easier than night vision. I need to improve night vision. It's pretty crap. Okay, they have a ton of spawning cysts here. That's what I'm talking about. We really need to start pushing them. Because they are just utilizing spawning cysts. Yeah. My right, crap's gone straight past me. Oh, Lord. This is where the uh, frame rate starts to go, nope. i <laughs> just seen what's coming. Yeah. They use that cliff line as well for scorpions. Yeah, I really need help here. Like, why are we staying back, honestly? Really need a push. I gotta. If we don't attack, we're going to lose. We got two Goliaths on, on, coming up to you. Oh, one now. That. No worries, man. Uh, you have the altar. I think there will be some sort of a stronghold out. So the outpost um, building. What are you going to be using that for? The outpost building should be used literally as it sounds, like uh, to be essentially this long-range outpost. Is it? it would it add to expansion? Can, okay. Okay. Ooh, there is a glass behind me. Give me a sec, 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 give me a sec. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Alright, there we go. It's telling me to target a shrimp for some reason. Hey guys, siege tank is dead. I'm nailing their um, their spawners in the siege tank now. I think I pretty much popped most of them. Yeah, I think all their all their forward spawners are dead now. <clears throat> we really need to push for their uh, for their spawning. Spawning things. So yeah, the outpost. It'll be a expansion outpost. Yeah, basically. Like th think think the um, bunkers, but you have to build them yourself. Yeah. If someone really damages the siege tank with the rockets, there's a scorpion passing fire. straight past me, and I can't I can't aim it. <laughs> oh god. Okay, he's dead. Oh, that's not good. Oh, the scorpion's on me. Siege tank almost down. Yeah, the scorpion's on me. Come on, get in front of my cannon. Go on. I dare you. I think I'm going to be dead now. I've been swarmed. Yeah, I've been absolutely swarmed. I'm dead. 
Yeah, we're gonna lose this at this rate, I think. Because there's Goliaths in our base. Uh, also, what about a support class? Uh, like the... Oh, like the jaw, uh, the gorge from that... Uh, I think we've already spoke about that, haven't we? The gorge from Natural Selection 2. Uh, what about it? Uh, is there going to be a su any uh, any support classes? Uh, yeah, so for, for the aliens, yeah, there probably should be some, some for healing. I mean, I'm going to be revisiting these units, you know, progressively. The most important thing is to get, like, everything working properly right now. Yeah. I want to go, like, uh, with voting afterwards as well. You know, as in, like, vote for what content you'd like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay, yeah. I would agree, of course. I mean, you know, out of, not out of anything, but obviously out of, like, some... Yeah, uh, yeah. ...streamlined options. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Will there be a way to make a line... Okay, yes, yeah, so I know, I know what this question is. So will there be able to make a, a line of nodes to save from time... Like having to put them down one after each other. Yes, 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 definitely. So you'll be able to say like uh, an end node, and it will build. Or like you'll be able to ideally, you'll be able to see exactly where a chain of nodes will be built, and you have to pay for it at once, of course. Or maybe it doesn't doesn't have to be at once. I'll see. I'll see how how it works out. Hmm. I did. I did see someone earlier um, say about. Um, are the humans meant to be? Is it macro heavy, and the um, the aliens are meant to be micro heavy? I think that's the way he worded it. Yeah, basically, yeah. The aliens are meant to have like a lot of um, a lot of units. It's very micro heavy from the commander point of view. Then the the, the macro heavy stuff is going to be from the human point of view. Yeah, pretty much. Which is good. It's it's nice to see different play styles for you know different factions. You haven't got. You know the same overall broadness that like you would have in other RTSs. Yeah. But with, with the with the aliens, I mean, you know, time will tell, right? Once we'll see how. Oh. Sorry, we'll see how it goes with um, the the queen and yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, the queen will change everything up instantly because you you'd have your mobile. You know your your, your mobile. You, if your queen gets sniped, go into another nest. Um, that's game over then, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, in in the nest, she should be uh, in quotations invulnerable, in mm -hmm. the sense that the uh, she should only actually um, take damage through the nest. You know, the nest has to be destroyed along with her in it. But as soon as she's out in the open, obviously, you know, she can she can take damage and stuff by herself. Uh, instead of having an engineer, could you not? So uh, we briefly spoke about uh, engineer repair pad and, and and things like that, didn't we? And uh, it was settled to engineer for repairing vehicles, and then the commander having like an an a, an ability to turn on like active repair for buildings, which would cost resources. But then they also have a passive repair ability as well. Yeah, yeah that's that's the idea. That's that's the way I want to do it. So basically, uh, buildings would automatically repair. Um, but oh, I, th I thought my rockets would have actually went to the ground and not continue into orbit. <laughs> oh well. Oh man, they have so much shit. Oh well. Uh, yeah. Oh, they they rebuilt those spawners. I I, I pretty much took out. Oh, I see a scorpion though. I see a little hue from his yeah, like, tail. Once the aliens get their eco going, there's no stopping them. Yeah, there are so many questions, guys. I do apologize if I don't get to them all. Um, I, I am trying to skim through them and picking out the ones that have um, either not been asked or um, ones that may not have been covered since uh, uh, Michael's stream, uh, Dead Wizard.
Oh, someone did say earlier, the normal troop transport, the one that you're probably not planning on using. Um, someone did say, uh, what about repurposing it into like an engineer's vehicle? So they could take control of it and then maybe utilize it to help repair vehicles and an enhanced rate. Oh, yeah. Yeah, actually, why not? I mean, you know, I'd probably expect a bit of a different design than that one. Because that one looks more like a troop carrier. Mm. You know, so I'd probably go for a different design if I was going for like a repair vehicle. Oh, Lord, there's a crab coming up to me. Oh, Lordy. I mean, we're still holding our own. But. Yeah, they took down our harvesters. It's so hard to see where. <laughs> oh. Yeah, this, this map is very tough to play on. Yeah, so rally points and uh, waypoints. Yeah, they'll be in. Oh, that's a lot of crabs coming my way, and I'm just driving straight into them looking at chat. Yeah, I, I think I think it's GG at this point. Oh, and have... again, I'm about to get hit by a, 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 a stealth roly-poly that I did not see. <laughs> Oh you, my you, you god. Got, you got to really watch the map. It's, it's been there for quite some time. Oh, no. I'm going to get roly polyed again in a railgun tank. Man. Oh, I've actually been flipped as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he died there. Uh, good night, Highlander. Yes. I don't think I've had a winning game tonight, actually. Yeah, we've currently lost every game. It's like chat's out to get us today. Though, to be fair, we should have pushed those aliens earlier. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we took long to find them as well, which didn't help. Like, we wasn't able to harass their shrimps straight off the but gate. Yeah. We... yeah, but when we did find them. We could have, we could have taken them. Mm. Oh well. Oh, my cat's back in the window again. Wow, what is your frame rate like? Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah, it's like it's about ten frames now. And oh, I think. 24. Yeah, the, it's probably the nodes plus crabs. Yeah, the crab rush from the south. This is when you start using heavies. Yeah, I don't know why I picked the marksman. I thought I'd be good at one shot and crabs, but then I realized the FPS and decided actually, okay. <laughs> yeah, 10, 10 FPS is just no. There's a harvester being built in the ultra heavy. We've got no harvesters. Oh, we got one. Oh. Right, there was a few questions I've not actually said about in the Discord. Just give me a second. Uh, okay, so th these are questions for you. Um, what games, movies influenced you into making the game, uh, making this, and uh, how it is today? Uh, how is today? Like, um, any any games that have directly influenced you, like today's type of games and prior? I think that's what oh, okay. I think it was meant in Discord. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, I mentioned before, of course, um, um, you know, the, the, the old games that influenced this game a lot, or like influenced me in general, was of course Dune 2, StarCraft, Tiberian Sun, um, you know. then in terms of like movies and these kind of influences, then you know, Predator. I really love Predator. Aliens as well. Mm -hmm. um, I liked Alien, but Aliens was better in my opinion. But anyway, yeah, I'm the same. Yeah, Alien is good because it's the classic, but Aliens it it just had that more like instead of a single alien, it was like a whole threat of a hive. Yeah, exactly. And uh, like modern, 
influences if I was if I was to think about modern ones. Dune, the modern one, actually, like the, the film, it actually did influence some of the architectural decisions on some of the buildings. You can see it in the bottom parts of the buildings. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a style which really fits well into um, into the ground and this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I can see that, yeah. Yeah, because in June, you'd have to build on concrete, or, or it, the, the builders just wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't be able to be built. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, I mean visually speaking. Oh, the visual speaking. speaking, okay. Like, if you look at the, the human buildings, they kind of have these um, pylons that kind of, like, extend out to the sides all around each building. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's just actually, because visually, it just fits really well into the terrain. Mm-hmm. So I'm just trying to snipe this. And how was you able to motivate yourself to develop uh, mostly the game on your own? Okay, well, I mean, I, I, I'd say that's one of the most difficult difficult things because staying motivated, I mean, in general, right, in for anything, for a long time, is very difficult to do. Oh, I'm um, just going to get crushed here. I, I, I can't I can hardly aim. <laughs> Look at the scorpion trying to track him. I really can't. There have been a multitude of times where I thought, like, oh, just, you know, almost had enough, so to, so to speak, right? Yeah. But um, uh, staying motivated... I think the important thing is in a small team, it's advantageous when you can just like jump from one thing to the next. Mm -hmm. You know, um, in the sense, you know, I was doing some units. Oh, okay, so they destroyed our building here. Um, uh, but yeah, like you know, doing the buildings placement, for example, that was a bit of a painful task. Um, and then of course I could jump onto doing some of the units, so those I enjoy doing the most, right? Doing units, it's the most enjoyable task. Uh, you know, sometimes sound design and all this kind of stuff. So when you get like tired of one thing, you can at least jump onto something else, at least for yeah. the time being. So that really helps with motivation. Um, sorry, well, you, do, you, you, you don't want to burn me. yourself up, and uh, you, you know, you burn yourself out, and then you you, you kind of want to make it as much as enjoyable as you you could possibly can. Yeah, precisely. My god. <laughs> I'm subpar 10 FPS at the minute. And I'm just like, uh, yeah, shoot my rockets. <laughs> uh, right, another question you had as well was What was your prior experience of game development? Um, and what uh, was you a game development all along, or did you have other jobs beforehand? Well, uh, so while I was studying in uh, uh, in university, I had um, uh, you know I worked in uh, warehouse, for example, for computer for computer parts. Um, but that was while I was a, a uh, uh, you know while I was still a student studying. But otherwise, uh, right after that, I actually applied for Beam Interactive, and uh, was accepted. Mm -hmm. um, so I went straight out of university to Beam Interactive. And uh, I was in Bohemian Interactive from 2009 till 2020. Give me a second, it's just... I got a bit of a freeze on my end. All good? Yeah, yeah it was just freeing up memory. Alright, that's at least one hunter down. I'm now five to six frames per second. <laughs> Oh, you'll manage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just walking in in the middle of the field, just like, ah, oh, there's a scorpion there, trying to aim at him for ages. Uh, right. He also asked, uh, how did you come up with the idea of the game, and and when did that happen? I remember you saying this quite long, quite a long time ago. Yeah. So, so, so actually, the game, it was a concept I wanted to do since. Uh, like as an actual concept since 2008 that was when I actually started making it in the Doom 3 engine um, but otherwise it's something I've wanted to do for like I don't know ever since playing Dune 2 I've wanted like an FPS version of it you know yeah um, so it's, it's it's a very long time it's only now that it actually makes sense with the technology to be able to actually do it um, this is GG by the way <laughs> I mean, yeah it's GG barracks, barracks are just about dead and oh, there was still the HQ for a little while longer. There's the barracks. 
No, just the HQ. SMGs, come on guys, we can do this. I just spawned in as he got chomped on by a uh, yeah. by a hunter. I got wow. one frame per second just then as well. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I, I spawned in, in the HQ and I just got bitch slapped by a hunter. Um. Alright, uh, back to the question. Well, I forgot the question again. I got distracted by the hunter. Oh my god, there's a hunter on my face. Actually, on my face. <laughs> it's, 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 we're just about the end of, of the, of the yeah. fight anyway, so... The, the HQ's dead now, I think. I'll go into uh, free cam now, I believe. No more spawnable structures for infantry, right? Um, yeah, it was about... Uh, how did you come up with the idea in the game, and when when did it happen? Oh, yes. Right. So, uh, you know, I'm just going to charge the enemy, and then I'll answer that question. I will remember it this time. Seeing shrimp amongst the attackers. Why not send them all in? I can actually see the shrimp there as well. Going across the floor. I, 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 I want to kill the shrimp now. That's my priority. No. Dead. There we go. GG. Yeah, uh, so, I mean, it, I, I wanted to do it since, like, you know, playing Dune 2 and all this, and, you know, wanted to do, like, an FPS version of it. Um, but otherwise, uh, I actually started doing it in 2008, and that was uh, on the Doom 3 engine, but of course, yeah, I was way inexperienced. I've got the whole history of it written down in um, Discord, in case anyone's interested. Um, but yeah, basically, Pardon me. Uh, started doing it, made the canyons of Bolterus. That was the one, the, fir the first location I did. And Bolterus is the original planet name. Um, but there was additional planets. It was a completely different, it was a bit of a different concept, but Bolterus was one thing. Um, I kind of abandoned it because I found out that, yeah, that that the uh, it's just not possible to, to do this kind of a massive game mm. with um, uh, on the Doom 3 engine at the time. So. Actually, what can we say? I just want to have a look. Okay, there's a few more buildings left. Fair enough. Such a heavy factory okay. finishing construction as well. <laughs> yeah, Silas make a nice explosion. That's what all buildings are going to look like afterwards. It's just that was my first testing one. Um, and yeah, so 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 I abandoned the concept at the time, and then I revisited it in 2018. I thought, you know, now's the time. It was not because it's 10 years later, but it just worked out that way. And I started doing it, put together the concept a little bit, a little bit differently, a little bit better, I would say, like more realistic. And uh, yeah, started in 2018 and just was doing it free time. And then in 2020, um, by chance, showed it to Marek Spaniel, the CEO of Beam Interactive. <laughs> um, so I was still an employee at the time. And uh, he really liked it. And basically we kind of... Um, Agreed, it kind of made sense to pilot it through. Oh, it's a, I thought I had something on my screen that's just one of the rocks slipped from the side. Anyway, yeah. Um, and yeah, then so we decided to pilot it through the Behemoth Incubator program. Yeah. And, uh, wait, how, how are you still alive? Oh, this is one refinery. Okay, fair enough. And, uh, and yeah, and then, then, it, then I went full time on it in uh, 2020. Yeah, and I've been continuing full time till now and I will continue full time until the game is finished basically and you know and as long as it makes sense so mm. even after early access if people still like enjoy it you know and it, it still makes some revenue like I'll be all honest you know it has to make revenue to be able to pay for itself so yeah. as long as it yeah. pays for itself then uh, yeah I'll, 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 I'll happily keep doing this content this is one of the I'll put it this way right for some reason I've just got this thing for deserts I don't know why I've just found it out about myself basically because um I grew up in Australia, but I was born in the Czech Republic. But uh, I really like the first game I worked on: Army Two Operation Arrowhead, Afghanistan, basically desert. Um, next game I worked on: Carry Command Guy Mission. It had, of course, a bunch of different, um, different, uh, um, different locations and this kind of stuff. But my favorite ones were the desert ones. Uh, then, then of course, he, you know, take on Mars. I mean, <laughs> that's one giant desert, right? Yeah. It's uh, and then then after that, there was ships and submarines kind of thing. It was like a prototype in internal. It was never released, never finished. Um, sorry, uh, Lucy. 
the Project Lucy, that was a bit different. That was that was completely different. But then the little ships and submarines, that was a kind of a cancel thing. That wasn't a desert, that was ocean, so I compensated. There you go. Um, and then uh, after that, worked on Reforger for a time. And yeah, and then in while working on Reforger, I actually was doing this in my free time. And so then I moved to do this full time. So, so yeah, that's the story of it basically. And this is just a desert, <laughs> a living desert, <laughs> pretty much. But then I, I did see people in the chat asking about fauna and um, if you can have like any any different biomes and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there will be different biomes. There will most definitely be different biomes. Oh, look at that. Centauri. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to Centauri because we, the commander is my balls. Yeah, so 100%. <laughs> you I'm can't always, go wrong. <laughs> I always pick Centauri. Um, even though I, 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 I swear 80% of the time they end up losing because they're Centauri, not Soul. <laughs> and everyone True. seems to favorite Soul for some reason. But okay. so, I, I don't know. We've got a lot of Centauri, so we might be right. Look, we I might mean, be right. Look, look, we can't lose. We've got my balls as the commander. Yeah. So. yeah. He's got to live up to the name now. Uh, I'm just going to finish off these questions I had from uh, GG. Um, uh, what challenges was you facing doing all the work on your own? Oh god, I've just drove straight into a Baltarian field. Um, and uh, uh, what tools and technologies did you have to learn and work with to make this game happen? Okay, so I was not familiar with Unity basically at all previously to doing this project. So, learnt Unity um, from scratch, essentially. But I was familiar with C-sharp to a degree, so I had to improve my skills in C-sharp, but, uh, uh, but yeah. I, to be honest, the way I use C-sharp is more like C. So, um, you know, I don't, like, sorting lists and all this kind of stuff, and to array, I avoid that because it's allocation. You know, avoid allocations as much as you can with C-sharp. Yeah. Um, so I had to learn that. Tools. Um... I actually learned most of the stuff I know on Take On Mars. So the vehicles, they're all physics driven that I that I did completely in Take On Mars. Mm -hmm. So actually in Take On Mars I had the, the Ma manned mobile laboratory, which was uh, for example, it was it was a big vehicle which you could walk inside um, and all this kind of stuff. While driving, you know, it was all of course physics based. Um, apart from that, other programs, I mean Photoshop, I knew it Maya for models, I already knew that. Um, rigging, already knew that. Animation, knew that. Sound, already did that. Music, I did two tracks in uh, Take On Mars, but very basic ones, of course. Like for the main menu, that, that's my one, and then there's another one somewhere in there. But uh, uh, but otherwise, it's, um, uh, uh, you know, I, I, no, way I would, no way I would have enough skill to do the music, for example, that Scott Buckley does. Yeah. So. Take on Mars, yes, it does bring memories for me as well, of course. It's a project which I worked on for what, five, six, or seven years, I forget now. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, so, uh, lost my train of thought. It will come back to me. Oh, yes, skill sets and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, you know, already project management with, uh, like, you know, budgeting and all this kind of stuff, um, with, uh, uh, with Take on Mars. So, I, I mean, I went into this project with practically all of the skills I needed for it. I just had to learn the, the, the tools and the like the you know unity and this kind of stuff. But the things which I did run into which were particularly problematic, I mean I, d I already did like multiplayer synchronization and this kind of stuff before. Mm -hmm. But I didn't write the absolute core systems of it, right? Uh, uh, of course, I mean I'm not gonna go and write my own peer to peer system. That's just insane, right? That's just it's like writing your own engine. Yeah sure you can do it, but do you wanna if you want to compete with Unity and this kind of stuff? you're insane to write your own engine unless you're doing like something like uh, uh, simpler you know but anyway um, so the biggest challenge I ran it ran into was of course like the multiplayer I was I was relatively used to that I wanted to choose an approach which had a minimal amount of uh, data sent over the uh, over the net yeah over, over the network so I, I did it kind of like the old school method, like I did, like I had in Take on Mars, where you would have each unit kind of ticks itself, um, sends at five hertz. Um, I can change that at any time I need to, um, but yeah, basically it sends it sends it at five hertz, right? So five times per second. Um, to compare that in Counter Strike, you for example have 
uh, uh, you know, servers which tick at 60 at least, usually. Uh, uh, you know, you even have 120 tick servers. That's, all, yeah. that's in Counter-Strike 2 now as well. Um, so I don't have these problems, but I don't need to rewind time, you know. Uh, I do client-side hit detection with uh, sanity checks. Um, if I'm going into like the, the technical things, but yeah, so multiplayer wasn't that like for me because I was I knew exactly what I was going into and what I needed to do. So multiplayer wasn't that difficult. It took a long time to do, of course, right? But it wasn't that difficult to do. And of course, I'm utilizing Steamworks, right? Which handles, of course, the whole the whole back end of getting a packet from point A to point B, basically. You know, um, I'm usually using um, Steamworks.net. Um, I for, I forget the. The, the author it was Riley. I forget. I, I don't want to lie. I don't, don't want to. Can't recall the name. Doesn't matter. Uh, and apart from that, in fact, the biggest issue was the building placement. That was by far the most difficult thing I had to actually uh, do in this project. You know, like even the aliens. I actually had the aliens written in one afternoon, uh, like a basic controller. Um, where they were able to walk on walls very simply it wasn't perfect but you know I had that in yeah. one afternoon um, physics based of course without doing any traces you know there's no traces done to like ray casts um, uh, it's all based on actual impacts with the with the train and this kind of stuff and uh, within one week I had the aliens done to the point where I had literally I spawned a thousand um, mm -hmm. and they could swarm and it looked absolutely epic and it wasn't it actually ran at Back then, I had 1080 that I ran it on, and it without any aliens in the map, like with, without without any units in the map, it ran at let's say I don't know 100 FPS, yeah, a baseline baseline value, and with 1,000 crabs, it ran at what what 60 FPS. Um, but of course, you know the important thing to remember is these were they were dumb. They had no AI at all. They had no sensors or anything like that. So they had no complexities. There was no fog of war at the time. There was nothing. So it was yeah. literally just a physics controller, which uh, when it was given a target, they would just use the input to try and get to that point. Um, so, you know, so I mean, it would be nice if I could have that, that count, right? But it's just not realistic, quite frankly, you know, even, even just from a network perspective. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the, the buildings by far were the most difficult thing because placing it onto terrain, which is not flat, um, you know, you've got to have I went through various iterations on um, getting it all to work nicely together, and uh, I think it works quite well now. You know, I mean, still there are there are of course issues with, like finding good points to place to place the building, but I think once there's a grid which shows you the points, um, it'll be of course much easier because it'll snap to the nearest point instead of you like, oh, can it go here? Rotate? No, 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 and all that you're looking for it, it'll just snap to the nearest point. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, to a certain to a certain distance, so. That's the way I want to do like the the building construction in the future. But anyway, um, yeah, building construction and getting it to work properly with AI and uh, and all this kind of stuff. Those are the most difficult. Otherwise, ballistics like uh, getting projectiles bouncing and you could see the bullets. In fact, uh, in I showed it on a Wizard's video, like oh, when I was uh, doing an interview with with uh, Wizard, you know, like the dead Wizard. Then um, the bullets you can actually see individual bullets, even from SMGs and everything. And when they when they bounce, they do actually you can see the bullet actually go rotate and all this kind of stuff. That was literally super simple to write because I knew exactly what I needed to do. You know? So, I mean, knowing what to do, you can save obviously you know an infinite amount of time. Yeah, in yeah. It's like a really clever line to say. It's dumb, but you, you get what I mean. You know? Yeah. Uh, I went way overboard answering that question, but I hope I answered it. No, you did, yeah, you, no, you did good on that one. Uh, okay. Uh, what do you love doing when you're not working on the game? Like hobbies, spare time activity? Okay, so uh, so I am more like physically oriented like in, in this regard, so I do like to like you know, go on the bike and all this kind of stuff. I've kind of not done all that, done all that much because of um, uh, you know, a lot of work, so I get home take care of the kids, go outside with them, you know, take, do various games with them, all this kind of stuff. Um, and then, of course, I sit and continue working, quite frankly, till like, late night. Um, but otherwise, I like diving. Um, great in the middle of the Czech Republic, right? But, 
traveling, of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I've been to the US. I've lived in Australia, of course. Uh, you know, various places in Europe, uh, Maldives, Canary Islands, and all this kind of stuff. So we did travel a lot with my wife. Um, I do Krav Maga, for example, to keep myself fit, and uh, and thing. I, I really do enjoy that as well. It's a great, great group of people in that. Um, yeah, so these are some of my, some of my hobbies. Plus, of course, reading like various books. I mean, I, I showed it on um, on Wizard's stream before. But I will show it here again. I have this wonder. I have it here because I've already finished reading it again. I mean, I've read it several times, but I'm going to pull out this special cover. View. It's a very, very lovely book. Yeah. This one. This one in particular. But, um. Yeah. I mean, I have an interest in physics. In like, or, or more specifically, um. Space. Yeah. That keeps me interested to an infinite degree. Sorry for that noise. That's right. No worries. And of course, you know, as, as a dad, you kind of uh, have to deal with this all the time. Ah, you know, uh, yeah, yes. We broke the train. It's like, yeah, no way. <laughs> got to fix it. So, I've got like a couple of things on my table here which I have to glue together. So. So yeah, so, so plenty. I, I do keep myself busy. You know, I'm, I, I, to be honest, I don't actually watch TV almost at all. I rarely watch uh, like things on. Uh, I rarely sit down and watch something by itself. Like I do like to go to the to the movies. You know, watch like Dune. I'm looking forward to Dune too, for example. Um, but yeah, mostly working recently. So I am looking forward to kind of like winding down a little bit over the summer. So I will be gone for some time. Um, I will have my notebook with me to kind of answer questions and all this and work on it a little bit. But yeah, okay. we'll definitely be... Anyway, I answered way too long. Go on. All yours. Yes. Yeah, so, um, what, what, uh, I think there's only one more question left from uh, from GG. And it's this, uh, is the current state of the game close to how you envisioned it? Or will there be major changes in the future? Uh, okay, so... Oh, man, this one. I'd say, of course, there's, there's there, there are a lot of things missing. I mean, there's no air units right now, right? So those those need to be added. Oh, we found both bases. Cool. We're not. Yeah, I'm control. being targeted by a scorpion though, which is quite early early game scorpion and a bunch of hunters chasing me. <laughs> oh Ouch. no. Uh, so, so I mean, the game is uh, definitely not far off from the way I imagine it to be. Um, but I mean, quite frankly, I. And after it being released and the interest shown in it, there's a lot that I will probably be changing just to make the game more fun for you guys, you know? So, uh, I mean, the unit count, I didn't expect this, like, these unit counts. You know, I mean, of course, that's not that different from the game itself, right? It just means a high, a high unit count, right? But it does influence the game gameplay somewhat. Um... Yeah, I, I, I've, I think I've, I've kept it quite close to my original vision um, okay. of, of like the or the vision of 2018, right? Mm. Not the original original. That's large, you know. But things have changed along the way. You know, I mean, the original designs of the aliens was a bit different. Um, yeah, I might, I'm... Well say, I, I might as well say what what they actually were meant to look like. So, so the original vision of the aliens was they were meant to actually be very much related to the crystals. Um, because this is, of course, completely different to, to the law kind of changed um, uh, throughout. Because I thought maybe crystal aliens would be a bit, bit weird and whatnot. So, uh, oh yeah, no, no worries, man. Candyman, thanks, thanks for stopping by. It was fun to play with you. Enjoy, and uh, bon appetit for your dinner. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so with the aliens, they were actually meant to have like crystals on their back, and, like not look like bugs like that. They were meant to be like very different in the way they 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 look. And in fact, the the alien bases were meant to kind of like infect the area, but have like during the day they'd be kind of like dormant to a degree, and then during the night these crystals would extend from the walls, which would be of course deadly if you like will damage you if you kind of like you know hit them and spike yourself on them and stuff. So mm. it, was, it was very it was meant to be a very different design to the uh, to the uh, thing. So the aliens were meant to work in a very different way. But then it's that's the thing. It's like you have a, an initial idea, and uh, uh, then you actually start implementing it. 
you know and you think oh you know it would be better if the, the aliens were kind of more biotic rather than this strange thing um because of course both the i think both approaches are interesting but yeah definitely the, i think the biotic one is kind of more relatable to a degree yeah yeah okay that covers all of his questions <laughs> um yeah, actually, really good questions. Glad to cover those actually, because there's quite a lot in there. That was um, stuff that I haven't actually been asked today, like about you mainly, um, not just the game. Um, just gonna stop as the buggy quickly. Uh, what play styles do you envision when you think of humans and aliens? Um, okay, so so for the aliens, I mean, they're very obviously expansionist, right? They need a mm -hmm infect the, the area so to speak yeah um whereas humans they kind of obviously kind of build more discrete bases they do spread but not as much as the aliens you know those kind of like the play styles i intended and of course i mean very clearly aliens are meant to swarm right uh, uh sorry give me a second i'm just looking if that's what is that oh it's a bunch of riflemen okay i thought it was an alien structure uh, yes, yeah, so obviously the um, you know the aliens are meant to swarm with many units, whereas the humans kind of should have more like less, but more quality units. You know, ranged of course, so to speak. So the play styles, of course, in this sense, they should they should vary, differ quite quite drastically in, mm. in this regard. Okay, I, well that's all my my questions from the Discord itself that I've had given to me. Um... Pop limit, we've covered that. Uh, original cap units. Uh, beta branch. The main. Oh, yeah, about the main branch. I think we covered that. It was the end of the week. You, you're hoping to get a patch in for yeah, the, I do. I do, for the yeah. main game, yeah. Um, a $5 from Austin. Thank you, Austin. Uh, could we possibly get the the original aliens as an update or DLC down the road after 1.0? Oh, you mean like the the, the like the crystal based ones? I I, I kind of assume so, but just to, yeah. just to clarify, I, I would assume it would be the the crystalline aliens. Oh, uh, I mean it's it's a it's a, it's a possibility. I mean I do have like ideas of where I want to go with the game. Provided you know it, it, it still makes sense after uh, after one point not and whatnot. Obviously the campaign, you know, or more specifically the three campaigns is what I want to do. Um, but like these crystal based aliens, I think I'm not sure it would really fit in into this anymore. It could okay, it could fit in. It could fit in differently. Okay, I don't want to promise, but it's definitely possible. Uh, and others are asking about a new faction. So someone brought up Protoss. So, I mean, yeah, I thought people would come up with that one. Yeah. What would you think about having a another faction that maybe wasn't human, nor was it uh, like an intelligent, like you know, like an advanced intelligence? Even well, it could be anything really. It could be alien. It could be uh, AI. Or may uh, what I thought myself was maybe there are intelligent aliens out there and they've sent almost like a drone ship, which is like an AI based ship to mine the Bolterium itself. It's like it's located the Bolterium and it's it's come to like start you know, ripping the ground up to get to it and it's landed on the planet and it's it's spewing out like AI like all sorts. Uh, Thunderbird is saying rogue AI of a harvester that got angry. <laughs> 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 Start killing everybody, run them over. A yeah. massive explosion oh, wow. just happened. What was that? Yeah. That was a harvester uh, getting killed. No no no, or? no, 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 no. That was a silo. Looks like they're under heavy attack from the aliens. Oh god, that means we're next. Yeah, and if we don't push the aliens, yeah, yeah I've, I've been around there. I'm, I'm gonna. Um, yeah. Oh, is that you? Oh, dude, 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 I'm right behind you. Oh, in, in the quads? Heavy quads? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's me. Like, yeah. I guess we'll push in that direction. Yeah, they got a ton of scorpions over there. They probably heard us yeah. now, and they're like, quick, intercept these two, they're going to get us. 
Yeah, well, they're not going to catch up to us <laughs> in Scorpions. Yeah, true. But yeah, like for, for a third faction, like uh, an alien faction, like Protoss, something like that. Uh, uh, either Protoss or AI. I mean, I do like that idea. Um, but it needs to make sense in the law. There is, of course, you can always expand the law. So, mm -hmm. uh, but definitely, you know, sometime after one point not. Yeah. Because the the current aliens are native to Bolterus. but are they? Exactly. Because there, there are other other like there's moons and other planets in the solar system. Have the do you uh, in the law as the aliens actually have expanded to the other other like moons and such, or or are they just localized to Bolterus? Uh, no, they're localized to Bolterus. Okay. <laughs> okay. So rogue AI harvesters, I got angry and attempted to harvest Protoss. Oh, uh, this is going to be a suicide mission, but I we'll do see. agree. See, I see what agree. happens. I did. I did run into their defenses. They are defending the resource sites. I do know that for sure. Uh, Should probably eliminate that. The hive spire. Yes. There's also another one being built to my left, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm getting that one. So watch for aliens. Alright, they're incoming. I definitely get rid of them, these things first, because these are going to give us a really nasty time. Alright, one's gone already. Can you hit with this one? Alright, done. Oh! oh Alright, abort the mission, abort the mission, abort the mission, abort the mission. Oh no! Get the hell out of there. I'm almost dead already. I am, I'm literally dead. Okay. Oh no! Just when I see the behemoth and then the the scorpion, I was like, "Yeah, okay." Well, that that was a that was a nice journey. It was a nice little yeah. You you said it was a suicide mission. I have to agree. I think we got our first rail tank out. Yeah, it's rail tank. I'm actually wondering where. How many players? We've got loads of players. I just have no idea where they are. <laughs> uh... You reckon we can actually win this one? Oh, I don't know. If we if we let the hu the other human faction get mauled by the aliens, we might stand a chance. But it depends how quickly we progress into the heavier tanks and how quickly we can produce them. Wait, then again, I realize you know. Oh, it's my commander. balls. Yeah, it's my balls. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Balls will do fine. <laughs> the way I balls said that. Lose. <laughs> uh, let's see. Anything else? Uh... Maybe no to space ninjas, but it would be cool to have uh, an intelligent alien. Multi con, yeah, yeah, multi consciousness, not just a single hive. Uh, what else? Oh, they just talk about aliens. Yeah. Aliens versus Terminators versus Predators versus Marines. <laughs> the ultimate showdown. You made it back as well, didn't you? I could, uh, you're coming up here with a heavy quad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's half damaged, and I think it would be a waste to just let it die there, so... Yeah. What are you in? Uh, hover tank. Uh, there is another heavy quad. There's actually a rocket truck being produced. Yeah, I, I can see there's a, there's a railgun tank behind you, but I'm pretty sure it's... it's by it, by yeah, it. it's, it's human, human control, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Story idea. The bugs win the war, the humans leave but decide to return, but the bugs had a hit hit a queen in their ship. Oh, this sounds a lot like alien. <laughs> hit a queen in their ship. And then uh on the trip back to Earth. It'll be it'll, this is a capital planet, isn't there, for Sol and and, and uh Centauri in the solar system. Sorry, say again. Is there a capital planet for Centauri and Sol in the solar system? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. The, the 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 Centauri have Centaurus, Centaurus, um, yeah, which is the ter a terrestrial planet orbiting Proxima Centauri on it, the nearest star to us. Yeah. Um, and uh, the Sol the, Earth. Uh, yeah, yeah. For, for Sol, it's Earth. Yeah, precisely. Yeah, yeah. 
but they don't have any like localized um everything is on bolterus like the moons because I, I saw i think it was in your your first concept images there were like two planets under centauri control and three under soul and then bolterus was in the middle yeah yeah but they're in like you know various star systems right okay uh, is that crab attacking a silo? It is actually attacking a silo. Oh, it's 800 meters away. Do I go for it? Uh, I suppose. Okay, Mr. Lycan. I'm on my way to your location. You got a rocket truck? Yes. As soon as I said about crab attacking a silo, I'm going to go intercept this crab. The crab has left the silo and gone elsewhere. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> They know. Yeah. They know. They know they're watching your stream. Nah, I'm joking. Oh, we have something which... Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, scratch that. I'm getting that instead. Uh, Trying to figure out what you're actually, looking at there. Oh, no, you jump back in. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll keep this. I'll keep this. So... Pulse oh, the, tank. The, the, the the flying bug. Um, we, we didn't actually scratch onto it, did we? The the possible siege bug for the alien being like a, a low flyer beetle type bug, I suppose. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, like uh, uh, some sort of like artillery bug. I actually intended that for the for the um for the behemoth at one point, but I'll, I'll probably find something else to fill that role. Yeah, they, they should probably get something like not similar to the rocket truck, but you know, something some to match form it. Of artillery. Yeah, yeah. And that leads me on to another question. Um, some uh, some sort of sniper <laughs> sniper bug. I love I love play names. Hentai investigator. Oh God. And writes where where, where Goliath. Goliath. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So you 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 were asking. Uh, some sort of sniper bug. Or sniper crab. Uh, okay, that one I'm not so sure of, because, I mean, you know, a marksman is very specific to, like, you know, mm. rifles and these kinds of things. So, I, I'm, I'm not sure that I'd be, like, putting sniping mechanics, because then you literally are doing, like, a one-to-one -one in the alien yeah. uh, spectrum, so I don't think it really fits the aliens. Um... But for artillery, it kind of does make sense. Like this biotic blob, which it lobs at the enemy base or, like, you know, at the enemy. I would kind of like that. Goliath terminated. That's awesome. Especially with T-1000 saying that. I mean... <laughs> Goliath uh, terminated. I, I thought I shot... Uh, it might have been a behemoth or something, but it ricocheted the round and it went, like... 300 foot in the air, like straight up. You can just see the shell and the, the blue hue of that shell coming back down. Just then. Yeah. I was like, whoa. It was Behemoth. Yeah, it ricocheted off of That's funny. Okay, there's a Goliath in the distance. Okay, yes, we've got to protect is. the rocket trucks. Yeah, there's a Scorpion push. He just got hit yeah, by a railgun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Luckily... Luckily, that uh, behemoth was just out of range for those, because that that uh, rocket launcher was just about to get taken down. Is the Goliath online? <laughs> uh, scorpions on the ridge to my right, shooting me. It's like a oh god, yeah, I better run away from Roly Poly Boy. Uh, I <laughs> got it. When is you... it? That's my fault. Crossfire. Uh, yeah, you got right in front of that rocket. He's dead. Fantastic. We gotta take that scorpion down. The one yeah, on the right ridge. Us. I'll try and brawl him. I only got half HP, but I should yeah, be able to. Yeah, yeah I want. I want to pull back with the rocket launcher a bit. Shoot over yeah. the top of the dunes, just like they're doing. Go behind this one because I don't want to get locked on. Oh, we got a crabbing coming as well. Oh, there's one coming straight around the rear of us. He just disappeared off the sensors, but he's there. I took down one of the crabs that was running through. There's still a Scorpo. There he is, looks his tail. Is that his tail? No, that's just a rock. <laughs> right. Is that his tail? Down. What? Oh, he's right there. Wait. 
Wait, where are you? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That is in... Okay, he oh. took down the other rocket truck. I'm gonna try and brawl with it, but I need to hit it in its tail exactly. Yeah, I'm going to angle the cabin sure. so I get minimum, so I minimize damage. Oh, okay. If I shoot it, shoot him now, you're gonna get hit in the crossfire. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna launch. Don't get hit. Don't get. Hit. Fuck. I am <laughs> so sorry. That's all good. Of course, the rockets hit you. <laughs> oh, I just seen this man. giant missile just smack me, and I was like, oh. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. dead. All good? Right. All right, well, at least uh, the scorpion's down. At least that. I can grab a Rayleigh boy, I think, unless it's already been taken. Oh, there's one actually coming out of spawn. It might or might actually be free. Uh, can you make plasma ricochet with each other? Uh, a bit similar to shell type of ammunition. It would give those holy damn moments when they... Oh, right, when you mean... Um, to expand on you mean if the siege tank has... The ability to hit another siege tank round is that what you meant? Uh, well, I mean, rounds can't hit each other at the moment. Okay. You have to expand on it a bit, Lewis. <laughs> yeah, Clyde in midair. Yeah. I know what you mean. Like, if if the two siege tank rounds like collided, then they would literally detonate midair. But no, they, they haven't got any hit boxes at the moment. Yeah, they, they can't hit each other. I mean, it is possible to do. Um, but, I mean, I think, like, the siege tank shell, like, shells hitting each other are a little bit... would be a little bit weird. But, uh, definitely what is not weird would be the pulse tank, where where the two kind of fields kind of collide. Mm. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. Don't see the pulse tank used enough, actually. It has a very... The, the pulse tank has a very unique... Very unique y aspect use. to it. It's, yeah, it's, it's kind of like an anti-infantry, anti-swarm unit. Yes, precisely. It is. Oh, although it's actually very effective against vehicles and structures as mm. well. Yeah. The range is a problem indeed, but that's the point. It's it, Because it's, it is... If it had a long range, it would be extremely OP. Oh, there's another Goliath coming. And a scorpion. This harvester's like out in the, yeah, it's getting shot already. What's happened to Soul? <laughs> I kinda wonder what's happened to them. They're just they're just being very quiet. <laughs> I mean, I think they're happy that we're um under attack. So they get breathing room. I say this every time we do um, all, all three factions in one in one go. That leave the civil war until later. <laughs> deal with the aliens first. Yeah, the aliens. Just, <laughs> if, if, if you don't deal with them, especially with Galahad, when you play against Galahad, you got to deal with him first. Yeah. Some more questions in chat. Uh... Pulse tank may need to be uh, made cheaper or to get earlier. Earlier, definitely not. I mean, it, it doesn't make much sense. I mean, it is really powerful against vehicles. Um, it has use cases, right? It's 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 not useful in like in uh, open field battle. That's not mm. it's, that's not its intention. It's like imagine that you're charging the enemy. You know, you want to have a a various. Um, Makeup of your of your group, you know. And uh, uh, I guess I'm just gonna send a few rounds down there. And uh, uh, you know, it would be the shotgun, so to speak. You know, a shotgun is very specific use case as well, right? Close quarters. Yeah. Yeah, against swarms. I mean, that's, that's when you use it. That's when it's perfect. Right, just murdered a scorpion. Yeah, rocket trucks are literally like the king of uh, just nailing anything that's slow moving. Yes, very much so. Just snipe that. But, I, but I, I, I think they're relatively fair. Like they're not exactly accurate. And at the same time, um, they're also slow and weak as well. Yeah, I mean they can easily be destroyed. Uh, 
and you know the dubstep tank that one obviously you know, the dubstep disco ball <laughs> that one is also limited in its 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 use base destroyer you know oh what 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 is soul up to i can see a hover tank heading towards our base okay, so that so they're not thing they're, they're letting us do a civil war with the aliens and in the meantime they're starting to pummel us Uh, do you have an approximate timeline for hotkeys, waypoints, and quality of life updates? Uh, yeah, within a month, basically. I will. I do want to focus on it after performance. All right. I think we're gonna have to start pushing assault again because those guys evidently push us. Yeah, I think there's some. Uh, is that? Is either heavy or um. Uh, rail tank there, as heavy as four rockets, the heavy shooting us from across the map. <laughs> yeah, I'm watching where it's coming from, so I can give them a volley. Oh, yeah, over there. Alright, now he's dead. I don't think he survived this. Yeah, he's in. There's no, no way he survived that. Isn't it those missiles landed really short for some reason? Short? Yeah, there was another um, heavy like on that cliff edge over there. I, I swear there was, unless I'm I'm just literally being blind right now. Oh, yeah, there is another four salvo yeah, coming in. I think I nailed that uh, hover tank. Oh, but I better not do this again. <laughs> I drove right in front of you. I was like, hmm, not again. <laughs> Yeah, Sol don't know when to quit. Now we're, now we're diverting all forces towards Sol, which is not a good, good, not a good tactic. So uh, all, all of us are starting to push, push for Sol. Yeah, Philip, uh, the the human factions will be different. Um, yeah, the the Centauri will have their changes uh, done um, at, at, at a certain point. They're meant to be more of a um, less technology. Well. Not so much less technologically advanced, but they've just got... They haven't got, like, the some of the tech that Soul's got, so they'll be a bit more behind. But they're still advanced, because they've got here still, you know? They're not like cavemen. <laughs> well, yeah, I, don't, I don't know if you could call... You, they, they might be cavemen to Soul, but... They, they would be, you know... They, they'd still have up-to-date weaponry. It just won't be as, like... Advanced as like hover tanks and and such, but there will be like their direct, um, like things that they will, there will be things that they share in common, like harvesters, right? Yeah, um, harvesters, uh, light quads, heavy quads, maybe even the light armored car, right? But then they start to kind of like split in um in their in their tech. Mm. But I'll, I'll I'll see I'll see. Still, still a lot to kind of like determine in that regard. Have you had any uh, thoughts of using the old harvester model for anything? I did. I'm just. I don't think it's a very good. Like, uh, it's not. Not. It's unfortunately not too detailed. So that kind of really limits its use. Um, but I have thought about it. Like, if I scaled it down to like make it a small vehicle, then it could be useful for something. But. I'll see. I'm trying to locate if there's any alien structures here. There's literally only a, a what I can assume is a node right there. Definitely using infrared at, at this stage in in Badlands is is the way forward. Things are so yes. much clearer. Yeah, in the distance, definitely. Man, the aliens must be building up right now. Yeah, that's why I'm kind of like inclined to push them. So I'm, I'm gonna have a look. I mean, it might cost me the rail tank, but I'd have a like early. Oh yeah, the scorpions on that ridge. They've just been lit up by me. Yep, 
Yeah, there's a lot. They're, they're, they're building. They're building up there. Yeah. We probably should really push them. Like, we're really pushing Sol right now, but... It's going to be aliens who win again at this rate. I think that Scorpion just got, yeah, absolutely annihilated. Two railgun shots exactly at the same time. Yeah, they've got um, a, quite a few Scorpions just on that ridge. And it looks like one of our hover tanks being mauled by a hunter. <laughs> oh, no. It could be actually yeah. AI. They are AI Scorpions. Barracks, we take that out. So we can't upgrade. I, I think the barracks are down. They have two research facilities for some reason. Oh my god. Yeah. There's a massive swarm just waiting to be sent out. Um, I'm talking like hunters, scorpions, crabs. And they're now pulling away because we've been shooting at them. So they're AI, AI controlled. Alien near base. Oh, there's eco. I can see the alien eco bottom left. On top. Uh, I see him. Yeah, yeah, I see him. There, they're just moving out, moving away from it. Oh, that's my back armor as well. Getting hit by a behemoth. Yeah, so defensive structures will be coming, uh, Zone. They, they will be coming. I need support. Not the hover tank, are you? The truck. Oh, you've got a tank on you. Okay, it's gone. Open. You just took him out, yeah. you got a siege tank mm. literally to your exact right. It's useful. He could, he, he's like right next to the soul. I'd definitely say go. Oh my god, I won't pay attention. I'm now being s smashed by all angles here. Yeah, we really need to take out soul so we can concentrate on the aliens. Oh no, I'm in a Volturian field. Oh, it's the time of lightning. I found the alien eco. The shrimps are heading back now. I've only got a rail tank though. I haven't got anything that can like, you know, quickly deal with them. I've only got like missiles, which would tag them and take them out in one shot, but it's trying to catch them. <laughs> uh, I'm being charged by scouts. Oh. Oh, it doesn't matter, the headquarters are dead anyway. I right, see you. Dead. Okay, one scout's dead, then there's some more. Okay, there's actually a hover tank which hit me. No! Yeah, I got destroyed by this hover tank. There's one hover tank in the north. Far north. Uh, what do you think about infantry weapons and uh, sorry, infantry, infantry weapon teams like in Company of Heroes, machine gun and mortar teams that set up with three or five infantry and the weapon that you need to move? Oh no, no, I, I, I like. I... <laughs> 
it would really complicate the AI, which is something I really want to avoid. You know, mm -hmm. For a tiny team like myself, I definitely want to avoid that. You said about being able to build uh, like in, like emplacements and stuff. Um... Yes, definitely. But those are like fixed emplacements, so not not like um, you know. Yeah. It wouldn't be anything like weapon teams, like in in, in Company of Heroes. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, a crab! Don't know why I felt so surprised about that. Oh, oh my god! Yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> Just two scorpions and a behemoth, and I was already like literally one HP. Uh, when do you aim to introduce dedicated server support? Uh, rage quitting and poor quality hosting is a big issue, personally. Um, so, dedicated servers, I would probably give that I'm just gonna eliminate that bloody radar station so I can finally target the target at the back. Uh, uh, dedicated servers I want to like support within I don't know roughly like I'll, I'll probably most uh, most likely be looking at it after the uh... oh what's it called Jesus Christ are you not <laughs> it's yes thank you completely had a mind Ooh. blank there I didn't realize there's a big CG boy right there Probably taken. Yeah, it's taken. So after the air units come into come into play and and, and the yeah. queen. Precisely. Uh, what unit would you most uh, excited to implement and play with, and what unit do you think uh, will be best received? I think the carpet bomber will be. The most fun to like finish off. I thought you called it the carpet bomber. Oh my god! <laughs> yes, L level. I'm calling it. I'm calling it the carpet bomber, but obviously needs to have a proper name. Is that is that one of the the aircraft the that's in the in the uh, asset uh, map? Is it one of those yes. ones that's going to be used? Yeah. So I kind of I kind of know which one it's going to be. It's going to be that one with the uh, almost like the red uh, force yeah, field yeah, exactly. that drops the bombs out of. Precisely. It's literally a carpet bomber, so... And the Titan, that is classed as a super weapon, so I'd, I'd, I'd gather it'll be added with the ICBM? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, it could come a little bit earlier, hmm. um, but it would have to be... it would have to have a proper counter. Yeah. Yeah, being, being hearing that that screech from a titan that's just come out from its spawning pit and and everyone going uh oh <laughs> yeah precisely so technically it could come out sooner but it needs a it needs a counter to to it the titan yeah the titan yeah so so the uh so like with that i mean I don't have it. I don't have even like begun, and I will have to write a new alien controller for it because the way it works, it's gonna have to work very differently to the existing units, um, like in the way it's controlled, because it won't rotate to the surface and this kind of stuff, right? Mm. At the same time, units will have to be able to like run under it and this kind of stuff. So yeah. So it will probably go against my standard of physics-based units. This one probably will not be physics-based. Is that just a, a, a solo infantryman I just spotted dro just dropping out the sky? It must have been. It's possible. <laughs> just just seen a red like attack this rifle, uh, attack the scout, and then it just disappeared. I was like, wait, what? Well, we're really like, I gotta say, my balls are doing really well. <laughs> there is. There's a there's a random scout shooting me. What? There's, there's a random enemy scout near a rocket launcher. Yeah, it's me. I'm, I'm the rocket launcher. I'm like, what? There, there's... Oh, hop out and just hop out and kill him. There, oh, you scout as well. Yeah, there's there's no there's no one on uh, Sol anymore. I'm I'm confused. He, he is. Wait, what? Oh, he must be. Oh no, he must be poor AI unit, which is just left behind. Uh oh.
He's just finding his way. Yeah, trying to... Oh, I think he's dead now. Poor guy. Imagine that. You get sent out at the beginning of the game. Like, to, you know, scout the area and stuff. Mm. You report back. You're like, alright, Commander. I'm ready to come home. Silence. <laughs> <laughs> there is no home. You come back to the side of a siege tank, you know. Oh, a crab. Oh, please don't. No, Mr. Crab, no. I'm just a lonely boy. Right, okay. Oh, my God, I'm right next to him. Where's he gone? Where'd he go? He's eluding me. Stop it. Right there, on, on the siege tank, there is a crab. It needs to be eliminated. Right. I've dealt with that crab. Uh, what should we expect from a non-physics-based titan, and how would it work? Oh well, it's it's because it's so giant. It's going to like have claws which you just can't knock over, and this kind of stuff. You know, it's it just makes the most sense not to do it physics-based. To clarify, physics-based means when you bump into it, it can move around and this kind of stuff. Because the Titan is so giant, it makes no sense for anything to move it. And uh, the question I want to ask as well, will it have... Uh, I assume it would have some sort of... Well, feet. It would have legs and stuff, so... Or would it be a hover? Like a... Would it, would it be flying? Would it, would it be? Is it able to trample things and like take out buildings? Well, it's, it's, and... it's, it's, a, it's a walking. It's like, a walking creature. Okay. So you don't you don't want that thing trampling your base. <laughs> yeah, precisely. I mean, obviously, it should kind of like uh, avoid trampling. Like that's why that's the thing. I'm gonna like literally have to write AI for the legs, essentially. Hmm. Hunter attacking behind a hunter yeah I see him I don't want to launch those if I launch my missiles it's going to hit someone someone else <laughs> crab. All right, there's another crab here uh, buried in the ground I see him he's coming out now I think he might be dead there you go damaged my vehicle a little bit but it's all good He's there are a lot of uh, uh, just careful. There's there's defensive turrets. Yeah, I'm trying. If I can get like a bead on on just some of the base structures, I can just missile it. <clears throat> oh, I did see someone asking about a hover bike, like <clears throat> some sort of light scout that uh, you can literally build for super cheap, and it, you could put one rifleman on there, and he would just go scouting out instead of having like the buggy do it. Sorry, give me a sec. I'm just under attack here. Oh, siege tank hit me. Ugh. The rocket truck is still alive, at least. But, yeah. Yeah, it's me firing at them now. But, yeah, a, um, <clears throat> like, a ho like a weaponless hover bite that's used purely for scouting. Like, early game scouting and... Uh, someone said, can we have tank turning fixed to the tank instead of its movement direction? What does that mean? There we go. Oh, GG's! <sighs> Someone's called armor piercing high explosive. <laughs> I just realized that. Uh. <laughs> you put GG's my balls in here. No, I said my balls are the best. <laughs> uh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, I think I think um, I think that'll be it for tonight for the for the server host. Um, yeah, I'll just something.
Definitely great fun. And, um, oh yeah, hover bikes. For purely for scouting. No weapons on, on them. Hover bikes. Well, again, hover bikes, you know, that's hover technology. That's Sol. A later, um, you know, later, what's it called? Tech. So, mm. you know, having hover bikes at like tech four, I'm not sure it's really useful. But it can be. It can be. I don't know. It might be more interesting to have like, um, um, oh, I don't know. Oh, I'll have to see. Or dirt bikes or something, maybe. Like, I, I think they're speaking about early game scouting. Like, you know, you have the two buggies that, that, that are uh, spawned. And then yeah, have yeah, yeah, an but... option for a bike that maybe can be produced from the barracks instead of like from the uh, mm. from the light factory. Something a bit more early game. Or um, remove the light quads totally. But well, then. I'm, I mean, that, that's the thing, right? If you, if you think about it, then at the beginning of the game, it still takes some time to get to even the light quad, right? Mm. I mean, you build up the refinery before that's built. Then you build the, the uh, barracks, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I think it, it needs something like something a little different at the beginning. I think it's it's more it's not necessarily about the range itself, which is a problem. But it's but it's the lack of stuff in between, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand what you mean. I understand what you mean. Okay. Uh, right. Any other last questions before we let Martin go? Because it is it is about what half half one in the morning for you at the minute. No, no, it's one twenty five. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's getting it's getting a bit late. <laughs> don't, don't want to keep it up until like three AM, like like some nights. Oh. <laughs> no worries, man. Um, uh, will human infantry also uh, also be slightly different from each other? I.e., one has a flamethrower and the other has a marksman. Oh, you mean between the factions? Well, I mean, marksman versus flamethrower is not very fair. <laughs> but, yeah. But um, uh, I think both will have marksmen, but they might be a bit, like different technologies, right? So Sol might have like more of a uh, will have the marksman that's in the game now, whereas Tori will have one which is more, um, you know, a larger projectile, a normal thing. Someone's asking where I'm from. I, I was actually born in the Czech Republic, but I grew up in Australia. That's the accent. Um, but yeah, like they, they, I do want to do different different um, uh, infantry. Maybe not like even for the basic ones, like a slightly different design. I'll see. I'll see. You know, it's like doing absolutely everything different does mean it increases the you know what's needed for um, like more RAM taken up. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And more time for like a minimal gain. You know, if if you do do like the same scouts. But just one looks different. Mm. I mean, I could do some like some slight variation, right? So, for example, different helmet. Um, yeah, yeah, because they're, technically they're not they're not too dissimilar from each other. It's just that Souls had that extra boom in tech. But at one yeah, point, they would have they would have both had the same technology at one point, and then they would have split off and done their own, gone their own ways in that in that aspect I'd gather because I would assume they would have left from Seoul to go to Centauri and that's when they formed that faction at that point yeah like well it's, it's explained in an intro which I assume few actually watch because it's obviously it's four minutes of exposition right <laughs> I watched it the um, very start and then I've, I've gone everything that's been said now I need to go back and watch it uh, I will be honest with you <laughs> No, no, no. I mean, it's perfectly fine. I mean, to be to be fair, I did use more complicated English there, but um, like so, it's, so it's not something you can just like listen to once and remember. Probably a bit of a error on my part, but doesn't matter. It sounds good, <laughs> but um, uh... oh man, I lost my train of thought again. Uh, talking about different type of infantry units. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, 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 yes. The, 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 like how the factions think. The mm. idea was that like, uh, it wasn't like that they broke off from Sol. It was just a natural evolution where, you know, they uh, uh, explored using teleportation. They got, they managed to get to, um, you know, Proxima Centauri, colonize the planet. Um, but of course, you know, as one species, right? Um, it's just that, and they were, they were, they, you know, and it was, it was in there that an, the an era of peaceful and prosperous existence begins. Or like, 
I forgot the word I used. It doesn't matter. But basically, they, they were, you know, peaceful and prosperous together. Mm-hmm. It was only thanks to the Baltirium and, of course, you know, greed, as is the usual thing, that, that they kind of, like, fell out of favor of each other. Yeah. So that's the idea behind the factions, like, or behind the war between the factions. And logically, that kind of devolves, right? I mean, that's how things go. Yeah, yeah, that they start fighting over the Bolterium because it's a valuable resource. Mm, and you start to get like, especially if, you, if one of them is like, um, uh... <laughs> sorry, I'm just saying. I, I just see my balls, UK. Can you set up a PO box so I can send you a prepaid coffee card, pizza card? Thanks, man. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm I'm losing my train of thought again. I forgot what I was saying. Uh, design differences and evolution from Centaurian soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so basically, like, I mean, you know, they should, they would technically have exactly the uh, the same technology at first, right? Yeah. You know, so the light vehicles and the infantry kind of do make sense. Or the basic infantry makes sense that they would kind of share to a degree, right? Um, but uh, obviously, later, like in the late game, obviously that should kind of like diverge, you know. I mean, of course, it, it still doesn't make all that much sense because, I mean, you know, it's, it's meant to be like multiple battles, right? So why do they have, you know, it, it, that's where you got to go, like the kind of like you got to go abstract a little bit where the RTS, you're playing an RTS, so you got to start off with the low low level things mm-hmm. and progress up to them, right? It almost makes no sense that in every location you start from like square one again, right? But that's just what the game's about, right? RTSs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anything else? Just bef- anything small before we go. Let's have a look. Uh, can we have a scale of max unit settings so potato PCs PCs can host? Oh right, okay. So um... <laughs> thanks, my balls, man. You're, you're, like your uh, <laughs> your nick is fantastic. <laughs> Take care, man. Uh, good night, balls. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was great fun, mate. Oh my god, yeah. So, um, uh. Tell me what I said now. It was something about scale of units versus potato PCs. Um. Oh, can we. Can we have scale of max unit settings? Ah, uh, yeah. So, it means population cap, I think. Um. Just so you can. Um. See, I'm getting tired now as well. Um. <laughs> Scale it back so even the the you know the unit cap would be say two hundred just to help lower NPCs cope with the massive yeah, yeah, yeah. units. Yeah. yeah, yeah, precisely. When like the way I want to do it is, uh, when you're hosting a server, you'll be able to choose like unit cap, um, you know, like uh, uh, small, medium, large, infinite, or something like that. You know, um, and of course with some maybe even like custom custom setup, you'd be able to set exactly the number and all this kind of stuff, but. I, I want to keep like the actual hosting very simple and if you put like a million numbers which can be set up it's like what do you put right so sliders usually kind of like fill that fill that uh, uh fill that role quite well uh what else anything else anything else uh what's the biggest caliber of a cannon available to the centauri and how many times can i shoot at the same time before my game crashes <laughs> So the Centauri, the Centauri, like like I said, right now there's like uh, the the units are more like assault. Centauri units aren't in yet, right? But once they are, the biggest uh, there will be a basically equivalent of the siege tank for the Centauri. It'll be actually slightly larger, or somewhat larger. It will be larger um, than the siege tank, except it won't have like a plasma plasma ball fire but it'll be like mm. big projectiles you know it won't be as accurate that's important but it will be like you know a bombardment so if you have like a lot of them yeah you just flatten the field <laughs> yeah precisely <laughs> this is good big is good <laughs> yes well i mean that, that's that's the fun thing about it right like going realistic in terms of um uh, the size of the vehicles and all this kind of stuff it becomes really epic, you know. You do get this kind of epic feeling of the battles, and that's that's what I was going for. Yeah, you know? yeah. Thick, uh, thick on the big boys, exactly. 
I, I've, I've actually started like in my videos, like I call the railgun like the Rayleigh boys, and and the, uh, I really should stop because it's gonna get out of hand. I'm gonna end up calling something like the the, the, the big siege boy, you know, and, the, and everyone will be like, what what's he talking about? Like, I re I really need to <laughs> cut down me producing meme names for certain vehicles. Um, I did see another question that was quite. When will be the next stream battle? Love to be a part of it. So on Sundays, I host Silica Sundays, uh, which is from half past seven UK onwards. Um, I try and do that every Sunday, so you're more welcome to join. Um, I can't really tell you if I'll be streaming again before that. Um, yeah, it's just it's down to family circumstances, really, whether I'll be able to stream or not. I try to get a video out at least once a day. Um, yeah. I hope that answers your question. So if, if you don't see me beforehand, it'll be Sunday. Sunday, half seven, UK. And anyone can join. I think an important one to note there is the jetpacks one. So on infantry, jetpacks by default, like that, any infantry? No, definitely not. 100% no, because it would be extremely frustrating to play as the uh, aliens. Um, but uh, like a specific unit which has jetpacks, Maybe, yeah, you know, um, and that one should, for example, have a shotgun, you know, mm -hmm. um, so that if if he kind of like increases the range, it's not that useful, you know. It's got it's got it's got to be about the balance because it's although it would be really fun for the player to have like you know a laser gun with with jetpacks that can fly everywhere like uh, I don't know like Superman, it's just not fun for anyone else against that unit, you know. So, no worries for uh, Frost Guard, mate. Um... I mean, we could do another another one like a few months in, um, probably be good. Like maybe either after a few patches or before like a huge content drop or something. Um, if you're up for that, Martin. Like yeah, for one. sure. Yeah, for sure, man. I mean, it could be interesting to do one, for example, around the uh, release time of the air vehicles. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Could uh, like do one before it's released or on the day it's released. Yeah. We can talk about that afterwards. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. No worries. Uh, well, I think that's it. Avatar like mech. Uh, we we went into mech earlier, and I think we we, we came to the conclusion it's probably not best to put mech units in. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, it just it just wouldn't fit the style. Like to be honest, I just because I mean mechs, although they they're cool, they just, it doesn't fit the style. You know, it would be very strange to kind of have like this Humvee driving around the heavy quad, and next to it you got. You know, Ripley drive it like running around with a mech. You know, <laughs> I just had envisions of um, Armored Core then for a second. Yeah, <laughs> that is that's very much like that. Like, there's there's the trailers of Armored Core where there's tanks, Humvees, normal troops, and then there's this giant Japanese looking mech just flying through the air, <laughs> just annihilating everything. You're just like, what? <laughs> you know what? Fuck it. Just Neon Genesis <laughs> Evangelion. You know, just run with Evangelions. <laughs> But uh, some uh, Thunderbird mentioned that uh, I think we all know one models will make battle mechs unreasonably quickly as soon as they can. Yeah, sure, and that, that's that's the, that's the point. That's that's exactly what we want, right? In mods, do whatever you want. You know what's legally possible, of course. You know, I mean, uh, I know there's. Uh, I'm not sure how how Lucas Arts looks at like uh, Star Wars mods today, but I would love a Star Wars mod. You know, I I love Star Wars. I like okay, I loved. I will be very specific. I loved the prequels, and I loved, of course, four, five, six. I did not like the continuation thereafter, any of it, unfortunately. But that's because I'm kind of more old school in that in that regard, you know. Um, and of course, it's I don't want to disrespect anything, but uh, but yeah, you know, it would be really cool to do a Dune, you know. But I yes. mean, we have Dune. We um, have Dune. I'm sure someone will try and try and replicate Dune in in a mod in a mod style. I'm sure someone yeah. will. I would um, I would recommend against it because I would I would imagine that would be flagged, and yeah. uh, then it would have to be taken down. So I'd be careful with that. Mm. The forty k idea though, I I can see where it's coming from. Tyranids, bugs, yeah, the 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 Imperium, or if you want to go down the route of the Imperium plus Space Marines, then well, you know what I would really like. Once this game like does it. it I've, I saw like some recent news from someone someone wrote to me about modding um, 
that because uh, they looked into Unity modding on their own of their own accord, which is great. And apparently, it actually, it's quite easy. So, so or it should not not easy, but it should be possible. So, what I would like to do, if I have like the game completed and stuff, I would like to do like this previous concept as well, which I had in mind, um, which is completely unrelated to like sci-fi stuff. It's actually more like these airships and ships combined, mm. but that's a completely different thing. Yeah. Uh, Frostguard. Uh, thank you, mate. You've, you're officially the first member to the channel. Um, join the Soul Scouts. Um, you, you, you'll you appreciate this, mine. So I've got three tiers of uh, uh, like membership, which is kind of like Twitch subscribers, basically. Um, so I've got the Soul Scouts. I've got the... <laughs> The uh, the Rayleigh boys, which are the uh, your, your, cent your, your Centauri Rayleigh boys, and then I've got the the uh, immortal crabs, which are like the the tier three ones. So um, it's, it's it's all based off silica. But yeah, welcome uh, Frostguard. Thank you very much. Very much appreciate it. <laughs> the oh there it is. I was waiting. I was waiting for the alert. I wonder where it was. <laughs> no, it's 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 good to see you. Lycan's channel take off. It's been quite nice what we're seeing it, you know, grow. Yeah, I've, I've I've said this before. Like, I wasn't I wasn't anticipating anything like this. Like when I first pop, popped out that silica video, because for the for the longest time I've I've always been a, a, a shoutcaster for um, Call of Duty Battlefield, Shatterline. I've done a few casts for them as well, um, mm -hmm. and that's what I was continuing to do. But I've always had that. I've always played RTS in the background, like off stream. I'm always on RTS games. I'm always in like I play those games over everything else. Even though I am a first person shout caster, it just doesn't interest me as much as RTS does and like, city builders and all those type of things. So when I saw this game, it just it just hit straight in the nostalgia straight away. Like when I was a teenager playing Command and Conquer Renegade, and then. I see in Command and Conquer as well embedded in that because Renegade is Command and Conquer without RTS. So, um, yeah, it just hit me straight in the feels and I thought, you know what, I'll get a video out on it <laughs> and it just blew up and then next minute I'm making more videos and I'm here. So, <laughs> there you go. But if you if you want to see my shoutcasting content, then it is actually on my YouTube. You just go down the, my my list of videos, you'll, you'll find all the stuff I used to put out. And yeah, I had a look at it actually. It's, it's pretty good, man. I did, I did, like a, I did a lot of it. You're pretty good at it, man. It's, it's all very... It's strange. People say, how do I just run with commentary? And I, literally all I say is I, 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 I just look at something and I speak what I see and what I think of it. It just comes naturally. It's, it's, it's real strange. But um, It's a talent. It's definitely a talent. It just... It, it feels... It feels natural to me, and uh, it's, it's weird when someone says, I can't do that, and I'm thinking, but it's natural to me, if you know what I mean. Like, it's it's real hard to think, like, someone can't speak what they think. I don't know, it's, it's weird, it's weird. But yeah. Oh, I, 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 I digress, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> Before I, I get I, into I, it. I definitely like, get you. Yeah. But yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun, man. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you for joining me, Martin. Um, we'll probably get ended there. Uh, again, thank you, Frostguard. Thank you for all the... We had a few donations. They had a super chat and a donation today. I very much appreciate it. And I appreciate you guys coming in, asking questions, and getting in on the fun, and playing some games, and just, yeah, and just coming in and enjoying. Um, if you want to join me again, I'll be live on Sunday at Half 7 UK. And you can join me for some Silica Sundays. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weekly thing. And just keep an eye on my YouTube. I normally announce any streams I might do in the week or and whatnot. But um, yeah, thank you very much, guys, and uh, thank you, Martin, for joining me today. It's been fun. I very thank much you. appreciate it's, it. It's it's been very much a pleasure. <laughs> do you at least we won. It look, look, at least we won. We won. At the end. Yeah. Come on. We won. Yeah, we, at the end. We, we finally won a game. Thing. Yeah, one out yeah. of three. <laughs> Let's go. And it was a, it was a and I didn't even hit like five frames per second. And it was a it was a human v human v alien game as well which is nuts that's so true i was uh, yeah, th thank you everyone for the for the kind words and for for like uh you know supporting lichen and having a look at silica as well you know really appreciate it this this video by the way will be, literally be live as soon as i end stream so you can watch it back and do whatever you want with it but uh yeah awesome. guys um yeah thank you very much and i'll see you again in the next one awesome take care guys